In my Stoneblock 3 series, I recently passed 100 days. So I decided to take every episode I have made so far and put them together into a single video. If you do enjoy this video, if you could do me a favor and hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so yet, and leave a like on this video if you enjoy it, that would be just amazing. But without any further ado, ladies and gentlemen, I present to you 100 days in Stoneblock 3. Let the journey begin. All right, I have decided I'm gonna go with the lush house. It's gonna be nice to have some greenery, especially since we're in Microphone 18. It would be kind of sad not to have a surrounding with all the moss and like the lush stuff. So here we go, lush house. Let's see what we get. Let's. Oh wow. Okay, this this place is pretty. No regrets. No regrets. I'm gonna get rid of the tall grass though. But other than that, no regrets, and we get a hobbit hole. I mean, who doesn't want a- oh wow, it's decorated. <laughs> it's actually decorated. Wow, I didn't think it would be this decorated. Okay. I want free storage right off the bat. Also a food source with the glowberries. Th this is a great start right here, ladies and gentlemen. This is a good start. Okay, this is awesome. Now if we go ahead and check out the uh, quest book again here, we can go into getting started and this right here is going to help us through the early game at the very least and more will unlock as we progress. And yeah, this is kind of just going to help us steer us in the right direction. But first thing first that we need to do is normally in Minecraft, you know, you go up to a tree and you start punching it, right? Well, this is a stone block. Yeah. We punch stone. <laughs> This is our wood, at least for the time being, anyway. Uh, yeah, we need to do this for a little bit, and um, yeah, we, we basically need this to, to make cobblestone, because in here we can do like so, and we can get cobblestone. And if we go into the quests, we can get a random reward. Re I just, did I get a railgun? I got a railgun. <laughs> I don't have any power to power this thing, but I got a railgun. Also, we have a massive vegetarian in the pack. That's awesome. All right, with this amount of stone pebbles, I can now go ahead and make a crafty table. A stone crafting table, however it does it does sound like wood, but anyway, we're gonna ignore that and I'm gonna keep punching because I need even more cobblestone. <laughs> Good news, ladies and gentlemen, we can now make a stone hammer, which basically acts like, well, as you would expect, it takes, first of all, it's much faster than mining this with your bare hands, which is, I, I really appreciate this, um, but also it turns the stone into cobblestone. But not only that, if we go ahead and take this cobblestone, we can go ahead and convert it into a compressed cobblestone. And then we can mine this, and it's gonna turn it into gravel. And we can continue this process for quite a while, or I should say one more time, and we will get dirt. Because now what we can do is, if I go ahead and make some more stone rods, just like so, we can go ahead and make a stone crook. And if I then go to the center-ish of this place, you know what, this place is gonna work just fine. This place right here. Yep, there we go, perfect. We can then do this and we can get saplings and source berries apparently. And we can actually get quite a few different variety of saplings from this. Some, I don't even know what it is. Cascading archwood sapling. Flourishing. Wow, that's a lot of different ones. The main one, though, I think I want is either maybe spruce or oak or something like that. So I'm gonna. Uh, we do have birch, though. Hmm. Well, I need some more um, dirt anyway to, to actually grow the trees on because I kind of, uh, yeah, dug all of it out. But yeah, this is now a much quicker process. And yes, we do have rain miner, in case you were wondering, which is really awesome. Makes this kind of work much faster, especially this kind of work. Also a lot more satisfying, but there we go. We got an oak sapling. Oh, we also got a spruce one now. Yeah, I'm gonna go with the spruce one. Well, I can, I can twerk the, the things there. That's awesome. However, they might be in the way for the tree to grow. What if I, yeah, you know what? I may, hmm, yeah, I, hmm, hmm, hmm. This is sad times. I'm gonna have to relocate. I don't know why, but this tree simply refuses to grow. Oh, oh, you can grow, but not the big spruce tree. Okay, I see how it is. Ay, ay, ay. Anyway, with this nice amount of wood, we can now go ahead and we can make sticks. So now we can actually go ahead and make normal stone tools, such as an axe for chopping down said tree that wanted to grow, but then it didn't grow the way I wanted it to when I wanted to. Oh, the trees. 
don't grow. Now we can go ahead and make a furnace and then use, use this furnace to of course go ahead and get some charcoal made so we can actually start lighting these uh, tunnels up but I also realized I want to actually be digging in that direction instead towards north because if we take a look at the map here we can see we got some structures up here which are looking really interesting and as you can see it's going to take me quite a while to get there so I definitely want to be heading in that direction whenever I'm just casually mining we of course also oh wow we got a bunch of stuff here to collect got a bunch of cool stuff random stuff to get as well we'll take a look at it all in a moment oh we got a bunch of seeds from that I got a paxel I think my inventory is full. Oh, I can choose uh, different types of wood here. Since we went with an oak tree anyway, I'm going to go with oak. Oh, wow. Yeah, th this is a lot. Um, what's this thing? I'm confused. Oh, you know what? That's kind of cool. And I can pick it up again. Nice. I think for now, though, a bunch of this stuff that I don't need to write off. I got an anvil and a golden pack. So, okay, this, that's not, a, what? That's not a bad start. I'm not going to complain. That's not a bad start. When did I get? When did I get? I didn't get anesite. I think I need. I do need to get anesite though. Oh, wait a minute. Did I have? Where? I'm so confused. Oh, anesite gets turned into cobblestone. Oh, okay. I needed a stone pickaxe in order to pick it up. Oops. No one is gonna know. It's fine. There we go. Got that quest done as well. Oh, no rewards for it. Okay, you can go back. Now this is where things are going to get interesting, because if we take a look at the tech tree here, it is currently leading us into directions. One towards Tigger's Construct, which we definitely want to get into eventually. However, the most important thing for us right now is going to be setting up a sieve so we can get resources such as iron, gold, etc. Um, and to do that, we actually are using Create. And so the next thing that we need to do is basically make a millstone together with a hand crank and a cogwheel. And so we can set this up and that is basically going to be functioning as our sieve or I don't, is this gonna sieve or crush? Sieve or crush? I would think crush, yes, crush. But this setup in general is going to be how we're going to be generating resources. So that is something that we need to prepare for right away. We need to make a millstone, which I can bookmark like so. We need to make a hand crank, a cogwheel, and I think that is why we had the quest of getting andesite because, yeah, that's what we need to do. Propeller as well in order to make an uh, a fan here, which we can use to then wash ores and a crushing wheel to crush even more stuff. But let's start off with that right there. So to make the millstone, we're going to be needing some planks and polished andesite as well as a cogwheel. And that is even more andesite and some buttons. So not impossible. I just need to hit a vein of andesite, I suppose. And I just looked, it says right here actually, if you mine either up or down far enough, you'll reach a layer of andesite. Beyond that is deep slate, and only then is there bedrock. So, I think this over here is going to be a staircase leading down. And I got some torches here, so I'm just gonna keep going. That's, that's a hammer. I'm just gonna keep going down, and hopefully we'll reach andesite fairly soon. Finally, we're at Y level minus 54 and we're finally here. So I'm going to have to go ahead. I can't make a normal crafting table. That's interesting. All right. I will not complain though. Yeah, I'm going to have to, my stone pickaxe broke. So I'm going to have to go ahead and place a crafting table down, get some sticks. And then, you know what? I'm going to make two stone pickaxes. I have a feeling I'm going to need them anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna get a bunch of andesite here, and then we're gonna head back up and get started with create setting up some machinery. Oh, and by the way, a tip. Yeah, you, you can make mine, the, the andesite. <laughs> that makes this job go just that much faster. You know, that's, that's nice. That is always nice and always welcome. Now, I just gotta climb this. I'll see you at the top. I just came up the hole and I picked up a stick, and I got the message, here's a stick. Hard. It wants to <laughs> Oh, I can... What? You can place... Okay. All right. I think I'm ready to make this thing. Not enough... Oh, yeah. We need to make, of course, some polished andesite, which we now got. So I can go ahead and make two cogwheels. And I can make a hand crank. And with that, I can go ahead and make a millstone. So if I'm setting this up... So I haven't really played... Actually, I haven't played at all 
with um, create, but I'm pretty sure I understand how it works. And it basically all works like this. Not R, not FE, not RF, nothing like that. Just, is it called talk? Pardon me wants to say talk. Anyway, I think I can go ahead and make a chest. That's a furnace. That's not what I wanted to do. Can I make a, a stone chest? Cobblestone. Oh, and then I need to, oh, okay. You know what, that's actually, I feel like that's kind of cheap. I'm not gonna complain, that's pretty cool. If I place that there, and I place like, let's say 32 cobblestone there. That just, it doesn't just go in. Okay, good to know. Do I then right click it on there? Nope, definitely not. So what I've understood with create is you do a lot of this kind of thing, where the items are in, yeah, no, I'm doing this completely wrong. Interesting, apparently it doesn't accept cobblestone, but if I give it gravel, that goes right in. And I can go ahead and grind this up. I don't know when the indicator is gonna turn that it is done grinding. I guess if it doesn't show any more gravel particles? Maybe? I mean, this is, I would assume this is a slow process. No, there we go, I just right click. And I got raw sink, sand, and raw iron. Okay, this is good news. So I just put more gravel in. And I don't know how long it actually has to sit here. I mean, it's, it, it's kind of a nice rhythm, you know? <laughs> Workout session. <laughs> That's amazing. Ow, oh dear, I'm, I'm starving. What, what do I have? Why am I not, I'm not getting anything. Uh, I'm, I'm confused. Oh, I am getting stuff. It just doesn't say plop like everything else. Okay, uh, I'm gonna put you in there. Um, please, someone have berries for me. Yes, thank you. Okay, yeah, this this takes work. The cool thing is though, I can just sit here and basically do this, farm these berries. I will not complain. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with this room actually. Ah, interesting. So the reason why we want to get into uh, washing here is because we can actually wash sand, which is then going to give us stuff like gold, copper, sulfur, silver, nickel, clay, etc. And I think we can wash dust as well if we go ahead and get the right kind of dust. Yep, I think this is the one. Yeah, we can wash it and then we can get Surtis Quartz uh, dust, redstone, skystone and bone meal. Okay, I am gonna need to have a little bit of a plan how I'm going to set this up. I am gonna need this string. Okay, so I kinda have a plan. Right now I'm making a cauldron because if I place that there, I can fill it up with leaves essentially, and I can go ahead and get myself an awesome water bucket. I also uh, <laughs> most definitely need to clean up my inventory because this is a mess. Okay, next I can go ahead and make this thing, which I can use to make lava. I think this is gonna take a very long time. I don't know how long it's gonna take, but what? Oh, oh, it actually didn't. Okay, better not burn stuff. Basically what I wanna make is a cobblestone generator, this thing right here, which means we can basically auto-generate a uh, stone or cobblestone. Yeah, cobblestone right here, which we can then further in the future with a crusher and whatnot, which is not too far off. We can go ahead and automate the production of gravel, automate the production of this thing, and then washing and stuff like that. Next up though, I do want to set up a water wheel so this thing is actually automated. And I think minus, uh, minus one at minus 21. Minus 21, that's right, like right over here, right? Did it say the Y level? At 17. I, I can get that, maybe, potentially. I see it on the map. Oh, I see it right there. I see it, I hope it doesn't despawn. I don't know what I need to do when I see it, when I find it or get to it though. The uh, panic. Here we are. I got a bunch of stuff. Not sure what I got though. Uh, a mystical cyan flower, some eggs, and a copper ingot. That does seem to be it though. Ow. Anyway, now I can pick up this lava, and now I just need to get six one compressed stone, which means I need to smelt quite a lot of cobblestone. Uh, well. I'm happy that I have the charcoal for it. All right, I now have everything to me. I need glass. 
<laughs> here, hold on, hold on. And now I have everything to make the cobblestone generator tier one. I am gonna place this somewhere. You know what? I should probably expand this room a little bit because it's a little bit crowded. All right, gonna place this here. And I think I can put this on top. And boom, automated cobblestone generation has been completed. In the meantime, I have been busy making a water wheel and it's actually not as big as I thought. So I think that if I place it right there, that that then means I'll be able to make a passageway in this direction ish, which will then eventually lead over to this thing. Um, but yeah, if I basically just put it here, then place water, how do I get water again? <laughs> do this. You know what? We should probably make an infinite water source. How about that? That is probably a smart thing to do. There we go. Perfect. Because I think if I then... Hmm, I should probably make it look a little bit nicer. So if I go ahead and do something like this... Uh, yes. And then of course fill this in. Maybe if I do this... Yeah, that's not too bad. I think if I place water up here, I think that's working. However, I don't know if there should be a block like here. Yes. Okay, perfect. So that means I can block that off. So we are generating talk. I'm pretty sure it's called that. You guys will have to <laughs> correct me double if, uh, in the comments because I, I think I might be wrong on that one. But anyway, I can go over here. I can get rid of this hand crank. And I think if I just dig in this direction. Ah, there it is. I think I can just break this. Connect this, lead it all the way over, and then my brain needs to work. Right, if I place this there, strip it, do this, and then I make some buttons. I make four cogwheels, and then I can make a gearbox, which I think I can place here, and then connect. That is most definitely not gonna work. <laughs> don't know what I'm doing. Okay, I managed to do it. Actually, there's one step here that we actually don't need. We can go ahead and lead this one over and place this like so. Is it going the right way? Let's find out. Do we have any graveling about? I do not. Uh, <laughs> let me make some gravel real quick. Let's see. Yes. Yes. It's working. Ah, that took too long for me to figure out. <laughs> It is working. I do wonder, how, however, if I'm able to extract stuff using a hopper and then into a chest. Because that would be kind of cool. Now, I do know that this is not optimal. I can optimize this a whole lot better, but it's enough to get us started. I'm happy. Keep in mind, I have never touched the create mod. So the fact that I'm even able to just make this is, well, <laughs> quite amazing. I'll do more research off camera, of course. However, if this is doable, this would be... Yes, it is. Awesome! I'm so happy. Look at this. Things are being generated very, very nicely. I made it faster by pla basically placing a large cogwheel onto the watermill and then a small one leading all over. It, I know, I, you probably know this basic stuff, but... I think anyway that this is faster than before, which makes me happy. So I'm moving on to making this encased fan so we can actually start using some of the sand, also the sand that we're being uh, getting getting from this process here. Uh, but in order to do that, I need to make some iron sheets and for that I need to make this engineer's hammer, which is why I got that string earlier. So if I go ahead and do this engineer's hammer, boom, I should now be able to take some iron, put it in here, and boom, get some iron sheets. Pretty cool. As for now, I should have everything I need in order to... Hold on. Make this encased fan. Boom. Would you look at that? Oh, that was quick, right? So I think I just put it here. Oh, that's the wrong way. That's the wrong way. That that won't work. <laughs> there we go. It should... Hmm. Hmm. That's not good. This thing is going the wrong way around. But with a little bit of engineering, I think... No. Isn't that... That's, that's turning the other way, though. 
I need it to turn that way. But when I get it down, it turns the other way. Mm, you know what? This ain't gonna be super pretty. However, it is going to be functional. At least until I get the first amount of redstone so I can actually make a gear shift. But for now, I think that this is gonna work. Maybe I go ahead and spruce this place up a little bit, you know? Decorate it a bit, kind of like that. And I just wait, I guess. In the meantime, I can go ahead and build a tower of compressed cobblestone and hammer it all down. How much gravel is that? One and a half, two, two sacks, three sacks, basically. Pretty good. We're making pretty... Oh, one sack at a time. You know what? That's... I wonder if a hopper can go onto that. Oh boy. I'm not gonna worry about that now. That's a problem for later me. <laughs> not current me. Oh, and there we go. Look at that. We got copper, gold, fluorite, clay, sulfur, and raw silver, as well as raw nickel. That is awesome. And so I can basically take the sand from here. A boop. Put. No. Why? Why didn't I think that far? Just put a. I'm not, I'm not gonna ask questions. Ask questions? I should be asking questions. <laughs> I'm not gonna worry about it. I'm actually happy that Crusher didn't take all the gravel because now I can basically take all this compressed gravel and I can turn it into dirt, which I can then turn into sand, which I can then turn into dust, which means I can hopefully get a little bit of redstone going. And getting dust, there we go, a stack of dust. Boom. And hopefully, that's gonna go pretty well. You know, this place, I'd say, is coming along quite nicely. That's not what I wanted to make. There we go. That's better. I see redstone. Beautiful. Okay, you know what? This system, I'm actually pretty happy with it. So let's see what's the, the stuff in the quest right here. Pedal? Okay, that's cool. Uh, crushing wheel. We also got the dust, of course, which gives us a little bit more dust. And we need to wash some more resources. Um, but crushing wheel, basically, when two crushing wheels rotate into each other, they crush what passes through. That means I could technically have a cobble generator, tier one, drop cobblestone into a crusher, which then drops it into the millstone, which then leads it out through some sort of conveyor belt all the way over to this place and then gets picked up by a hopper. That would be the ideal solution anyway, or ideal situation, I should say. So I've been just looking at things, and apparently in order to make a crushing wheel, first of all, the kinetic stress impact is high, so I would probably need more than just this. Um, but in order to make it, I apparently need to make it in mechanical crafting, uh, using these things right here, which I assume, yeah, you just place them in an array of, well, this, connect them, or what goes where and whatnot, and then you basically make it work. Okay, that's way more advanced. but. That's basically how you make that happen. Um, I need 21 of these and polish. Wow. Yeah, that's how you make that happen. So I looked into the pulverizer, which requires tin. And in order to get tin, wait for it, raw tin, we need to crush gravel. However, we also have immersive engineering as well as mechanism. And in order to make a crusher from mechanism, we need lava. Uh, Hold on, so we need steel casing, we need osmium, and in order to get osmium, I'm pretty sure we need to, yep, we need to crush. <laughs> and to get the crusher from immersive engineering, we would need a bunch of other blocks. So, it looks like the crusher, the, this setup right here, is what we need to be working towards next. Also, I like how I just automatically made this my home, and not the beautiful house that is literally next to me. <laughs> Oh boy, I need to move in somehow. I just learned something as well, that you can actually take gravel, and that too, you can put through the washing thing. I'm pretty sure. I think it's working, because in here, gravel should give us this kind of stuff. I think, anyway. So I'm just kind of waiting for that to finish. Aha, there we go. Oh wow, oh, we got diamonds? Okay, if I had known that, I would have done this a whole lot sooner. Wow, okay then. I mean that, that's that. <laughs> no, what's this? Oh, yes, 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 yes. What, what, el what else did I need for that? What else did I, another stick. Why do I keep getting sticks? The stickiest of sticky sticks. 
Got it. Got it. Yeah, how? I, I definitely want that. That should be wards off certain pesky intruders within a reasonable area. Right click with wool to toggle silent mode. Yes. And I got a crafter tier one as well. Hmm. Oh yeah, I also got this advanced item collector. <laughs> That's awesome. And these laser notes, just casually, you know. I have done quite a bit of work off camera here using these machines. And as you can see, we now have diamond tools. I even have a diamond hammer here, diamond armor, and still plenty of resources to spare. I also have been smelting some of the resources because hopefully we're going to be needing some of this stuff today. Because I have done a lot of research, a lot of planning, and I'm excited. However, I think the first thing that I want to do is get started with Tinkers because I really, really, really would like a Tinkers hammer that can basically kick out a 3x3 area so I can make this tunnel towards this area a whole lot faster because we want to get to the nether areas and the end area. So having the hammer means I can do that in between episodes, which is going to be really nice. Plus this really shouldn't be too complicated to set up. We just need to get some grout going, cook that up, and then we have seared bricks, and then we should be good to go. One of the reasons why I also want to make a hammer is so not only I can make the tunnel, but so that I can also make a dark area where hostile mobs can spawn so I can get some of the resources that we may need uh, from that. But there we go, that is the seared fuel tank, and I believe if we go ahead and do this no i need something else here oh ingot gauge oh that's interesting i haven't seen that before well good thing we have just enough glass for that see it ingot gauge and then see it smelter so i believe where should we place this hmm, time for more expansion i think so if i go ahead and place this here and the seal smelter above that we should be able to just grab our stick thingy as well as a bucket and turn this into lava eventually there we go grab it put it in there and with that we now have fuel boom basic tinker setup complete However, what I really want as well are, of course, these Tinker Stations, because those are going to be key to be making what I want to make here. All right, and this is the final chest drawer thingy here. I made all the machines, or all the tables, I should say. These are not machines. And I believe I can just place it all like so. Perfect. This is a nice little Tinker's area. However, the hammer is not in here, and that is because we need to take this Tinker Station, and we need to go ahead and, I think, either make it into an anvil? Yes, we need to make it into an anvil. Um, so for that, I need to get this, Refined Obsidian. Never mind. Refined Obsidian takes Molten Diamonds and Molten Osmium, which takes Blazing Blood. I need a different anvil. We can, however, make a brass anvil, and that is with molten copper and molten zinc. So I'm pretty sure if I take like, well, I actually don't have a whole lot of capacity in here. So I need to do three at a time for now, but the six zinc and then I think six gold, hopefully might be able to do some of some of it at least, maybe. Oh, it actually smells fast. Oh, nice. Actually, six of, four, six of each is not going to cut it because we need... Oh, the tank is almost full. Well, I didn't think about this. Yep, we, ne we need the big smeltery. All right, I think this should hopefully do the trick. Let's find out. Yes. Okay, hopefully that is going to work. Almost there. All right, there we go. Three blocks of a molden brass. So I should be able to just pour it in here, wait for it to solidify, and we have a three blocks of brass. We're one step further towards getting an anvil and then towards getting a hammer. Oh, there we go. First block of brass. This is another reason why it's really good to get into Tinkers early because we're going to be using a lot of brass in Create. So getting the brass production up and going and available is definitely a huge plus. And then with all these three, we should be able to combine like so. And then we got a Tinkers anvil. And with this, we got a lot more options available for us, and we don't even need the Tinker Station anymore. Oh, I used all my wood by accident. Anyway, that's fine. Uh, so now we can make a hammer. Very cool. As it says, it harvests blocks in a wide range, so I basically want to make this. So now I need to go through what I actually want to make it out of. However, I don't really have that many options, so I think I'm just going to go ahead and use iron. Oh dear, we have a lot of stuff in here. 
<laughs> I think I'm just gonna go ahead and use iron because that's just gonna make this process a whole lot easier. However, before I can actually get to making this thing, I need to make some gold casts and cast these stone items right here. That's one, two, three. Boom. Perfect. So now I can place these down. Smelled a bunch of iron. I don't exactly know how much I'll need, but something like this is probably going to be fine. Here we go. Our first iron plate is done. One more. And that's that. Switch over to the hammerhead. I don't know how many ingots that's going to take. The mm, more than I had in there. <laughs> let's just maybe put in... Yeah, that's, yeah, that's fine. We're going to use it anyway. And that's the hammerhead. Switch over to the tough handle. And that's the final component. Put all this together in here. Two plates, hammerhead and tough hammer. And that would go durability 1760. And sturdy... Five, six, four? I don't remember which one of those that is. But there we go. However, I believe I can, with a diamond, potentially, upgrade this to increase durability and, of course, also the attack damage, but also the mining speed. So that is going to be definitely worth it. I believe we could toss on an emerald as well, which will increase the durability even more. Um, yeah, sure. Why not? Now, something to increase the speed would be redstone. However, redstone, I feel, is quite valuable, so... Oh, I think I've used all the upgrade slots. That's fine. This thing is exactly what I have been wanting. Oh, wait a minute. Loot. Is that a loot bee or is that a normal bee? Do we have a... Is there a beehive on this thing? Wait, how did this... Oh. oh okay. It was a loot bee. And we got a ripper. I wanted to make that anyway. <laughs> okay. Well then. I won't complain. Um, Chance cube. Warning. It is recommended you don't open these in or next to your base. You know what? Duly noted. Another good reason to make a tunnel that goes far away from home. All right, here we go. Oh, yeah. This is really, really, really nice. So now I can just do this. I can... Oh, not like that. I can clear out an area very, very quickly if I want to make room. Say I want to make a really dark room for mobs to spawn. Look at the speed of this. And we could increase it with redstone if we increase the upgrade modifiers and whatnot. But this is just fine. Yes, that's awesome. Now, in the last episode, we set up this system with Create right here, which I'm really, really happy with, by the way. And we need to continue. Uh, if we go in here, what did I unlock? Oh, Tinker's Tools. Hold on. Oh, a it heat a solid fuel source for the melter? Oh, I didn't make that. I'll have to do that uh, later, because now we need to... Did I get a railgun? Oh, a backpack. Oh, that's awesome. This is an awesome thing. I don't know if I can equip this anywhere. Oh, I can. Perfect. Can I press B? Yeah, I probably need to set up a keybind. But I got a railgun. Wow. I mean, I don't have power to use it, but it's a railgun. A rail I can be intimidating. <laughs> but like I was saying, with Create, we want to move on through this right here. And that is to get us to a crushing wheel. And I've done a little bit of research, and I believe that we can pull it off. Nom nom nom. But in order to make a crushing wheel, we need to set up mechanical crafting. So we need to make 21 of these. Um, so yeah, this is gonna be interesting. But this is why we needed the brass right here to be able to make brass casing. We also need electron cube and polished rose quartz, which we can get by combining redstone with quartz, uh, nether quartz, which is why the redstone is really valuable right now. Uh, and we can get nether quartz if we wash crushed gold ore or soul sand and to make soul sand we need this setup right here unless we go all the way over to the nether i don't know how far away it is but we can make soul sand this way using anywhere any uh any sand together with water and a mob soul in a mixer this the mixer is not too hard to make so that's pretty cool uh mob soul has an 80 percent chance of spawning every time a mob dies so i think i'm gonna go ahead and make a big, or not a big, but like a, I could also just, nah, I'm gonna make, maybe even just make this tunnel back. Maybe that's gonna be enough. In the meantime, we can set up the mixer, which is really, really quite simple, actually. If I go ahead and take these, we just need to make a basin, which is just a bunch of andesite alloy. And then we need the mechanical mixer, which is andesite casing, a cogwheel, and a whisk. And the whisk is just andesite alloy and some iron sheets. All of which are very accessible. Boom. Ooh, we got some guests. 
I got some get one of those. I don't know what those are. I don't know what those are, but whatever it is, I'm going to kill it because we need soul thingies. That can't be that bad, right? It can f it can fly. I'm killing it. I'm killing it. Yeah. Nope. Not on my watch. Oh, there we go. Mob soul. Got it. I can light this up now. <laughs> oh, you're scary. You're really scary. Yeah, I'm gonna light this up now. And here we go, mechanical mixer. Now, if I place this down real quick, as you can see, we have the cockwheel right there, which means I need a gearbox that essentially gives us a cockwheel that's facing that way. Hmm, where can I... I mean, over here could work, potentially. Oh yeah, in this corner is definitely going to work. If I place this here, and I just get another cockwheel real quick, like so, and place it there. That's gonna do that. Okay, sweet. That was very easy. Now I just need two of this. I need a... Actually, I just need one. Because all I need is some sand. Which I can get like this. And then water, which I also got right here. So we put water... Let's put some light first of all. Water. Set. No. <laughs> That's not how we do it. Sand like that. And then a mob soul. Oh. Alright, so I've learned a little bit of a trick, and I want to give a shout out to Rocket14, who has, I've been watching his create videos, and they've really helped me understand, like, the create mod and whatnot, but what we are able to do here, because of the way cocks work, we can place a big one in extension of the small one there, and as you can see, this big one now runs a lot faster than that one. I can then go ahead and place a smaller one, because the smaller is going to go a lot faster. And then I can actually repeat this process yet again, if I extend it out just so they don't touch each other. Or actually, I don't know if that's even necessary. I assume it is. I assume it is. Yes, it is, because then it, it goes into conflict with the other one, which makes complete sense. So I can place another big one, which then spins even faster than that one. And I can then place a small one. And then, okay, it's a little bit off, because that one is... Uh, turning clockwise. This is now turning anti-clockwise. But that should be then solvable with a simple gearbox. Yes, which I can then turn into this. Oh, it's fast. Uh, there we go. I can just remove that and wow, this thing is fast. <laughs> so I can now take that off. I don't know if I can then connect this now. No, I cannot. Then I will need to remove that. Okay, I think it's too fast for all of these items. That's quite interesting. Maybe if I... Hmm, let me try something. There we go. This is now running a lot faster. I basically just put it into a gearbox, into another vertical gearbox, and then into a normal gearbox, and everything's going fine. However, when I do not want to use this, I need to do this, swap that over, and I think, yes, this is then going to work, which is awesome. So that is that done. All of that for a single soul sand. Quick change to the create setup. I now have it this way, vertical gearbox, vertical gearbox, and then two normal gearboxes to make this turn the correct way because as I realized that with the other way, it was sucking air in with the thing now turning anti-clockwise into, well, this entire setup. It's now pushing air out, so now it is as it should be. Now that we have this one soul sand, remember why we made it in the first place. We need to make the mechanical crafters, and in order to get those, we need this polished rose quartz, and we can only get that if we actually have quartz. And the reason why we have made this one soul sand is... If I remove this, get rid of this, I'm gonna get put... put oh dear. Oh no. Well, it's solvable like that. <laughs> and if I like this, we then have the blue soul flame. And if I drop some sand in there and give it a little bit, boom. We now just ca- wow. We just now casually have a stack of soul sand. Which if we then go ahead and extinguish the flame, do this, place the water back. We're not gonna wash that. We are, however, I think it's washing, right? Yes, if we wash this, that should hopefully turn into a bunch of quartz. Emphasis on hopefully. And moment of truth. Six other quartz. Perfect. So now, just for this process again, break this, bring the one soul sand that we have. There we go. Place this there. That's going to burn my andesite. That was not intentional. I just burned all the sand. I'm used to it being... Good thing I have this much. Yeah, that's all calculated. So you can learn from my mistakes. And there we go. Even more soul sand. You know the drill by now. 
Actually, I think, can I just leave the water there? I might be able to just leave the water there, you know. Uh, if I just put this here. Yeah, it's still gonna get washed. Okay, that's a lot cooler setup. And I can actually lay, make it even cooler now that I think about it. Let me just go ahead and break this. Put this. Dispenser. Empty bucket. Boop. <laughs> that's awesome. And there we go. We got glowstone and a bunch more nether quartz. This should be plenty. So I've just made some calculations. We need to make this recipe seven times, which means we need seven electron cubes, and then we need seven polished rose quartz. So we can make just enough, which will look at that. That is perfect. Now I believe what we do is, I don't actually know how we do this. <laughs> I have no idea how we do this. Uh, yeah, uh, hmm. Aha, uh -huh. rose quartz here, sandpaper here, and just like so, we are getting the cubes that we need. I forgot the name of them. Polished rose quartz. There we go. <laughs> there we go. Seven. Awesome. And just like that, we got seven electron tubes. Next, we need some brass casing, which we are now well educated in making. Then we turn this into brass ingots, we right click all of these blocks, and just like so, we now are able to make 21 mechanical crafters. So, I guess let's set this up, however, there is one more thing that I do want to make, and that is the wrench from Create, which does require three gold plates, and just like so, oh yeah, oh, I should have a cogwheel. Do I not have a cogwheel? There we go, of course I always have a cogwheel. There we go. All right, let me think how to set this up because we need for the crushing wheel We need a three by three and then three on each side in order to make this thing All right, I think I got this all figured out Maybe so if we go ahead and place them like this So first off we go ahead and place them in a three by three then we go ahead and add one up there a row here a row here and then get on top at all possible. Place this here, here, and here. Okay, yeah, that's not looking too bad. Now what you need to do is, you see these arrows here, we can change the direction of this, and we want this to all eventually lead up at or to the center. So if I do something maybe like this... Oh yeah, it needs to go down to, to the spot, hold on. Okay, I think this setup would work. These three go down, then they combine in here, they all go in here, or from here go here over here, in here, and then eventually makes their way down to the spot. I think I did it. Maybe. We're gonna find out in just a moment. Because the big time has come for us to finally make the crushing wheel, which should be relatively easy. Just need some andesite or I guess cobblestone might be able to work as well. Yeah, stone, cobblestone, uh, well I don't know about cobblestone actually. Anyway, a bunch of andesite alloy and wood, I think I have it all. Uh, do I have enough? I don't think I have enough andesite alloy. Okay, here goes. Andesite in the middle, wood planks out here, and then the rest should just be andesite alloy. And I think all we gotta do now is place a cogwheel there. That doesn't work. All right, guys, after a lot of sweat and almost tears and a bunch of research later, I found out how to power this thing. So I went over and I looked at how Chosen Architect had set up his um, mechanical crafter. And well, he set it up with three water wheels separate just for the mechanical crafter. So all I think I need to do is place the final water in here, block it off so we don't get that. And I think... This should be enough to turn it on. Yes, it's on. It has turned on. You have no idea how happy that makes me. Um, <laughs> so now I believe um, that we... Okay, so it will only start working once the entire thing is turned out, is like filled out or it gets a redstone signal. So I should be able to just put all of this stuff in here. Place that, and there we go. Honestly, it's not super slow. Oh, that's satisfying. And the sound as well. Oh, and a loopy. This is satisfying, though. I can take these off now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's a sight for sore eyes. Into the last one. Bing, and... There we go. We have gotten ourselves two crushing wheels. At long last. Now, I'm just gonna go ahead and steal that, because it it's loud. Oh, the bee is dropping loot. What do we got? Some copper, an egg, 
Another egg, a stick, a battery, starter battery. I'll take it. Now, ladies and gentlemen, it is time to set up the crusher. Question is, where do we want it to be? I'm thinking I want this to lead down to the andesite. However, I might just make an elevator at some point later in the future. But I think over here is going to be a pretty nice place. So I'm going to clear an area here. Clear an area, set it up, and then we'll get to set up the crushing wheel at long last. All right, guys, it is time. So let's go ahead and do this. So we're going to place water wheels here like so. And yeah, I'm going to need to turn around, do it like this because they need to be facing the correct way because currently right now we're going to place the water here. These are going to be turning this way and these are going uh, to be turning this way, which is very important. And I can now place, I can move this, place cobblestone here, place here and here. Need to place water there, there. Need one extra bucket. Now I want to be able to make this quick. Boom. Aha. That was faster than the water. Now we go ahead and place a gearbox here and a gearbox here. Which is going to make it so that it, the, both of these are turning against each other or towards each other. Then, uh, by the way, the wall and whatnot is not looking super nice. That'll make it look nice in between episodes, okay? Um, but now we can now place our crushing wheel right there. Crushing wheel right here. And that's that done. It, it should be working. If I go ahead and take... What do we got? We got some gravel. We also got some sand. I don't know if we can crush sand. It does not look like it, but so now we can go ahead and I'll need some sort of stairway or I think I can actually place a hopper. I'm not quite sure. I'll have to test, but we place the, uh, the gravel in there and out should come a bunch of useful things. It's quite a cool animation, actually, and sound effect. I'll be right back when it drops. Check it out. We got the stuff. What do we got? We got tin. We got bauxite. We got osmium, zinc, iron and lead and i think we got some coal as well this is going to be our new way of getting well iron and coal first of all uh instead of using this thing right here because we need to get lead and tin and osmium in order to get to do other stuff so yeah there we go and i'm currently working on something else that i'm hoping is gonna work i don't know if it will though i'm gonna place those there i'm gonna use a hopper I'm going to place a chest there and end aside funnel. And if I then go ahead and grab some more gravel and place it in this chest and then maybe it needs a redstone signal. Aha, it has an arrow. Oh, there we go. Oh, it's it did one at a time. Oh, it does some gradually. I mean, that works, I guess. I mean, the other stuff took ages for a stack, so it's it's actually f fast regardless. If I just do this, Inter I'm inter interrupting the satisfaction here a little bit. If I place a chest here and a hopper fit, mm. and a hopper facing inwards, there we go. Also, I've gone ahead and made this system right here. The compacting drawers, and they're not super expensive. They're they're affordable. So above the cobblestone generator tier one, which by the way we can upgrade. I'm gonna steal that actually. Um, I should be able to just cook up some of those and then put this thing in there. Um, but what I was saying was I made this system here where I can say I want to take... Oh, oh, you scared me. Where did you come from? I thought I was safe this entire time. Must have been from like here. Yeah, I need to light the, the place up a little bit better. <laughs> that scared me. What I was saying was I can now go ahead and I can take... Let's say... Nine of these. They're two time pressed uh, com uh, cobblestone. I can go ahead and do this. Which means I'm gonna get a ton of gravel if my inventory wasn't already full. I can go ahead and just add it all into this one. Just double click on it. And then I can grab it all out again, but as compressed. So I don't have to use the crafting table and craft them manually. I think this is a pretty cool setup. So I keep doing it for the dirt as well, just like so. And yeah, that's pretty nice. All right, I have a ton of gravel here I want to put into this thing. But before we do that, I think... Oh dear, I didn't think about that. Uh, yeah, mm, you know what? This should probably... Oh dear, this... Mm. Oh, I forgot. Oh dear me. Huh. What I was about to do was I was about to make an iron chest 
into a gold chest and then put that chest uh what am i missing here yep yep six glass six glass i thought something was off do like so diamond this thing is much bigger it takes quite a while to mine up which you know totally makes sense please don't just go away okay there we go i can now break this then place this and there we go and now i can just put all this in there and i can just leave it to it that's pretty awesome and from this we're gonna get quite a lot of resources that's awesome and our seared stone is now complete so we should be able to put that in there i hope it's enough Maybe it's not. There we go. That was the final bit. It needed two blocks, three ingots, and a little bit extra. And there we go. Cobblestone generator tier two ready to be placed down. And then I'll probably do this process off camera because it's a lot. Let's quickly take a look at all the stuff that we got. Get a bunch of random quests uh, or rewards, I should say. We got, yep, all of this done. All of this. We're pretty much done with this part. I need to make this and then take this entire tree off right there but yeah that is pretty much the getting started done i just got another cobblestone generator tier two you know what i'm actually happy with that because we'll be able to use that for something else hopefully anyway i got a spyglass that's cool some comparators an electric motor okay laser wrench from laser io a linking tool always welcome all of it take a look at this so much coal a bunch of zinc bauxite which i believe turns into copper al aluminium grid maybe uh yes aluminium so this is aluminium essentially we got iron we got tin lead and osmium very very cool indeed and also if you didn't notice i have decorated the place just a little bit you know just a little bit also inside of this space right here. Yep, looks a lot better. Also these, uh, the birch planks here for the flooring and the ceiling. I also installed some uh, feral flare lanterns, one in here and one out there. So we could get rid of the ugly torch spam, which no one likes. No, let's, let's be honest, no one likes torch spam. I also upgraded the cobblestone generator tier four, uh, the, the cobblestone generator up to tier four. I can't quite get it to cobblestone generator tier five just yet because I need molten diamond and I need a, in order to get molten diamond, I need blazing blood. I have also in between episodes washed a bunch of gravel and well, uh, not that chest. Yep, we basically now have three stacks and 15 diamonds. <laughs> And a bunch of lapis, and yeah, we're, we're not going to run out of resources anytime soon. At least I hope not. I also made this iron cleaver right here, thanks to uh, Tinker's Construct, because we today are going to be going on an expedition towards that direction. If we take a look at the map here, I have dug all the way over here, and we're going to be exploring at least some of this today. I'm very excited, don't know what's in there, but I'm also hoping to continue past this point all the way through and hopefully reach at least the nether so we can get some of those nether goodies. But before we do that, I have a problem. My inventories are an absolute mess, as you can see, and yeah, I want to solve that. And I have had a think uh, when it comes to storage solutions, and I've also looked at the recipes and whatnot, and I think refined storage, at least right now, is going to be the way to go. It's the simplest and it's the easiest to get started with. Um, a2 just has a bunch of steps and maybe we'll do it later but for now just to get something up and running refined storage is going to be my pick but in order to do that i need to do some expansion with create because i need to be able to use this machine right here i need to make three uh, two more deployers and basically what we need to make are these advanced processors now they themselves are not an issue but the raw advanced processor needs this sequence right here and i think i can do it i think i know how to do it but first i want to expand our base here so three two wait, wait let's if i stand right here on this brick there we go three two one yep i would call this an expansion 
Now, in order to fit the machine that I need to fit with Create, I am thinking I want. I am thinking of making this room at least this big, maybe expand it even further in that direction, and then have Create on this side with a bunch of contraptions and whatnot, depending on how much we need to make, of course. But um, for the time being, I would like, I think, to expand in that direction so I can have all like the moving parts and whatnot further behind, so it's not out here taking up space. All right, this part is expanded. Now I need to go ahead and make some mechanical belts and I can make those from dried kelp and in order to get kelp I need to use a crook on sand there we go eight kelp so far so good 14 kelp I think I might need a little bit more by the way there are these uh, construction ones here which makes things like this a whole lot easier to do all right 25 kelp should be enough get them in there and cook all right, I have three mechanical belts. I'm pretty sure all I need to do is right click. I don't know what that particle means. Ah, uh, wait a minute, they're, they're turning in the wrong direction. This one needs to be turning together with that. Okay, how do I do that again? Okay, my bad. I don't even need this part right here. All I really need is a gearbox like this, turning in this direction. And then I think I can just do basically this and attach to that and then this goes like so and i'm pretty sure that if i take just for example and insert alloy and put it on there it goes all the way over to the end which is pretty awesome which is exactly what we need if i then go ahead and place this okay yeah i need this to be a little bit longer all right here we go five mechanical belts just like so we're gonna right click oh even i can go on the belt I'm gonna, I think, maybe, I wonder if these are set already to, yep, export and import, import, okay, I think we are ever so slowly getting there, now I just need to make two more of these deployers, alright, here we go, two deployers coming right up, and we're just gonna put them just like, okay, not quite like so, we need to turn them around, I still have not figured out which way to... There we go. So once there, and then once on that side. Okay. All right, and now it works. So over here for the cog wheels, this is my setup right here. This is going straight from the water wheels into a small one, into a big one, into a small one, and then into a big one again. And this is the perfect speed for these things. So I guess it's time to test this weird contraption. I'm currently cooking up some quartz, which will give us silicon. But before we can go ahead and test this, we need to make some process of binding, which we can make with string and then any kind of slime ball. I think I have a slime ball somewhere. If not, which it turns out I don't have, turns out we can actually make it. So over here in crafting, if we get some lime dye, which should be easy to get, we need to make some dough and we can get dough by combining a water bucket together with some wheat flour, which we get by putting a me uh, some, some wheat in the milling machine right here. So that is what we're going to be doing next. And for this, this is just going to be a temporary, uh, temporary setup for right now. going to go ahead and do this system right here and I should have some wheat. Yep. So we toss that in there and grind away. We now have wheat. Wheat flour, I should say. Perfect. And putting this green dye together with some white dye, we get lime dye. And I just need my bucket, which is somewhere. This is why I need a storage system, because I can't find anything in this. So if we put this together, we get dough. And I'm just going to do this a couple of times. There we go. Dough has been made. And then some green dye. And there we go. We got slime. And then we put this together with the string. And we have process of binding. Okay, let's see if this... It's going to work. I'm a bit scared, but here we go. I'm going to put the diamonds in there, redstone in there, and silicon. Pretty sure that is the right way. Uh, no, it is not. We need silicon first and then redstone. And if I then... Let's start with one processor. Uh, that's not doing what I was thinking it was going to do. Okay, I figured it out. The hand needs to be different. Currently, it needs to... It, it's like closed. This is what it needs to look like. So if we right click it once more, it, it's actually placing the redstone, which is not exactly what I want. There we go. Okay, so if I do that, they no longer move, which is perfect. And we got this incomplete raw pro uh, processor because I used this depot right here to test it. So if I drop that on there, it should stop right there. Deploy the silicon. 
And then right there, deploy the redstone and into the chest it goes and we got a raw advanced processor. So if I go ahead and put maybe three more of those in, we got a conveyor belt going with working setup for making, oh, oh dear, it's, oh no, uh, it's, it's run out, it's run out of resources, that's not good, not good at all, uh, deep, uh, uh, so back up, thank you, put this here and then there we go. Okay. And there we go, four advanced processors. And this means with this setup right here, we can get started to get refined storage up and running. And for that, we don't really need too much. We need the controller, which for that we need advanced processor, which we just need to cook those right there. We also need a machine casting, which we need quartz enriched iron for. And that is pretty easy to make as well. And then of course silicon, which we can also easily get. We also need a disk drive, which we, yep, we got everything for that. And then a crafting grid, which we need a grid for. And to make a grid, we need some more um, processors here. So improved processor is made from gold, silicon, and redstone. And if we go back and back again, we also need a destruction core with a basic processor like this. So I'm gonna get to work. I'm gonna make all these things that we need. Everything is set up, so I just need to go ahead and craft it. And then I'll be right back. Actually, I'm gonna show some of the process. So first I want to make the controller. So for that, I need to go ahead and cook up some quartz. I'm pretty sure, yep, I need three. And then just need any stone and then some quartz enriched iron, which for that, I'm gonna uh, take some iron here, put it together like this, other, other way apparently, there we go. So that is eight for the machine casing right here. And then I need four more for the controller itself. And that is pretty much that. Then I need to go ahead and take these raw advanced uh, processors, go away stone, cook those up. We've got silicon right here. I think I can go ahead and make a machine casing now if I go ahead and maybe get some stone and decide, you know what, that works as well, just like so. So that's the machine casing right there. And now I'm just missing one advanced processor. And boom, we have the refined storage controller. Next up, we need to make the disk drive. So that is another machine casing. All right, and with that, we can now make a disk drive. Next thing, of course, we need a crafting grid. And for that, we need the grid. So improved processor, and we need a basic processor as well. This is gold, silicon, and redstone. So I'm gonna need more silicon. I might actually need more quartz in order to finish this process. Uh, I, I, I can manage, I can manage. All right, so I'm gonna take the diamonds out of this and the redstone actually can stay right there, I think. Raw basic processor, so that is one silicon and one iron in here. Uh, I didn't want to do a filter, there we go. Put this here, put this here, and then drop one processor binding. And this should result in exactly what we need. Raw basic processor right there, and then we need, I believe it was two improved processors. So that is going to be two gold ingots, two silicon, and two redstone, which we are, of course already got there. Put the silicon on, put the gold on, drop one, drop two, drop two, there we go. <laughs> And that should be perfect. Now all I need to do is cook these up. Ah, hold on, I need a construction core. And for that I need still another uh, basic processor. So I need to get some more quartz. Which by the way, if you need a reminder how to get a bunch of soul sand, just get one soul sand, light it with soul fire, and then put some sand into that wind. And eventually it'll turn into soul sand and then we can bulk wash it. And there we go, 18 more quartz, which is perfect because we're gonna need a lot more silicon than I thought. All right, and finally, we can go ahead and make the grid as soon as I have made more enriched iron. I don't know why I'm talking like this, but bear with me because I missed a step in this process. And there we go, now we can go ahead and make the grid. Perfect, and we can get rid of this. And now we can go ahead and make the crafting grid and boom, crafting grid. I think that was that. If we go ahead and take a look in the storage tab right here, we made the controller, a scroll sensor. No, no, that's not what I want right now. Yes, I think this is everything. Um, so we can go ahead and place, where should we place this? I think I want the storage like over here somewhere, maybe in, in the wall over here. So I think what I'm gonna do is go ahead and put the controller at 
above like this, then place the disk drives here and the crafting grid here. I think that is gonna work. But there are two more things that we're missing in order to get this to work, and that is one power and two disk drives, which is the first issue that we're going to address. We can make a bunch of different ones, but to begin with, I think we're going to be either sticking with 1K storage parts or 4K storage uh, disks. The 4K storage part is basically like this. So I essentially just need to make a bunch of these 1K storage parts, which is going to take a lot more silicon than I currently have in my disposal. So that is going to be something that I need to do. And when I've done it, I'll be right back and we can install some drives and generate some power. And then we're going to go exploring. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm pretty sure I have everything that we need in order to get these storage disks made. So let's get to it. So in order to make a 4K storage part, we need to make six 1K storage parts. I'm basically planning on making two 4K storage disks, as I think that is hopefully going to do the job. So if we go ahead and make six of these, which takes silicon, quartz, enriched iron, redstone and glass. So that's six of those. We can take those away. And if we then go ahead and make two of these, and then we go ahead and choose this recipe right here, that is then 4K or two 4K storage disks, which we can add right in there. All right, so now it is on to the second issue that we need to solve in order for us to use our brand new storage. And that is power generation and it's actually pretty simple i have planned this basically we're going to be making a magma crucible which can generate lava from cobblestone which of course we have a cobblestone generator so that is not a problem i want an energy cell just to store some of the excess power so that's going to be cool it should be pretty easy to make and then the magmatic dynamo which can generate power from lava so this is basically going to be an infinite source of power don't know how efficient it's going to be or rather how much power it's going to produce but it should produce plenty for our needs aha uh -huh, hold on we have nether bricks with this recipe i did not realize that uh, of course that shouldn't be an issue because i'm planning to go to the nether area today after we've done this however yeah it looks like the magma crucible is going to be the primary way of getting lava for us so i think we're gonna go ahead and make what we can here so the magmatic dynamo the, the energy zone whatnot and then it is finally time to go on our little adventure which i'm really excited for um i just need to go ahead and make a few of these i'm pretty sure i think i need like four yep so i need a little bit of iron rest of flux coal and all that good stuff so here we go magmatic dynamo just like so that is that and then i need to look into these energy cells which the main ingredient is going to be dielectric paste Couples, uh, yeah, coal, a lava bucket, and some clay, which I should have all of it. Now, here's a cool thing. I actually already got, depending on what chest we look at, I should have gotten like four. Yep, there we go. Four of these dielectric casings, which is pretty awesome. So all I need now is to go ahead and make some redstone blocks, which is kind of expensive for us at the moment, actually. We can also remove the machine frame from the list. And boom, I can go ahead and make, I think I need four in order to do this. And then, yep, there we go, basic energy cell. And it can hold basically four million FE. So that's actually not too bad for our current needs. Of course, I will also be needing some energy cables, which should be pretty easy to get my hands on. Just the starter ones is going to be sufficient. Need to make some of these rods and then make them. There we go, just a pack of those should be doable. That should be plenty for our needs. All right, I think it is time to adventure. However, not before I have actually gone ahead and made me, myself, myself, myself a proper diamond sword so that I can properly defend myself. I think with that, we are ready. There we go. I had one final slot in my, in my inventory or in my uh, storage. All right, I think it is time to go tunneling. Eventually, I'll probably want to set up some RF tools teleportation thing, but for now, walking is not too bad. However, it is a bit of a trip. But there we go. Just gonna have to tunnel in this direction for a little bit, and we should have a head on collision with this tunnel right here. So we can go ahead and explore a little bit of this place, see what's up with it, and then hopefully continue on through on the other side to get to the nether area. I didn't bring torches. Uh, I'll be right back. All right, we have arrived in any second now. We're going to punch a hole through. 
I think anyway, unless we're about to go under <laughs> or over. I hmm. I think I have found it. There's cobble right here. I don't know exactly when we're going to pop through. I'm going to assume. Yep, right there. Oh, boy. <laughs> I don't know what I'm getting myself into here, but let's just dive head first in. Oh, that's a, that's a creeper. That's creeper. Okay, that's uh, ooh, okay. That's spawners and whatnot. There's also witches. That's a problem. And poison. Okay, okay. I don't know what I got myself into here. I do not know what I've got myself into here. That's a lot of them. That's a lot of them. You know what? You know what? Time out. Time out. Time out. <laughs> oh boy. Okay, let us try something like that again. There's two witches up there that I need to take care of somehow. I'm just, I think I'm just gonna, there's two witches actually right here, but there's also two over here. So if I can get rid of these guys and then the zombies, maybe if I just light all this up, get rid of you. And I hear another witch nearby. Quickly eat and heal. Get rid of the spider first. Okay. Okay. I did. Oh, the sauce. I didn't quite know that this is what I got myself into. <laughs> oh, that's just some. Okay. What is that? I. Okay. Oh, that's a. Oh, skilled spider. I don't. Ow. Okay. That's not fair. That's not fair. That's not fair. That's not fair. Man, those witches are nasty. I wonder if I'll be able to climb the water and take them out. There should be a witch up there somewhere together with the spider. Or maybe it's the spider that is. You know what? I'm just gonna keep going forward here. Keep going forward. Keep going forward. That's going to be what I do. Please die. Okay, that's a lot of stuff in here. Okay. Okay, you know what? You, you know what? You know what? I don't... I don't know if I am quite ready to face this. Shielding? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, I want a skilled husk. Yeah, I don't know if I'm quite ready to face this. Gotta be honest here. This is uh, way more than what I had imagined this would be. I thought it would be some sort of dungeon, but... Didn't think it would be quite this kind of dungeon. Let's use this axe to get rid of it. Okay, that witch up there, whatever that is, is a real pain in the butt. That's a chest though. Uh, fire charge, probably seed, cool. Yep, yeah, I'll take it. Don't know what it is, but I'll take it. The chest too. So I know I've looted it. Okay, there's a skeleton there. You I can get rid of. Same with you. Okay, keep placing torches as we go. There's a chest here. There's a witch. I can take care of you quite easily. Whoa! Two witches more. That's not good. And a phantom. Okay. And a pillager. All right. That's that's problematic. Yikes. Oh, hello. Uh, don't throw anything. Just get up here. Yep. There we go. And punch you again. Get back up. Oh, that's not who I expected to be here. Oh, ow. Okay. Yep. This is problematic. I keep getting my health this low due to witches and poison. <laughs> Look at my inventory, it's a mess. Okay, let's try moving up again. I did place some torches. There's a chest over here. Do we have anything? In oh, we do have stuff in the barrels. Okay, I don't... Actually, I will take the food for now. Because... Oh, I will definitely take the honey as well. I'll definitely take the food because I am in need of better food than the berries while being in here. Oh, dry kelp as well. Okay, the... <laughs> That's some of the stuff that I actually do kind of need and want. Oh boy. What? Did it? Is there a witch up there too? Oh boy. Taste my iron cleaver. No head. I want a head. Oh, you're a, you're a reflective zombie. That's not good. And a pearl? I'll take it though. I think I just gotta be strategic here. Very strategic. Very, very strategic. That was. They're not. Whoa, you're gonna do a lot of damage. 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 <sighs> Don't you dare poison me. Oh boy. Back in my hole. Back in my hole I go. 
I got a common loot crate. Lot of right click to open, sneak right click to open all in hand. One compressed cobblestone. <laughs> well, I got two one compressed cobblestone. Okay. You know what? I, I won't complain though. Something is something. Okay, there's a chest room in there that I really, really want to get. If I can just... Oh boy. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do this. Okay. Let's see. Oh, two diamonds. A potato cannon. Okay. A music disc. Diamond boots. Curse of binding though. It does have fire protection. Oh, do I wear them? If I die, they disappear. Uh, do I wear them? That is the question. I don't know. No. No. I'm, I'm not desperate. I'm not desperate. I'm good. Okay, there clearly is a spawner over there that I need to disable. Otherwise, this is going to spawn an absolute ton of stuff. Ooh, I might die right here. I might. You know what? You know what? I think... Oh. Oh no, oh no, that's a Vindicator, that's a Vindicator, that's a windy Vindicator, Vindicator, Windy, Windy, uh, whatever that's called. Run, run, run. Yeah, I uh, I think I have a conclusion for this place. And it's actually quite simple. I am nowhere near ready to, 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 to tackle this place up here. I'm very excited for it though. Cannot wait to do it. For now, I think I'm just gonna keep going and uh, until I reach the caves and eventually the nether. But yeah, that up there, way harder than I had anticipated. <laughs> I'm gonna need a lot better gear to tackle that. After a long time of mining later, a look at what we have discovered. We have reached the cave area. I don't know if we're actually going to hit any, any of them, any of the tunnels uh, with our tunnel. They are, according to this, my tunnel is at Y, uh, y level minus two. And this cave system up here is at Y9, so it is at Y30, Y-41, so it changes here and there, so we may very well be hitting some of it, which would be kind of cool, but my main goal is to go to the nether ring, which I'm really happy this shows up, because the nether should start appearing probably over here somewhere. However, I have so far been digging this much. <laughs> It takes a lot longer than I expected to dig out this tunnel. Oh, we've hit something. Yep, we've hit some sort of cave path thing. However, I'm pretty sure it's gonna be a dead end. Oh no, wait, I, I see monsters. I see a monster. It's a creeper. Please don't. Ow, that, um, that hurt quite a lot. What are you? Don't quite know. Oh, it's gonna be a mushroom from Botania, isn't it? What? Mm -mm. Nope, 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 nope. Nope. I have had enough encounters with you people. Ooh, what's that? You know what? I, I don't think I want to find out. I think I just want to stick to, uh, yeah, continue, continuing the, the tunnel due to previous, um, Pre previous experience. Now this is just annoying. The hammer doesn't work on the gravel. And I didn't bring a shovel. Uh. Ooh, look at this, look at this, look at this. The nether is starting to corrupt the world over here, which means we are getting very, very close. This is very exciting. Ooh, okay. A straight up open cave that's going to intersect with the tunnel. That can either be good, or it can be bad depending on what shows up here. There is, however, an Enderman right here, which I will terminate because I do want Ender Pearls if possible. So, sir, if you could please. Yes. Thank you. Perfect. So it appears I've hit a pretty interesting layer here generated from uh, viridium from create as well as smooth basalt. Quite interesting. I think we have just officially stepped into the nether region, which by the way also has these um, dungeon thingy things. Yeah, that's gonna be fun. Oh, and my hammer broke. My hammer broke. No, we're not quite there yet. I wanted to make a full tunnel over. But you know what? Judging from the sound, I would say that we are now there. And we are able to get what I came here for, which is the netherrack. Because that means I can now go ahead and make another brick. So, considering my hammer has broken, and we have officially stepped into the nether region, I'd say pretty good success. 
in between episodes I will be yeah, continuing the tunnel so we can actually visit the end in the next episode. I think that would be pretty cool. But yeah, like I said, in between episodes because this tunnel took quite a while to do. However, I will definitely... Oh wow, that's a lot of it. I will definitely bring some more of this ver veridi viridium because I think it is super, super cool. And I want to build with it, potentially. Now all I gotta do is jump and run all the way back home, which, yeah, <laughs> it's quite a journey. Ah, much, much cozier and better. Back amongst the createness and the, oh yes, power generation. Also, I should say that repairing, apparently, uh, repairing the hammer takes quite a lot of iron, but yeah, that's... It's expensive. But anyways, now we are able to make the nether bricks. I'm pretty sure I put, yep, the nether rack in here. Imagine if I forgot the nether rack. That would be, that would be pretty bad, but there we go. All right, and here we go. Magma Crucible has been crafted. So now all we gotta do is basically hook up the power generation system, which I think I'm going to do from back here. I'm gonna make a little bit of a power generation room. All right, so we're going to place the cobblestone generator tier two right here with the magma crucible on top, because that means I will be able to set auto input enabled and auto output enabled and have input from the bottom because the cobblestone, cobblestone generator outputs at the top automatically. Then what I can do is say I output to the right, which is then where I can install the magmatic dynamo which is going to then receive the lava, which should automatically get the lava from this because automatic output has been enabled. We can then put that power directly into our energy cell, which is going to get filled up eventually. And then we can drag a power cable up here all the way over to our controller. And if we right click our controller, we can see the blocks that it can interact with, which is the disk drive and the crafting grid which is perfect. Now, that's just one slight thing that I didn't think about. And that is that the Magma Crucible also requires power. And the Magmatic Dynamo can only produce 40 RF a tick. And I think this thing has its max use at 80 RF per tick. I may have made a little bit of a calculation mistake here. I might be able to salvage this. Potentially. So if I add a fluid pipe here from pipes, of course, gonna set this to output, and then we place some magmatic dynamos onto here, and then, of course, energy cables up here, and then connect it like so. Get rid of this old cabling. Now I've made, I went ahead and made a sterling dynamo, which I'm going to face into the magma crucible, and I'm gonna do this leading. Actually, we're gonna make this look a little bit prettier, like so. Hopefully, by having three, we should be generating enough power to feed into the controller, but also the magma crucible in general, generating more power than we're consuming. But I don't know if this thing will be able to keep up with all the magmatic dynamos. Time will tell, so I basically just need to grab a stack of coal from over here, which I'll get plenty of, by the way, from the crusher. So even if this doesn't work, we can just put this directly into this and it'll be fine for now. But doing this should generate power for this to work. Um, wow, that thing is not generating enough power for this to work properly. All right, another Sterling Dynamo later. Place this here, and that should provide stable power for this to work. Oh, but my, is it slow. I thought it would be like this quick, but wow, clearly not. Lesson learned. This is not a viable solution. I am just gonna casually take this down again, and I ju I'll, I'll just have to, actually, I just need one. I'm pretty sure I'll just need one. Lava hover on top of it. Boom. That should fill it up with coal. Output is at 100%. The controller is active. So, unfortunately, I wasn't able to do the thing with the magmatic dynamo, uh, mag magma crucible, which is good to know. But the big moment has arrived because our storage system is now up and running. However, I want the door. So, let's install this. There we go. Maintenance door. And let's access our storage. So, I should be able to just dump everything in. Yeah. Pretty sure that's how that works. And this is our, it's 1% full at the moment. So if I just go ahead and take all of this junk, add it all in there, I'm gonna actually do that. So I can just do it like this. And just like that, 
Our cobblestone chests have been emptied and we have only filled this to 18%. And there we go, these have now been emptied as well, which means we can add those to the system. One drive is currently full and one other drive is half full, so I'll probably make some more 4K storage disks in between episodes just so we are not gonna run out of space anytime soon. I went ahead and made two more 4K storage disks, which now puts us at, which now puts us at 16,000 item capacity, which is awesome. And this thing is still burning, but that is because we have this right here, which can hold 4 million FE. So I'm just gonna let it use all the coal that I give it and we'll see how much power this thing actually uses. But in the last episode as well, we went on a journey far beyond our reach, almost, <laughs> through the cave area, through the caves here, which we haven't actually explored a whole lot of. And we stopped right here at the edge, right at the edge of the nether area. And today we're going to go past the nether area into the end area. Well, I should call them rings because technically if we go in here, I'm pretty sure, uh, the, nope, that's not it. Aha, yes. I'm pretty sure somewhere it says rings. Ah, uh, there we go. Ring of nether and end. See, told you, it was ring. Now, what I also want to set up today is RF matter receivers and transmitters, because I would like to travel from here to the other ring and the end ring to and from those locations. And so I have set up some items that we need to craft using RF tools. But in order to craft them, we actually need to go to the end first, because we require quite a few of uh, quite a few ender pearls in order to get there. But before we leave, I want to upgrade our crusher here because currently it's not doing anything because well I haven't added any gravel to the chest but I think we can automate gravel so that it just keeps uh, keeps on producing forever you see we of course have cobblestone generators but not only that we also have these iron auto hammers or auto hammers I should say because we do have quite a few actually or quite a few we do have four we have a gold auto hammer a diamond one and a netherite one and actually, now that I think about it, why make an iron one if we can go ahead and make a... Yeah, we might as well upgrade it all the way to diamond, huh? Yeah, might as well do that. But anyways, I want to make this, which eventually, which basically will just crush cobblestone into gravel, and then that gravel will then be fed into the crusher. So I think we should go ahead and make that right away if we can. I just need to go ahead and make an iron hammer here, and we can make an iron auto hammer and then I also want to go ahead and upgrade this to a gold hammer because we might as well get it to the highest possible uh, tier we don't have another right just yet but there we go diamond auto hammer I also need a new cobblestone generator and for that I may need to smelt some stone real quick oh never mind I have a cobble generator tier two right here okay well that makes that way easier uh, I do however also need to make some Iron pipes, which, what am I missing? Oh yeah, droppers. So one, two, I love refined stories, like how this all works. It makes crafting so much easier. And I should have my ranch in here as well. Beautiful. So I think I can just go ahead and I need temporary blocks. So I think I can just go ahead and place a cobblestone generator tier two right there. That's going to output a uh, cobblestone automatically to the top. Place a hammer right here, waiting for input. Okay, it doesn't actually have an inventory. I don't know why that is. Uh, is there anything to see? No. Can I do this and then set this to output? Will this work? I can imagine we actually need to feed it. So let's try and go ahead and do that. Oh, that's not. Oh, there we go. It did it. It actually produced gravel. And there we go. We can actually see its inventory. It is being filled up. I don't know how many items it actually goes through at a time. Looks like maybe four, maybe two. Not quite sure, but for now, this is actually working. Uh, I should put this there. Yeah, yeah, that. that's fine. That's totally fine. So yeah, there we go. That is going to automate, well, this thing right here. I've also fully repaired my sledgehammer, so I think it is time to go on that adventure. Time to head through the tunnels yet again. However, we are going to make a little bit of a pit stop because I was told to make a bunch or or I was told rather to make some feral flare lanterns and then place those in the dungeons, aka this up here, which is of course an ingenious idea because if I place a, a feral lantern right here and it spreads out to say this area here, it's going to make that place a whole lot safer. So as we pass, I'm just going to run in there, place a bunch of them down 
run back out and then if I remember we will stop by on the way back and we'll see how lit the place is. Here is the staircase. I see it. Now a huge difference from yesterday and today as well, or the last episode in this episode, is also I know what to expect now. So if I like place one here, I don't know how big the radius is. So I'm just gonna go over here, place one right there. Please don't blow up. Yeah, it seems to be working. And uh, I seem to be out of here. <laughs> bye bye, we'll be back. Yeah, laugh away, laugh away. I'll be back and we'll see how effective this is. Oh yeah, I also have gotten these two chance cubes from taking uh, quest uh, rewards. And it says, warning, it is recommended you don't open these in or next to your base. So I'm gonna do it like at, oh dear. I'm gonna do it in a cave or something right at the edge of the cave ring. And uh, we're gonna hope for the best. We could get something really bad, but we could also get something really good, something mediocre. We'll see what we get. But first, I must get there. All right, this will from now on be known as the Chance Cube Cave. I don't know what's gonna happen. This could be really good or it could be really bad. I am ready to escape, hopefully, just right down there into my safe tunnel. Here goes, oh, an end crystal. Um, whoa, it's actually coming towards me. It's actually coming towards me. Okay, I, did, I didn't expect that. I didn't expect it to hunt me. That's not a good start. Okay, placing the other one. Huh, well then, I think that would have been a massive amount of XP, maybe? It sounded like XP bottles breaking, but you know what? I, yeah, yeah, I'm fine with it. I'm fine with it. It could have been a lot worse. It could have been a lot worse. I'm happy. All right, here we are at the edge of the nether. Now, the cool thing is, as soon as we get to over here, there shouldn't be any stone in our path, and digging through this should be really, really easy. I wonder if we'll be able to get to this. No, this, according to the map here, is on Y level minus 61. Yikes, that is 60 blocks below us. So yeah, that, that would be a little bit tough to get to. But yeah, I'm gonna dig through this and I'll update you when something new happens or we reach the end. I'll see you in a moment. And I don't know if I said this or not, I was supposed to say it, but then I may have forgotten to say it, that with this nether rack here, it's going to be very easy to mine through because it's so fast. So tunneling from this point forward, hopefully shouldn't be as painful as the other times. Quick update, we have now passed the stone area, so now we're only going to get nether rack moving forward. And yeah, that is exactly what we're gonna do. Oh yeah, that's a thing, by the way, with these things. Uh, with these uh, dungeons in the nether area, we're actually going to get the nether mobs. So things like magma cubes, uh, wither skeletons, blazes, etc. That's going to spawn here. Oh, yep, there we go. Blaze, endermen as well, of course. Yep. No boy. Ah, yeah. B basically treat this as, in, as, a, as if you're in the nether, because you are. That can happen. Okay, that's good. That's good to know. Stuff is starting to happen. Take a look at the map. We're almost there, actually. So the nether ring is a lot thinner than the cave ring, which, honestly, I I'm quite happy with. <laughs> I ran out of torches, so I am now using glowberries as a light source to, to light this entire path. And uh, you know what? It, it works. And here we go, ladies and gentlemen. We have reached, I'm pretty sure, the end area and just a little bit more or a little bit further I should say and we will be surrounded just with end stone. This is exciting. I will go ahead and save a bunch of this netherrack but then I am actually going to pick up a bunch of this end stone here fill up my inventory kind of like this to pick up a bunch of it because I want a bunch of it with me back to home base. And now we are officially in the surrounded <laughs> end ring and we do have something up here which is at y level minus 32 it seems it looks like we might be able to reach this uh depending on how long my hammer decides to last for and i think that would be kind of cool i definitely want to get ender pearls which is kind of the reason why we're going all the way over here so I really hope my hammer can last to go up here and then straight over. Okay, I have finally made it to whatever this is. 
Keep in mind, I'm probably gonna have to bail out of here extremely quickly. However, I do want to see what this is all about. I do hear a bunch of shulkers. I do see a bunch of endermen. Okay. Oh, wow. There's a lot of shulkers. There's also a lot of endermen, which could very well come in handy in just a moment. Um. Oh, wow. It's a... Uh-oh. Uh it's a city. It's a... It's an end city kind of thing here. It looks cool. Okay. So if I just anger a few of these fellas here, make them come over here. Yep, I can farm for a few ender pearls. Maybe if I just move this, that's fine. It will have to be up here though when I kill them. Ideally, anyway. Ah, there's loot though. I mean, uh oh. I mean, I do want loot. Now, according to my calculations, I need 16 ender pearls. And honestly, I think I can get those easier if I just start hunting on my tunnel because I did see ender per endermen start spawning behind me. However, I do. Uh, I would really love to check out some of that loot. Oh yeah, that, that's plenty. That's even more after the corner there. Um, so if I just make a little bit of a thing here and I just go ahead and smack smack. Yeah, I should be able to do this pretty easily. I have decided not to check it out just yet. I want to give this a proper shot, which I think I can if I get close enough. Hmm, this is not promising though. <laughs> Oh, okay, that's that's a lot more promising. Um, okay, yeah, a, a lot more promising. This might have just become... Yep, this has just become worth it. Oh, wow, okay, uh, I don't even know what to do. Dragon scale? Okay, that's a lot here. I just want to make sure I can get back up here. Oop. Okay, that's a lot of them. I need a strategy. Well, I do have Ender Pearls, so how much damage does this thing do? 9.25, okay, so it is more attack damage. Okay. Maybe if we just stand in... Okay, nope. Oh. Oh. Well, this works wonders. <laughs> One, oh, oh no, oh no, this is when things are going downhill. This is when things are going downhill, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. Never mind. I'm good. Kinda. Maybe. Okay, this place, definitely worth coming back looting for. But I want those matter transmitters first. So that I can probably get the loot back with me. Because right now, I got no inventory space. I want the sandstone with me. I need the sandstone with me, actually. So we'll be back. So we'll be back. But for now, I'm going to head home with this. This is not enough ender pearls, But we can actually use this end stone in order to get more ender pearls. So all I need to do now is get back home, get more ender pearls, and then set up the matter transmitters. All right, so now that we're actually home, I want to finally open this rare loot crate. We could get something good. I don't know what it's gonna be. Let's open it, see what we get. Oh, <laughs> can't say that's what I was expecting. But anyway, let's move on. I have compressed this end stone all the way to a tier two or a two times compressed end stone. And I'm gonna place it just like so, because what we can then do is take our hammer and crush it down into crushed endstone. And what we can do with this is we can bulk wash it and potentially get some more ender pearls. And hopefully it's gonna be enough for what I wanna do. And of course I gotta bring back the power to the sink because I kind of disconnected that at the beginning of the episode. But that's no problem. Throw all of this over there together with this. Grab a quick shaft and just like so, we are washing. And there we go, I can already see that we got 16 and a- Whoa! Okay, we, we got way more than just 16 and the pearls. Wow! Yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and add all those into here, and let us get to crafting the matter stuff that we need. So, I, first of all, I need to make some machine frames. I'm pretty sure I need like five of- Excuse me, I, I should- I should have- Oh, I need to add this in here, and then I can keep doing this. Okay, there we go. Right, I think I need- four, five, yep, six sounds right. Next, I need to make the matter transmitter. This is what we will be beaming from, essentially. So this is going to be placed here in our base. Then we need to get the matter receiver, which are the thing or which is the thing that we need to connect to and where we are going to end up from this thing. So this is going to be, there's going to be one in the nether area. There's also going to be one in the end area and one back here at home because I have a plan for this thing. We also need a dialing device, which we will be using together with this. We also need a matter booster right here. And then also together with this. And then the charged porter right here, which is basically 
going to allow us to connect to one of these, aka the one that I'm going to place in here, and then we can travel to it from wherever we are. So that is going to be pretty cool. Uh, so I want to set up the dialing device at the matter transmitter. So if I go ahead and place, let's place the uh, matter transmitter right here. So it will be needing power, but we will sort that in just a moment. Uh, we can change the GUI style, which I like this one. And I think in here, I'm going to place the dialing device and the matter booster. And yep, this has this has now registered this, so I can actually give this a name, home base. Can actually see the text very well there. Um, so that's fine right there. And there we go, home base. And yep, that's pretty much it. Now I need to essentially place these elsewhere. But just to test, I'm going to place one in the corner over here. These are also going to be have, be needing power. However, um, I think I can give this one a name. So test one, that's also going to be public. And then over here, I can say take this and then dial. However, this needs power. Um, so I need to sort that out somehow, which is going to be a bit of an issue considering last episode. However, for right now, I got plenty of coal, so I think this should do. Just gotta place a sterling dy dynamo underneath it, pulling directly up onto it, and this dialing device also needs power, huh? Okay, with the, oops, with these things now having power, if I go ahead and select this, I can place an adjacent analyzer. I do have the meta booster, maybe I'm using the wrong thing. Ah, uh, yes, it's a destination analyzer I want. I don't want the booster, I want an analyzer, which we now have, perfect. So I can place this here, and then here I can check to see this battery receiver power low. Now, I could die from this, however, I think it'll be fine. I'm gonna dial it once, dial is okay. I should end up over there. Yes. Now it does say the battery receiver has run out of power, but I can deal with a little bit extra uh, one and a half hearts of damage essentially. So this means that this now works until I can set up wireless power anyway. So I'm on a bit of a mission. I made this aerial pearl, which is pretty easy to make. I don't need to use it on a zombie or a husk. And if I then get this, I should be able to make this player transmitter, which should be able to charge items on me. So it won't only be useful for this, but also other things in the future. So I'm currently heading back to this place, which it's gonna be cool to see how much the lantern has actually lit up. All right, here we go. Oh, wow. Yeah, this place is very well lit up. Wow, wow, wow. Okay, yep. This place is now safe to basically loot, I suppose. I'll get back to that. Right now, I actually do want things to spawn. Um, I, I can't, I can't resist the ooh. Whoa! Where did you come from, buddy? Okay, I need a zombie to spawn. I really need a zombie to spawn. You're an endermite. I do not feel safe walking through here. That looks very bad. You're very bad as well. Come on, I just need a zombie. All I need is a zombie. You know what, I'm gonna get rid of this because I don't like, oh, I see a zombie. You know what, just go ahead, right click it. Aha, I got it, mission accomplished. Which means now I can go ahead and make this and I think I can place this next to it maybe? Yes, it is getting power. Apparently I need to go ahead and make a blank card and then make a binding card, which then if I right click it, it now has me as the owner and I can put this on there and this should be, yep. It's now charging. Okay, that was a few more steps than I that was a few more steps than I had anticipated with this process. However, with that now done, this thing is now charged. So I, if I go ahead and place this now, if I right click, uh, oh yeah, I have to actually sh hold down shift and then right click this. If I then do this, I get teleported back over. So this is that that's basically my way of getting home from places. So now, if I go ahead and, well, I, I, I'll place this here. I'll name it instead of test, I'll name this home base. I don't know if I can, I don't want to stay. <laughs> I don't know if I can right, shift line, right click to this. Yeah, no, because this is the transmitter, that's a receiver. So now, all I gotta do, quote unquote, all, is travel back to the nether and the end, place these two matter receivers there, and that should be that. All right, I have reached the nether area, so I'm just gonna dig down here, place a matter receiver, and I'm going to call it the nether ring. 
because it, it's a, it's it's a ring as we discovered, and so that's that. I'm gonna continue to the end, and I think this is going to work very well, hopefully. And here we are in the end area. Dig down, place matter receiver. Call it the end ring. There we go. And then I can throw this away. I should be able to. Excuse me. Are you kidding me? It has no target? I guess I need to bind it every time I go through. I didn't know this. I'm pretty sure I can make an advanced charge porter, which I don't know if it saves the things. Um, I might try. I, I don't know. <laughs> I'm gonna have to walk all the way back though. Okay, back home at last. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do this. And hopefully it should be set. <laughs> because now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna walk over to the dialing device. I'm gonna choose the end ring. I'm gonna dial this and it worked now i should be able to right click this and that worked as well and it's been fully charged from this transmitter thingy this works uh, yeah. this might work better than i had expected oh wait hold on i need to interrupt that there we go now all i need to do or want to do is set a redstone signal redstone control um signal required is high and this over here as well signal required is high so that i can install a lever right here I'm pretty sure this is gonna work, which we can check if we just dig down a little bit here. This should now, yep, not produce anything and hopefully preserve the coal. And same for this thing right here. All right, guys, I am going to end this episode right here. However, just before I go, I do want to show you something with the charge porter. I no longer need to bind it every single time I use it. And the reason for that is because, well, the reason why it stopped working earlier was because I broke the matter receiver, which then broke the link to the charge porter, which makes total sense. It's going to be a little bit interesting. Firstly, I want to set up a brand new uh, drawer system here, which is connected to our grinder but before I could do that well I can set up the drawers but before I can connect everything together and finish it all up I actually need to go all the way up here through this all the way up to the nether area and I actually need to yeah go inside this thing because I am relying on ender chests so I need to get blaze rod I don't know if it's possible to get obsidian in there as well but we need both of those things and while all that is happening, I am really hoping to spawn a chicken in here. Yep, out of all things, I need a chicken. I need a chicken in order to get a smart chicken, which is why I have a book. Because in the next episode, I want to get into the chicken mod, which should hopefully be very useful. But before I can do that, I need a chicken and I only have eight eggs to my name and I'm scared to use them <laughs> to try and get a chicken. So I'm going to try this way first. And, and I, yeah, I really hope I get a chicken in here. But anyways, before we get started with the drawer system, I have expanded the base a little bit to hold the drawer system. But first, I want to make a wireless crafting controller, which should make us able to access this setup right here wirelessly, I hope. Uh, so I have everything I need in order to get a crafting monitor. And then just like this wireless crafting monitor, and this should get recharged using our brand new player, uh, player transmitter right here. And I should be able to network not found, so I guess I need to shift right click this. And then there's no wireless transmitter. Intra tra transmitter. Uh, aha. Uh, this should be, yep, this is very much doable. I, I hope. <laughs> I really hope I might not have enough quartz for this. Maybe I do. Nope. I don't. I do now though. Wireless transmitter. I think I need to then place this. Uh, uh, eh. <laughs> uh, I, I don't think I can put it down here. At least I don't think so. Maybe I can. Wireless crafting monitor. Uh, yeah, I assume, I assume it has to actually be up there onto this thing. There we go. Uh, 16 blocks. Yep, that. Why is this? Huh. Interesting. So I've made the wireless grid instead of the wireless crafting monitor. And that works. I can access everything. However, I'm not able to craft anything with it, which I thought I could with this. Don't know why I can't. Maybe I am not doing something right. But it's fine. A at least I now have access to this entire inventory, I think, in a 16 block radius. Ooh, loot B has spawned. Loot B has spawned. These are actually starting to become pretty valuable for me. Because, well, I, I could get eggs from them. And, well, like I just said, 
I want the axe. So I want to free this guy and let him generate a bunch of loot. Where is he? There he is. I think he's taking a liking to my creator. Oh, may maybe not. Maybe not. He likes that bush though. Oh, oh, energy card. I mean, I'll take it. An, an item card? Osmium? Oh boy, chance cube and an egg. That, that's prime. That's the primary thing I want. Another Osmium being good and I think he should despawn in a moment. Another egg. And there we go. He's off and I get a trident. All right, let's put all of that away. And let's get to it. First thing first that I want to make is going to be a storage controller. And for that, I'm going to need a few drawers here. I think I can hold down Alt and there we go. Uh, birch drawer. Yep, that should be it. Storage drawer. Boom. And this is basically what is going to connect to all of our storage uh, drawers or rather what all of our drawers are going to be connected to. And this thing, I'm pretty sure, is what will also be connected to this and also the grinder. Now I just need to make a bunch of drawers to put in here, but not only that, I also need a configuration tool, which for that I'm going to need another drawer, just like so. And configuration tool, there we go, because this is going to be used to connect the drawers. Well, actually, no, for that we need a... I think I could just go like this. Yep, linking tool, that's what we need to link the drawers to this thing. And then the configuration tool we can use to lock the drawers. That will come in handy later. Now, I think it would be pretty boring to have birch floors and walls, uh, sorry, birch floors and ceilings, and then also have a wall of birch drawers. So instead, I think I'm gonna go with oak. So I'm gonna have to grow a, a few oak saplings if they want to grow, there we go. So I'm just going to do this for a little bit and I'll be back when I have a ton of drawers. Oh, spawned inside one. <laughs> All right, so I have made 18 or sorry, 16 drawers and I am now going to clear out a uh, four by four area here in the wall. 60 drawers is definitely not enough for what I want to do, but it should be enough for right now. So, oh, this thing has run out as well. This is something that we'll be doing as well. If everything goes according to my plan, uh, I wonder if I can pick this up and move it. Does power have a wrench? Yes, yes. So I assume I can just hold down shift, link, rotate, config, link, rotate, config. If I break it, is it gonna lose all the power? I really hope not. I really, really hope not. Nope, it didn't. Okay, good. But yeah, like I was saying, hopefully today we are also going to solve our power problem but we shall have to see. There we go, all of those oak drawers. Now I'm pretty sure if we go ahead and take our linking tool, uh, swapped action to remove, swapped action to add. So I'm pretty sure if I go ahead and... Okay, right click. Okay, so I right click on this and then I say add this, all these drawers to that controller. And so that means if I put in, let's say some cobblestone bricks here, I should be able to right click this thing and it adds them there. And then of course I can't extract, extract them just like that, but hopefully we'll be able to extract them using some refined storage cables into this crafting grid, which is exactly what I want to try next. So I believe we will be needing an importer, which I should have everything for, except that I didn't take it out of the furnace. Turns out I did, but I used it. All. So we're gonna do that and pop this back into action. Oh boy. And that's enough of you. That's my solution, by the way, to turning off and on this machine. <laughs> I'm sure there's a lever or something I could make, but for now, that works. All right, that should be that. So we should now be able to make an importer, an external storage. And then I already have a bunch of cables, so I'm not gonna waste any more on that. So let's grab these. So I'm pretty sure I may need to remove this for the time being, which is going to add that to there. So external storage would be this because this is an external storage via this thing. And then an importer right here because we're importing what is here to there. I think that's how it works. I might be wrong, but we are now going to connect this up. And so let's say I have all of this here. I'm going to take it all out. Then I add it to this, like so. And there we go, we can access what is in here. Now, the cool thing is, if I take this configuration tool, I think I can swap mode, hide show amounts, hide show item renders, hide show upgrade renders. 
swap mode to lock. So if I right click this now, it is locked. So even if I go ahead and take everything out, it will still have a spot in there. So question is, if I put it in there, it does not have priority to go back here, which is interesting. However, as soon as I take all of it out, if I just have a single one in there, I think no. So I need to somehow tell this that this needs to go here. I think I fixed it. If I right click this external storage and click into priority, I just set it to 100. Basically, it's just something really high. And then everything goes into here, even if it's at zero, because this is telling it, hey, anything that you put into here, this should have high priority. Now, if I go ahead and lock every single one of these, it should mean that only the stuff that we have actually put in here should be put in there. So if I go ahead and add that, and then I also go ahead and add my wrench, it shouldn't add wrenches or things like that anywhere else. Only things that we have actually went ahead and said, hey, this has a home here. I'm gonna take all of this stone and boom, that has a home here, add that here now. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. But yeah, that is basically how we're going to set this up. Obviously, it's not going to hold uh, stone and all that stuff. We're going to be using it to hold stuff like ingots, or stuff like that. I put my configuration tool in, didn't I? <laughs> yeah, all part of the plan. So I'm gonna remove you and remove you, lock you back up. Now I'm gonna place this not actually like out here in the middle of the floor. That would be kind of not cool looking. Instead, I'm gonna go back here. I'm gonna ooh, take my air hammer and then I'm gonna make some space back here. And there we go. Instead of having everything out there, we're gonna have it in here. And yep, that definitely is not why I'm placing that there. Definitely no cable running behind that. I don't know what you're talking about. I just think it did. It has some color to the place. It makes this place look nice. So just stop, just stop judging me. Anyways, this is pretty much as far as we can come without me getting some obsidian and getting some blaze rods because I want to make these ender drawers and also ender chests because these ender chests can basically get linked. And so I can basically tell everything that goes through this go into there and coal and whatnot i can like i showed before with setting the priority high i can set in here so that is what we need to do next and as you can see through the ender chest recipe i need blaze rod i think i can manage wool because i have access to string and yeah it's just the blaze rod and the obsidian and again if i had the chicken spot set and ready to go i could just use that but like i said i need chickens for that and i'm scared of using my eggs so we're doing it the hard way. Now, before we go ahead and start our assault over at the nether uh, the dungeon over here, but I, I also think I want to take a quick pit stop over here. But either way, I want to get as much food as I possibly can because these glow berries are not gonna cut it. Okay, a loot bee has just spawned down there. I'm pretty sure if it dies, or when it dies, I should say, the items is going to... Actually, I think the, the spot... Mm. I'm gonna dig down to it. I'm gonna dig down to it. <laughs> because I'm pretty sure when it dies, the items are just gonna sit there. Yep, it just generates a hole. We don't want that. All right, think I got everything. Let's go. Honestly, I should set up a mana, uh, or mana? No, mana receiver up here so I can just teleport into the dungeons. You know what? That might not be a bad idea, actually. I may do that before heading over to the nether area. But here we are. I'm just gonna run in, place a bunch of these, and I'm gonna hope for the best. Run in, place one here, run in, place one here as well. There's bonus, place one over there, don't blow up. How dare you blow up my lantern? Okay, that's bad. That's a problem. That's a bit of a problem. And I'm pretty sure there's a spawner over here somewhere. I'm just not sure where. Hello. You're a special spider. Two special spiders. Oh dear. That's bad. That's, that's bad. Where are you? That, okay. Yep, that's definitely a spawner. They just spawned right there. They just spawned right there. They just spawned right there. Yeah. Okay, wait, 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 wait. That's, those are, those are, those are things. Those are things. Those are the vexes, whatever they're called. Uh, yeah. Ma matter thing? Yep, definitely needed. Definitely not an excuse to get out of there. You know what? I think we are just gonna stick to going to another area. Down once, and let's go. All right, I should be right at the entrance. 
Oh, wow. Literally right at the entrance. Okay, ooh, and magma blocks. Those are huge for us because we... Ooh. Because... Whoa, hello. Because we could actually turn that into obsidian extremely easy. So that's very good. Uh, I'm gonna do this. Secure that. Slowly getting this place safe. Yep, because... Oh, what's that? Was that only 12 or was that a stack? That must have been only 12. Okay, yeah, I just want a bunch of this because I can use this. I can wash it, bulk wash it, and we can get obsidian, which is super, super useful for us. Oh, the spawners do that? Okay, can I, can I possibly get rid of this? Whoa, I can't move, I can't move, I can't move, I can't move, I can't move. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Uh, with her. That's not good. Down to two hearts. Beep, 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 beep. Get regeneration. Whew. Oh, it's a, it's an elite with a skeleton. That makes sense. Makes very much sense. Please, go away. If possible. That would be nice. Now, if I could get the spawner, that would be amazing. Please don't spawn another. That would be very kind of you. Not to do. Okay, good. And give me this. Alright, nice. I just gotta be... Aware that things could spawn. Is it okay? I got stuff. Oh wow. Okay, I don't. How am I gonna be able to fit all of this? I don't have. I should have upgraded my backpack, huh? Um. Okay, I need to. I need to sort what I take. But wow, this is um. Okay, it's obviously not everything that I need. But I definitely want a bunch of this. Ooh, uncovered loot crate. I've got to open this. Oh, no, not a brick. Okay. I think that can stay behind. I mean, so far, I'd say we are having better success with this than with the previous dungeon that we went into. Go, oh, Napple. I might use. I might need that now. <laughs> that might be something we need now. Uh, can I get rid of this by any chance right now without anything killing me? Oh, there's a wood skeleton over there. Oh, there's an old skeleton. Please let me break this. Yep. Okay. Good. You see me. Uh, I should block this off. You know what? I'm gonna do it with soul soil. I just realized I didn't block it off to the skeleton. Okay. <laughs> Before we do anything else, I'm gonna go ahead and place this metal receiver right here in the center. Right there. I'm gonna name it, uh, Nether Dungeon. There we go. That way we should be able to always be able to come back here very, very easily. Mushroom rice. Now that's food. I'm not gonna eat it right now, but that's very, very cool food. Alright, so I'm just gonna go ahead and move forward kind of like this. Very slowly. These guys will be able to get it, get in here, but that's not a problem because they're easily defeated. And they don't hurt nearly as much as everything else. That is something that's gonna hurt, though. What we got in here? I mean, honestly, diamonds, not really bothered. Diamond shovel is cool. I think this would be cool. Pixel? What, 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 what? Not me, right? Not me. Not me. I think we're good. Gonna go ahead and place another lantern over there. Whoa, you're fast. Okay, you, you actually scared me. Whoa. Okay, you actually jump scared me. Are you kidding me? Yikes. Okay, what do we have here? Dispenser. You know what? I don't care. I don't care about dispensers, honestly. I just want only important stuff. Okay, let's get rid of you. Because you are very scary. And I don't like you. There we go. Alright, what we got in here? We got some obsidian. A lodestone. Uh, I'll take the arrow. Husk. Husk spawn egg. Huh, that could become useful, I suppose. Wow, there's a lot of stuff here. I'm honestly gonna leave stuff behind, like the redstone coal and such. And prioritize a lot of stuff like food, crying obsidian, I think, as well. String, I'll... T actually, nope. String's not that important. You apparently can't navigate, so that's good for me. But, oh, I could have... Okay. Okay. I could have so easily fallen there. Um, well, that's good to know. Please go away. I really want to kill this blaze. That's what I'm really here for. <laughs> Other blaze rods. Which is what I need to focus on next. Alright, is it possible for me to maybe... Uh, not with you there. 
go away. Please let me destroy this skeleton spawner. And boom. Okay, very good. Uh, nine golden apples. I'll say, ooh, another ward. Another ward is huge. Uh, saddle, saddle, saddle. Don't know why I would need a saddle or want a saddle, but I'll take it. This seems a bit risky. Zombified piglin. Oh boy. I don't think I can break that, actually, you know? Well, I'll definitely kill the blaze. Just don't hit any of the pigmen. And there we go. Chest. Obsidian. Yep, I'll take it. Yeah, considering this is the nether dungeon, or nether themed dungeon, I'm finding this quite easy, honestly. <laughs> Compared to the previous ones we have had, or ones, the previous one we have had. Which uh, have been quite difficult, I'm not gonna lie. But this is fairly easy. At least this branch of it. Huh, what do we got here? Lock of the sea, loyalty, slimy seeds, okay. Got more chests in here. Obsidian, definitely gotta take that. Efficiency 5, unbreaking. <laughs> uh, is there anything that I don't really need? I get uh, arrows would be kinda cool. Fire charges, probably don't need it. Don't want to, really don't want the stick, to be honest. <laughs> Grinding obsidian, yep, don't need that. Lodestone, I'll take it. Okay, so what is this room? This room is definitely filled with lava. Definitely. Um, not too much doubt about that. I really need blazes. I haven't come across many blazes through this, which is a bit unfortunate. I only have two blaze rods so far, which... That, that's not enough. <laughs> oh, I got an enchanted golden apple. Okay, that's good. And through here we get... Ooh, more blazes. Okay, uh, place you retreat for a little bit. All right, let's go in. Oh, there's a ladder in here. Okay, what does this lead to? Chess. All right, well... Oh, you're a problem, you're a problem, you're a pro problem. You're a very big problem, actually. Uh, run, run. Run, 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 run. Ha ha! <sighs> Can't survive the lava, how can ya? Oh, that's good to know, that's a trash bin. Has that always been there? I don't feel like that has always been there. Alright, back to these guys. Maybe not, maybe not, maybe not, maybe not. Maybe not. Aha, it's a blaze boner. That I'm not gonna destroy. However, killing these guys might prove a bit of a difficult task. There we go, three rods. I know I'll definitely be wanting to make two ender chests, and then I also want some ender drawers, which for that I need an ender chest, and I have ender, which I need blaze power for, so I at least need 10 or so. Well, now they're just coming to where I am. That's kind of neat. But only kind of... Ooh, blaze head. I need blaze head. I need that blaze head. I need the blaze head. Blaze head. Oh, no. That's not... Give me... Stop giving me stuff I don't need. Nah. I don't know what that sound is on this other side. I have no idea what that sound is. Oh, wow, there's a lot of blazes here. Oh, this is good. This is good for me. Like I said, need 10 rods. Oh, wow, that's a lot of them, though. Gonna go ahead and place some more lanterns here and there. Not two, but oh, another enchanted golden apple. Ugh. I just found five blaze rods in that chest, so now I have 13. So if I kill these blazes, I should have. Ooh, what's that? Clay loot crate. I'm gonna take a look at that in a moment. I'm gonna kill this final blaze. And I think that that is gonna do it. Let's go home. Okay, all things considered, though, that was easier than this dungeon. <laughs> Which, you know what? I will not complain. We got a lot of stuff. Apple cider. Okay. Crystal catalyst. Blazing crystal. We got these fireworks, which are kind of cool. Uh, crying obsidian, which can be useful. Allows the users to travel quickly through portals. Don't really need that since we don't use portals. I have this clay loot chest. Don't know what it is. Oh. Oh, it, li it literally just gives uh, clay. Okay. Uh, got it. We did get this. Some lodestones. Yeah, overall, not a bad haul whatsoever. Multi-torch. Wait, what's a multi-torch? What's a multi-torch? Torch? Torch? I can just convert it into normal torches. Okay, I like that. 14 blocks of gold. 
<laughs> Just casually like that. Oh, we've run out. Have we run out of power? Wow. Um, okay, that's fine. We, we have plenty of coal, which I'm going to be linking up as the next thing. But for now, eh, there we go. Speaking of which, also we got two blaze heads, by the way, which means we can now get blazing blood, which means I can now smelt down diamond. Really good. Uh, okay, so let's get all the, nope, mac, ma. Because if I take this and put it together with the washing thing here, if I go ahead and break this, place this, we're now washing it, which means we should get a bunch of obsidian soon. And there we go. A stack and 32 obsidian. This should be plenty. So let's go ahead. Uh, I need some wool though. Wool. Do I have enough string to make wool is the question. Yes, just about. So I need to make two of these ender chests right here. I need to make a chest though. There we go. Two ender chests and I will show you how these work in just a moment. However, I also want to need or want to need. No, I also need <laughs> to go ahead and make some normal ender chests here for this, the ender drawer, which is going to become very, very important. So if I go and make four of those and then make as many of these as I can, which is going to be four and then make these. I just need some sort of drawer. All right, drawers made and we should now be able to make one and two and the drawers, which is all that we will need for now. I'm going to save these blaze rods. So these and the chests, if I place one here and I place one here, as you can see, they have these white walls up here at the top. They are basically color codes. I could go ahead and dye both of these blue. And then what would essentially happen, actually, I'm going to go ahead and do that. If I take some lapis, clear this and make this blue dye and also blue dye. And then I will also need some white dye. There we go. If I go ahead and right now open these and I put these uh, two sterling dynamos in there, put the sticks away for now. They're in there currently. And as you can see, both of them open at the same time. That is because these two now share the same inventory. However, if I go ahead and color code this one to blue, 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 it could also, by the way, be blue, red, yellow, etc. You have basically endless combinations at this point. Now this one doesn't open and the two sterling dynamos are gone because they're only on the white, white, white uh, network, if you will. So that is really cool. And that is what we are going to be using for the grind over there. Now, if I break this, what is actually going to happen? Do I need some touch with this? No. Okay, good. It's not like normal ender chests. So if I go ahead and place an ender chest right here, and I go ahead and add some piping right here with my pipe wrench, don't need to color codes anymore. And I go ahead and add this here. I'm going to go ahead and disable that. I'm going to extract from this, right? If I then go ahead, actually, before we do that, I also appear to need these of food, but that's fine. I want one of each of these items right here. So that's osmium, lead, tin and iron. And if we then go back here, I now want to go ahead and put these items in this uh, system right here. However, I do want to add another row just for the sink. <laughs> I like things symmetrical. OK, now what I'm going to go ahead and do, I'm going to remove this actually. And I'm going to go ahead and place an ender drawer right there. And I will be needing my configuration tool again. We're going to lock these, of course. Boom, boom, boom. I'm going to add coal to I may need to unlock it. Yeah, there we go. And now lock it. I'm going to place a coal in this ender drawer right here. And if I go ahead and get my linking tool, well, which I have two of them, I'm going to go ahead and this, I think, is still connected to this. So all I need to do is connect you. You, 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 and then the final one in the corner up there. Boom, just like so. Now, if I go ahead and place the end drawer, say here, and I'm pretty sure all I need to do is if I get some more coal, I'm pretty sure they will connect. I place coal in there. They don't connect. I may need to go ahead. Actually, it's a zero there now. It should say the same number on both of them. OK, I think what I need to do, I need to hold down shift, then punch it. And then I need to punch this one. No, I need to. There we go. OK, no, reset. Hold down shift, right click to reset, punch, right click. And I'm pretty sure if I go ahead and get some more coal, which I uh, don't have. So we'll use something else as an example. <laughs> Lapis. Yes, they now share the same frequency, meaning Whenever coal now goes through there, once we set that up, 
it's going to be added right there. And then it's going to go right here automatically into our Sterling Dynamos. So that is the final thing that we need to set up. I'm going to add these right here. I'm going to add some item pipes. I'm going to remove this torch and place it over there. Place it like so. Get my wrench. Set this to output so it takes the items out. And I have some raw tin here. Did I place? I did not place. Okay, I'll place that there then. But now all I think we need to do. Oh no, I'll need to. <laughs> I'll need to empty this. Um, so if I go in and empty everything here and place it in here, it should. Yep. It's been taken out and we will see it being added to this right here. Would you look at that? Do I have any other food than... No, I don't think I have any other food than... Uh, I, I'm, get, I'm getting tired of glow berries essentially. And um, uh, currently I'm trying to transition over to wheat. But my wheat farm is not that amazing at this point in time. All right. I think I'm just going to have to do something else here. I'm going to go ahead and open this up. I'm going to get some stone chests, cobblestone chests. I'm going to place them here. And yes, this will be indeed very, very, very painful. Oh, that's not really what I wanted to do. There we go. Yeah, I'm going to place this here and then I'm going to have to break this. Uh, Oh boy, yeah, that is a painful, very, very painful. Add all this to here, add some more. <laughs> Transitioning mid-session here, uh, get all that. Do that, and then quickly get this placed, like so. And now everything that goes in here is gonna go in here and it's gonna get sorted. And I think for the time being, just because I can't be bothered to do it manually. We gotta go and do this. Add this. Gonna set it to export essentially. And that should all go into that ender chest and then eventually get sorted. Now the only thing that I haven't done yet is actually adding the coal, which the coal should be going through ever so slowly. If I just go ahead and take the coal, because currently it doesn't have a destination. So if I go ahead and get my configuration tool, unlock this, place coal, and go ahead and lock it. They're going to get extracted, but it is going to remain as coal. So now when coal gets put into the system, if I just go ahead and add or take all this, just to give it a head start, it's now going to go in here. And it is now over here being dragged out into the sterling dynamos, generating us power. Ah, this was a bit of a process. And as you can see here, things are slowly making their way into the drawers where they belong. Now, what this also means is that I will be able to take, uh, I don't know if I can take them with the content inside of them. If I go ahead and lock these, um, I can. Aha. If I just take them from the side here, like so, I can go ahead and add these to the wall, grab my linking tool, which is not for some reason linked to this. There we go. I can add these. Actually, I do not want to I, I want to remove how do I how do I swap to single? I don't know how to. Okay, that's fine. I want to add these there. <laughs> because that means all of the cobblestone that we have there is now going to be added to this right here. And a good tip for when doing this, be sure to lock them right as you add them to the wall so that you have control. And look at this, sterling dynamos all the way full and we will have a steady supply of coal building up. That is very cool. Guys, I think that is going to do it for this episode. I really hope you have enjoyed. In between episodes, I'm going to try and probably make some more drawers, fill it out because what's also really cool is, I just want to show this really, really quickly. Let's take our gold ingots, for example. Let's quickly empty out something that is... Okay, none of this is easy to empty out. Let's remove the dirt completely. Uh, we need the configuration tool and get rid of the sticks. If I add the gold there, it actually adds the blocks and the nuggets as well. So that's really cool. That might be something we want to do. Ladies and gentlemen, we are going into the chicken smart. And you may have noticed in the minimap or on the minimap, we now have... Well, two pigs, but we also have chickens. I had two spare chickens spawned in here. I bred them, so now we have two adult chickens, and we also have one spot chicken, which honestly I thought would lay a ton of eggs, but currently has done nothing but lay eggs every now and then. Um, so I don't know what's. 
different about the, the, this guy. But before we can start this episode, I think I am going to be needing a specific item. And so for that specific item, I'm going to need to breed those two adult chickens and kill it. You see, I need... Hey, buddy. I need a feather in order to get started with the chicken spot, I'm pretty sure, with the chi uh, kitchen, uh, kitchen catcher? No, chicken catcher. <laughs> and, uh, well, unfortunately, that means one of you will have to um, be... Well, uh, yeah. Bad news, um, I didn't get a feather. <laughs> but no matter, we can get started without a feather. Because I have prepared, in between episodes, everything that we need to do. But before we do that, let me show you the draw system. I set this up in between episodes here. I added all the ingots and everything in the order that I liked. Even added a spot for our precious eggs. And yeah, I really like this setup. And as you can see, we have coal for days. The number has only gone up. And well, these sterling dynamos, basically, we have infinite power at this point. Uh, I don't know what we're gonna do when we start using more than 4, 8, 12, 120 RF, but uh, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. What we need to focus on are these chickens. So I have added a bunch of chickens here to the book box menu, and then I have added the breeder and the roost to separate them from the rest, because these chickens down here all depend on other chickens in order to be made. So these are the ones that we could actually craft. And I think we should craft these just so we have them so that we can make the rest of the combinations that we want. Then I went ahead and looked through the rest of the chickens and I picked those that I really want, such as a supply of string, a coal chicken for even more infinite power, glass, gunpowder, you know, those things that we might need and might want just come to us directly without us having to worry about a farm. Now, as you may have noticed, to craft these chickens, we need to use the mechanical crafting from create. So for that, I'm going to need a single cogwheel. And then I need to start worrying about different dies and different items. Uh, I think, you know what, I'm going to place it there. I don't want it working just yet. Actually, yes, we can, because it is only going to craft once it either receives a redstone signal or the entire thing is full. So to start off, we got the cactus green chicken, we got the bone meal chicken, we got the red chicken, we got the lapis lazuli chicken. Some of these are very easy to make. I should have a bun... Okay, that's not quite a bunch of cactus. Um, yeah, that, that's definitely... How, how do we get green dye again? Oh, yeah. Okay, so something else that we can do is if we go to Botania, we have all of these flowers right here. And if I go ahead and find fertilizer the stuff right here well i already have a stack but if we i think i've used yep i've already used all my bone meal if we go ahead and right click this on moss as you can see we get all of these fancy flowers made for us which is amazing and all these flowers will have different dyes so for example i'm pretty sure mystical green flower will give us mystical green petals and these petals can then be turned into their respected dye however i'm not going to do that just yet this is actually looking really cool. All right, I've used 20 of these fertilizers, and I was actually originally going to do a thing where you can place a petal down, and then you can bone meal it, and then you get another f of the flowers. However, I think I have enough floral fertilizer... Fo wait, what? Floral fertilizer, yep, I said it right. I have enough of this stuff to just basically make all the dye that I need to make for this to work. Now, what I'm going to do is take our 14 eggs out from this place, and then we're gonna place an egg in the middle and surround it with cactus green dye. Did I just place two on this? No, I don't think so. Okay, that's fine. Place the final one and it is going to combine it all and we should be getting a cactus green chicken. Yep, cactus green chicken. There it goes. Give it a moment, combining it all. Looks really cool and it all gets added and mixed together and magically just like so we have a cactus green chicken. Now, this is the point where I would place it down and watch it walk around, but I'm not gonna do that because I don't have said chicken catcher uh, due to obvious reasons. But now I can go ahead and remove that from the item list and well, we have plenty more to do. I have white dye, let's get a bone meal chicken. Yeah, bone meal chicken. That's actually, I want two of those, I think, because bone meal is something that I 
I feel like I constantly need, but I think the reason why I need it is because, well, I'm trying to get wheat and whatnot. So I may not need a bone meal chicken. We'll see. Uh, oh, they just despawned. <laughs> I thought the items would actually make it up here. Oh, well. Oh, yeah. If I didn't, uh, if I didn't say it or you didn't know, uh, basically these chickens can generate resources for us. So a resto chicken, for example, will generate, well, redstone. Coal chicken, coal. Gold chicken, gold. Diamond chicken, diamond. You get the point. But that is then the bone meal chicken, and I'm th I think I'm gonna go ahead and not ch not chicken. We're gonna go ahead and make a little bit of a chess area over here. Actually, we're gonna we're gonna I I have finally made gotten a use for this thing, or we're finally gonna set this thing up for a usage, and that is going to house this place is going to house all of our chicken stuff. So these right here, this is gonna be our chicken chest. This is going to be our wall of chicken resource generation <laughs> and i guess this over here can be our chicken breeding setup yeah so speaking of which we need roosters these are used to basically house the chicken and collect its resources and the breeder is obviously made for breeding so i want to go ahead and put the hay bale in there and i think i'm gonna make three of these to begin with and then I'm gonna make a ton of roosters here, eight of them. I had to farm a little bit off camera to get enough hay barrels for it. But if we go here and place the breeders, well, first place a little bit of a table, and then place a breeder there, breeder there, breeder there. This will come in handy later. And then we can place a bunch of these roosters right here. And this is basically where a chicken would go into. So if we go ahead and take a bone meal chicken, place it in the middle here. It's sitting right there, nice and comfortable and warm. And this arrow basically shows us the percentage. And once the percentage hits 100, we are going to get bone meal. And then it basically goes, well, keep, it keeps going basically. It doesn't need food, doesn't need water, doesn't need anything like that. So that is cool. They also have stats. Now I don't exactly know if the stats has anything to do with how fast they produce uh, the resources. I'm pretty sure that it does, but it's not something that I'm going to worry about right away. Right now I just want to set things up. So yeah, you get the point. I need to go ahead and get red dye, I assume. Yep, red petals, red dye. Yeah, I just need to go ahead and craft all of these. You've seen how it's done now, and uh, I don't think it would be too interesting watching me craft well, how? Oh, are you kidding me? Craft one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. No, wait, that's messed up. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, quite a few chickens. So I'll be back when I have all the craftables crafted. All right, ladies and gentlemen, after crafting a bunch on this machine, we finally have all of the craftable. I'm pretty sure, anyway, chickens. Honestly, doesn't seem like that many. Seemed like it was more when it was over here. But now we are finally able to make, well, more chickens. Oh, wow. I forgot I had this cleaver out. Let's put that away. It's a bit big for this area. Uh, let's go ahead and make something simple like the coal chicken. In order to get the coal chicken, we need to breed together the flint chicken and the log chicken. So if we go ahead and take that thing black, if we go ahead and take the flint chicken and the log chicken, we put them in here and I'm pretty sure I need to get some seeds. I need to set more transmitters up. Uh, seeds, yep, if I go ahead and just take a bunch of these and I give it a stack of wheat so we can see the percentage we need to, well, now just wait. So I guess while that is cooking, let's see if we can make something else with some of the other chickens. Oh, I forgot the soul sand chicken. Yep, that's something we need to do. Uh, I really want the lava chicken. I really want the lava chicken, which is, of course, a coal chicken and a nether quartz chicken. Emerald chicken is diamond and cactus green. I need something that I can certainly do right now, such as... Well, I, I don't know. Aha! Redstone chicken is red and sand chicken, which I can definitely do. So red chicken and sand chicken. If we put those over here in the right booth. There we go, and yep, almost done, 90%. Is there another one that we can do? I really want obsidian chicken, but that's of course a water chicken, and that, oh, what's that? Okay, so what is going on here is essentially there is a percentage chance. So if we go in here, was it the coal chicken? I think I was making the coal chicken. Yes, the coal chicken, so it is, it is a 20% chance. So now that we have the flint chicken, there was another one where I needed the flint chicken, which was, which one was that? Aha, we need to put the flint chicken and the sand chicken together to get a gunpowder chicken, which we can certainly do because I just got another sand chicken before. That is not what I needed. 
that's better. But we can go ahead and fetch a sand chicken, put it together with a flint, some wheat, and then we should get a gunpowder or a gun, yeah, gunpowder chicken soon. And that's another log chicken, which I think that should be. I'm gonna make this right now, which is why I'm making the soul sand. Which I can just go ahead and do that. No, wait, no, I need the soul sand. I don't need it washed. <laughs> oh dear. And there we go, we got a redstone chicken. We're gonna continue to get uh, sand and red chicken, but how? But however, however, I'm gonna take these guys out for right now. And I'm pretty sure, I don't know if they're gonna have different stats or not. I don't think they will, unfortunately they do not stack. Uh, still got more flint chickens and log chickens. And still more flint chickens. Yep, and log chickens. I actually do want to go ahead and add a log chicken to this place right here because I would love having logs just being generated. But I feel like in order to speed this process up, I'm gonna need a bunch more breeders. And in order to get that, I'm gonna need more bone meal. And in order to get that, I'm gonna need to bulk wash some dust. Oh boy. Yep, look at that. We are getting logs generated. And there we go, we got a gunpowder chicken, which means I can now go ahead and stop this process. Unfortunately, I don't know. I guess this has an EMC. This doesn't have an EMC. I don't know why that is. Anyway, uh, yep, still have not gotten whatever it is that I'm going for here. I've, I've completely forgot. Oh yes, of course, the string chicken. So I actually want a water chicken. So in order to do that, we need to put a gunpowder chicken together with a snowball chicken. And in order to get a snowball chicken, we need the blue lapis lazuli chicken and lock chicken together. So I should have, yep, that's the lapis lazuli chicken. Hey, buddy, gonna place that in there together with the lock chicken. Wait, and we should hopefully get a water chicken. This is quite the process. There we go, we got a snowball chicken. So now we can go ahead and compare, or compare, no, put together snowball and gunpowder. Snowball there, gunpowder there, need more seeds. And there we go, that one is off and I still have not gotten a string chicken. A clay chicken would be really, really awesome. However, I'm waiting for a snowball chicken, which might happen over here because it's only a 20% chance that we'll get a water chicken. So yeah. Oh, we got another snowball chicken though. I forgot to stop this process. This is, this is a lot to, <laughs> to keep track of. A glass chicken would also be really nice, so that is a redstone and nether quartz together. That should be doable. We have the redstone over there. We have the quartz right here. Put those in there. Check all of these. We got another snowball chicken. That'll be useful. Another log one, of course. I still have not gotten a coal chicken. I think this one is the one that has been going for the longest. Still no coal. And it's even a 20% chance. And here I am getting the clay chicken right off the bat. <laughs> Boom, there we go, we got the water chicken. What did I need this one for? I can go ahead and make an obsidian chicken once I have a lava chicken, which I'm currently working towards. Prismarine shot chicken, that's interesting. Emerald chicken for prismarine crystal. Don't really want any of those, so I'm really just waiting with this one until we actually, oh, that's another gunpowder chicken. We can actually take those out now in order to make the lava chicken and then going ahead and make the obsidian chicken. But for making the lava chicken, I need the coal chicken and that's it. the coal chicken, finally. Finally, I was just talking about it. Another quartz chicken. Where I don't have another another quartz chicken. Uh, you guys can stop now. Actually, no. You guys can keep going. I want more coal chickens. That's about the clay. Actually, I'll get more during this process. That's about the redstone and no more quartz chickens. I'm gonna need to wait for this one. So a string chicken is ink black and a log. So a log chicken, and I should have an ink black somewhere. Uh, ink black chicken. There we go. Put those to work. And there we go, that's another another quartz chicken put together with the cold chicken. We'll make as hopefully 16.6666666% chance a lava chicken. I, by the way, I dare anyone to count the amount of times I, I'm going to say chicken in this episode and put it in the comments. <laughs> There's no reward, <laughs> but yeah, yeah, I dare you. Rest assured, I'm not gonna count how many times I say chicken in this video that, no, I'm, I'm not doing that. I'm not doing it. If, if you want to, that's fine. I dare anyone to do it. There's no reward, however. I'm gonna go ahead and combine a bone meal chicken and a flint chicken. Uh, that's flint, bone meal is, oh, nope, there we go. Fl yep, yeah, bone meal and flint, which is going to result in, oh wow, this can result in a lot. But I am after the iron chicken. Because with that, I can go ahead and make the gold chicken. 
which can be used to make the blaze rod chicken, which I definitely do want. Finally, got the glass chicken, which I can use together with a gold chicken to make a diamond chicken. Gonna go ahead and make a glowstone chicken, which is gonna be a yellow chicken together with something that I have forgotten. Quartz, of course, makes total sense. We got it, we got a lava chicken. Hold everything, we got a lava chicken, and notice I didn't get another coal chicken from this process, but a lava chicken together with a uh, water chicken should hopefully give us an obsidian chicken. <laughs> this can be a bit confusing, but honestly, this process is actually quite fun. There we go, we got the iron chicken, which means we can now go ahead and make the gold chicken, which is just, oh, the yellow chicken, which is currently occupied. Now, if we go ahead and combine the cactus green with clay, we should hopefully get a slime chicken. Another water chicken. You know what? Can't complain at all. There we go. Gold chicken, which combined with a lava chicken can produce a blaze rod chicken. However, I am currently waiting for the obsidian chicken to be made. That's another lava chicken, though, so we can go ahead and... That's a glowstone chicken. Which one do I not need at this point? So this one that was making a gold chicken, so we can put those two together. And that was going to make... The right one, blaze rod chicken. Oh wow, I'm at the stage already. Boom, slime chicken, which together with blaze rod chicken, we can get uh, a chicken. But again, I am waiting. Oh, blaze rod chicken. There we go. We can go ahead and do that right away. Can put glass and gold chicken together and hopefully get a diamond chicken right off the bat. And boom, we got a glowstone chicken. I'm gonna go ahead and put. Some of these, ch actually, all of the chickens away. Let's let's let me let me go through all of this, making sure that we have only the stuff that we need. Because my inventory is a mess. We got an obsidian chicken. We got an obsidian chicken. That is beautiful. You guys can keep going though. You, I still have not gotten that one. So I am currently missing a string chicken, which is currently in process. Uh, blaze rod chicken, which is also currently in progress. Netherite chicken, we're gonna be needing a cobalt chicken and gold chicken. Cobalt chicken is made with nether wart and gas here. Gas here is made with bone meal. Uh, okay, my brain is starting to explode. I got this, I got this. Bone meal chicken, blaze rod chicken, together, makes, hold on, this one, makes gas tier chicken. And with gas tier chicken, we can make a cobalt chicken. Very easy. I'm definitely gonna title this video Diamond Chicken. I'm definitely gonna Oh back by cream chicken. Oh wow that that was a lot in one. Uh I'm definitely gonna title this video uh too many chickens, that's for sure. There we go, gas tier chicken acquired, which if I combine those two together, we'll get a cobalt chicken. And we are slowly getting there, ladies and gentlemen. Now this is not all the chickens that we can make. I didn't pick all the chickens from the chickens. Uh, the screen right here, for example, didn't get the osmium, the aluminum, the tin and whatnot, but I did get the ones that I feel are going to be the most important for us to get. I also went ahead and placed a water chicken in here to see what we would get, and we get these water eggs, and like I said, it's like an on-off bucket, and it can be used, well, with a bucket and you get a water bucket. My question is, though, if I go ahead and take one and place it, yeah, it, it basically works just like a bucket would, and I don't have any blocks to... And I out of range. Oh dear. Yeah, we got a leakage problem. There we go. So yeah, it's like it's like a one-off bucket, like, like it said. Now from some of these chickens, we can actually go ahead and pick some of them out, such as the lava chicken, blaze rod chicken, obsidian chicken. Actually, I don't need it. I don't know if I need the lava chicken. However, some of the things that we just want being generated for recipes, such as clay, slime, glowstone, maybe. Uh, redstone definitely is something that I want generated, quartz as well. Uh, so if we take something like this, then we can just go ahead. I don't know if I can right click this thing. Okay, it doesn't, that looks scary. But if I just place these guys in here, I'm definitely gonna be needing more of these roosters. But for now, that's fine. All of these are now going to be generating items and using uh, some of the same methods that we did with setting up our drawer storage, we are going to connect this to our, well, drawers actually. However, I'm still waiting for these guys to finish. Oh, there we go. String chicken at long last. I will actually need to make a little bit of a path from this wall over here and over to our storage to connect the inventories because as soon as they're connected, it's going to be drawn into this and then this right here because 
uh, this priority is set to 100, whatever's in here. Whatever items are over there that belongs to the drawer will be put in a drawer, essentially. I can hear the popping. I am definitely getting close, so I think two, three more blocks over, and I should be right in the center of this thing. Yep, there we go. Rooster, rooster, and... Hello? <laughs> rooster? <laughs> Not? Ah, there we go. I'm one up. That's fine. Perfect, actually. And look at that. We are generating obsidian, blaze rods, logs, clay, slime, glowstone, quartz, redstone, all the cool stuff that we will need for all of our stuff. And these are taking their time. Don't need you guys anymore because we got the spring chicken all set up. Now, what I believe we're going to be needing is this exporter right here because it's going to be taking the items that are in the roosters and put it to the storage however i'm just really hoping it's not going to take the chickens however we are just gonna see how that is gonna go i'm gonna go ahead and make some cabling and well we'll be needing however many exporters that we have roosters but for now let's go ahead and test this out i will be needing to make some more um what are these called? Construction course and improved processes. Need to do that real quick. However, we is that a cow on the minimap? We got horse. Wait, wait, huh? We got horses? No, go away. We got horses spawning? Oh wow, we have horses spawning. And what on earth is that? What are you? Dr dr drink me, drink me. What are you doing in here? Drink me. Okay, I guess. I shall not ask questions. So if I go ahead and place an exporter on this one, which has obsidian like so uh i guess i need to tell it what to actually export so i'm saying export the uh gravel here and well let's put another exporter there because they do connect and in this case it's slime bowl so if i go ahead and say export the slime and then i lead the cable oh okay well rip <laughs> back to our storage area here and then somehow over to this like so i think we should see the obsidian uh not uh, oh dear me the obsidian number go up so it is currently at 78 and the obsidian should be moving from that place to this place we'll see in a moment and unfortunately that is not the case so maybe the exporter is not what we need somehow i could do something else but i was hoping i would be able to do it with refined storage cables i mean i could just always use item cables and then export it all into an ender chest and then it'll end up there so that might be something that we need to do so i'm just going to test something real quick if we place this here and place this pipe right there we have slime bowl and the slime chicken and i set this to output the slime is being taken out, however, not the slime chicken. So I think that might be a simpler way of setting this up. Just adding a bunch of item pipes and then having them lead essentially into a or an ender chest that can travel back to our system over here. All right, here I have an ender chest. We just go ahead and connect all of these fellas together. And then with my pipe, I need to go in and say export to every single one of them. Why do I have raw chicken? You know what? I'm not going to worry about that. Um, <laughs> so, of course, we're going to get a bunch of ores in here as well. And it might be too much for the system to actually handle. However, I'm pretty sure it will get caught up pretty quickly. Now, while I have been doing all of that, we have managed to finally get ourselves an emerald chicken. We actually have two of them. We still have not, unfortunately, gotten our cobalt chicken. How rare is that chicken 14.3 percent chance well i suppose that's fair however i really do want my netherite chicken but while this is doing its thing i'm gonna go ahead and set up some more roosts because i want more chickens generating items of this especially from this pile right here like glass uh, diamonds uh magma cream y you get the point Ooh, sand chicken as well is definitely something I want. Those should be all the roosters that I require, at least for the time being. This thing has still not produced a... What? What? A cobalt chicken? Wait, I don't have a cobalt chicken, right? Right? 
Yes, okay, good. I'm waiting for the cobalt chicken. It has still not happened this entire time while I've been uh, just grinding for wheat, but I have sorted out the storage solution. So I have this other chest right here, color coded blue, and this is where all the items from the chickens are going to be dropped. Then I have an importer right here added, and all I need to do is connect it, and things are going to be sucked out, and currently it is taking the obsidian, so we should see the obsidian counter going up as we speak which means this works perfectly. Now at the other end of the tunnel here, we just have a bunch of item pipes, which I now need to go ahead and set to export, uh, which might be difficult for the ones that I can't quite reach, but I'm sure it'll be yeah, fine. Ah, perfect. So all of these go into this other chest right here, which you just saw before. Pretty easy setup. Oh boy, our storage is getting full. But literally the final thing that I'm now waiting for is for the cobalt chicken. Which, uh, actually I just realized I need one more rooster because I also want a, a cobalt chicken uh, to generate, well, cobalt. Well, seriously, this thing has been going for so long that it ran out of seeds. Are you kidding me? At long last, the cobalt chicken it's mine. And I found out why it took me so long. If we go ahead and take a look in this chest, you can see that it took me quite a long time to get. And that is because the soul sand chicken is not the ingredient for the cobalt chicken. You see, you need the nether wart chicken. I don't know how I didn't see this. I saw this and I thought, you know what, that's the soul sand chicken. And you know what, in my defense, they kind of look similar in a way, but it's the nether wart chicken. And you, if you are interested, you get that by combining a glowstone chicken with cocoa brown chicken, which you get from putting together a green cactus green chicken and a red chicken. So yeah, that's why I was never getting the cobalt chicken. I was using the wrong chicken. But now that I have the cobalt chicken, I can go ahead and combine it with the gold chicken. <laughs> and then hopefully then be able to get another right chicken. And just while that is cooking, I do just quickly want to note something. If you are setting something like this up yourself, I highly recommend, I know this is a mess right now, but I highly recommend adding things that you get from the chickens to drawers because otherwise your digital storage is just gonna get full. I went ahead and took everything that I'm getting from the chickens and added it to drawers and now all my drives are basically not as full anymore and we're not in the we're not in the critical state anymore basically another thing i noted uh, noticed as well is if i go ahead and grab this drawer and place it say over here in the corner and then i grab my linking tool i am unable to link it uh, link it however if i place it back here I'm able to link it just fine. So there is apparently a limit to this thing and we can actually go ahead and count it. So it seems like there is a 12 block distance limit from the storage controller. So I guess that is pretty important and good to know. So I'll probably want to move this over there when I further expand the drawers in that direction. So yeah, there you go, a little bit of a tip. And there we go, ladies and gentlemen, we even got a second cobalt chicken, but we got a netherite chicken, which can give us a netherite nuggets. And that concludes my chicken breeding process, at least for today. I'm gonna place another netherite chicken in the middle, place the cobalt, that's not right, <laughs> place the cobalt chicken over there. Just gotta make sure that it's all being connected with the pipes correctly, which it currently isn't. Nope, that's wrong. Well, actually it's it's actually not, but it would be nice if it's connected. There we go, perfect. And there we go, we got some cobalt nuggets and I'm pretty sure we will also have some netherite nuggets, which honestly I could add to a compacting drawer instead of normal drawers, as that will automatically take the nuggets and turn them into ingots or make them available as, uh, as ingots in the crafting grid here. So I might just go ahead and do that. Because if I take a compacting drawer, I might have shown this before, I add the ingots, you get the nuggets as well as the blocks, and those get, ava get become available in the refined storage uh, menu, which is awesome. So if I just plop these down right here, I go ahead and I lock them, first of all. Then we can take some cobalt into this one, and there you go, those are now available and the nuggets as well, or the netherite as well. And we can now go ahead and link this to our controller. And there we go, everything has been 
linked up. And you know what? This is really satisfying and it was definitely worth it. As soon as you have enough eggs to get started with this process, if you're playing Stone Blocks 3, I highly recommend uh, getting your chicken set up. Really useful. Our base has gotten a little bit bigger. And that is biscuit. Biscuit? <laughs> And that is because in today's episode, we are going to be dealing with, or, uh, why did man manipul manipulation dropped into my head? Or processing, that, that's the one. However, there is one slight problem that we need to solve before we go ahead and do ore processing, and that is me not getting any gold nor copper. Now, I could go ahead and set up some gold and copper chickens. However, they only generate nuggets, so I would need quite a lot of them in order to for it to be, well, viable. So to get gold and copper, I am going to be needing to set up a little bit of a system here, which I'm kind of prepared for, as well as a bunch of other stuff as well. First off, I have made two 16K storage disks, which means when I plop these in, we now have space for 48,000 items. We're not gonna run out of space anytime soon, even if we're not using drawers. Second, I kinda went, well, crazy with some furnace upgrades because I thought, you know what? We're gonna go ahead and upgrade every single furnace to, well, obsidian apparently. <laughs> that, there we go, I, I really hope it's actually faster. Let, let's take a stack here. Let me grab some coal. Let me grab a little, grab a, li gra grab a little bit more coal. Oh wow, yeah, it's faster, all right. That's so much faster. Okay, that that's actually awesome. And I'm gonna go ahead and set some raw osmium to cook because we are delving into mechanism today when we get to all processing. Wow, this is fast. Anyway, the way that we're going to get more gold and copper is from washing. If it's here somewhere, nope, that's not it. Hold on, nope, that's the use case. I need the recipe. We need to wash sand, and to get sand, I have a plan for this. I have a cobblestone generator. Then we need to run it through three hammers because the first hammer we're going to uh, basically turn the cobblestone into gravel, then into dirt, and then into sand. So that is three hammer processing, pro process, pro pro processes, three hammer tasks. Then eventually dropped onto. A washing place and then this thing the advanced item hopper which i already got from uh, getting a reward from completing something in the quests and this thing can basically be filtered to only pick up certain things so as you can see first of all it has a huge radius but we can lower this way more and then we can also add a filter we can set it to whitelist and let it only set through whatever s washing sand gives us so copper gold etc so that is most definitely the plan but just before we do that Apparently making a mining laser or a mining gadget is not that difficult. I just need some glass, some glass panes, which should be very easy to go ahead and make and then make a blank upgrade module and then go ahead and get the mining gadget. And it is now getting energy from the thing, thing from power. And if I go to mining gadgets, I could give them different upgrades. So I can give them silk touch, I can give them void junk, magnet, upgrade so it Mines out a three by three area using power. Okay, actually that might be really, really cool. I might want that actually. I can upgrade the range, I can upgrade the fortune level, or I can give it fortune level. I can give it a better battery, I think. Battery tier two, yep. Yeah, this is, this is really cool. I want to make this though. I want to make this real quick. That shouldn't be too tough to do. Just need another one of these. Diamond pickaxe. Now, I don't know how I actually add these. Oh, I think I need the modification table. Oh yeah, that's, that, that's, oh wow. Okay, th this looks cool. I'm scared of pressing any buttons though. Modification table coming up. I assume this is gonna need power? No. Okay, so insert, uh, shift click to insert from your slot to drop upgrade onto the screen. Click up to upgrade to remove. Three by three, okay. Um, you know what, I'm, I'm just gonna place this over here. <laughs> Let's um let's try this real quick. So this is my farm. If I just go ahead and I thought I gave it a three by three area. Hmm. Ah, so there is a key bind in the settings. I've set it to zero right now, and we can change the size right here. We can adjust the range. We can edit the visuals and the volumes and everything. But now we can also, of course, increase the speed. Okay, this is actually really, really cool. <laughs> That's awesome. That's really awesome. 
Oh yeah, I also made this wireless crafting grid because I actually had the wrong thing before. This is what I wanted right here, to basically have that screen right there on me at all times. However, the thing that I had before was this thing, the wireless grid. I think anyway, uh, wireless, no. The thing that I had before was this wireless crafting monitor. What you need is the wireless crafting grid. And this basically means I can access my storage, well, as from 16 blocks away, I can access my storage and I can also craft using it. But enough of that, let's set up some copper and gold generation. All right, I think I have everything. I have three hammers, a bunch of chests, an underside funnel, advanced item collector and ender chest. This should be everything that we need in order to set this up over here. So I think the first thing that I'm going to do is set up the item collector, which I think I'll just set up right over here which is just essentially going to be an ender chest on the white channel, so it connects to the same one as the crusher. And then I'm going to place the advanced item collector on top. I'm gonna set it to whitelist so it won't pick anything up but the stuff that's in the filter. And I'm going to decrease the range so that it's only this small area. Next, I'm going to be needing definitely at least one chest here with then the ender side funnel right there. So it's actually going to drop item, that's not the right button, if I drop an item in there and I change that to be, hold on, range, go ahead and change this to output, it's going to drop it right there. Now I just need to set up this cobblestone generator and these iron hammers so that it all ends up to becoming sand in this chest. All right, I think all I need to do is place this cobblestone generator tier two right there. Then we can have an auto hammer placed right over here, just need some space to work with. And then I can have a pipe right there and set it to, grab my wrench, output. And that is now getting cobblestone. And that's the output, I'm pretty sure. So I can place another auto hammer right there. That then has gravel. I'm then placing this here and it has dirt. And that should, if I then go ahead and do this. Yep, that is placing sand. And I'm just gonna make sure that it's actually sand. Yes, perfect. Okay, wow, this was actually a lot faster to set up than I had anticipated. <laughs> oh wow, and we're getting items as well. Okay, next thing that I need to do is to set up. Oh wow, that's so nice. That looks so nice. Next I need to do is go ahead and take the items that we actually get from this process. So I'm just gonna actually make a list here on the right. So I can go ahead and grab it all. So we definitely need gold and copper, obviously. I don't actually have any copper ore. Do I have any copper ore here? I do indeed. Okay, yep, this is good. Now, before I'm actually adding this to the whitelist over here, oh, wow, it's actually going. I need to go ahead and set some of this stuff to have their own drawer, which I think I'm gonna go ahead and do just over here. I'm gonna place data there, fluoride there, appetite down here. I actually have a lot of appetite, as well as then the sulfur. Then I just need one of each. There we go. And this is then everything that we need to add to the whitelist. So we go ahead and add this here. I can add gold, all of this here. And everything is now going to get picked up that the sand can actually produce, but not the sand itself. And everything fits perfectly in this filter, wow. Yep, we now have, just like that, automated gold and copper generation. Would you look at that, it's working. So I could probably increase the speed with this by a lot if I upgrade all the hammers to diamond level and then also upgrade the stone generator to higher as well, such as diamond or something like that. But that is going to be, give me that, give me that, give me that. Oh, two of them, wow, nice. But that is going to be something that we do at another time. I'm probably gonna do that off camera actually. Now we're getting to the ore processing, which is going to be really interesting. I know the plan, but I'm not sure how it's going to work exactly. Well, I do know how it's going to work, but I'm not sure basically how this is going to go, because I don't know if I have everything covered. First of all, we're going to be making a purification chamber. This is so we can go ahead and take in ore. So let's say raw lead, which we have right up there. That will then be turned into lead clumps, and we have, I, I think we have a bunch of flint, so that should be fine, which then gets us lead clumps, so that is an, a duplication right there. And if we go ahead and put that into the crusher, we get dirty lead dust into an enrichment chamber, which leaves us with uh, lead dust, and then into a, we keep scrolling here, an energized smelter, we can then get the ingot itself. 
Now the very first thing that we need to do in order to make these machines is going to get, be getting an, a metallurgic infuser, which actually the recipe is not that complicated, so we can actually go ahead and get that right away. What am I missing? Oh yeah, need two furnaces. <laughs> That's the only complicated part. There we go, we gotta get one of those. I think we will be needing more as well uh, further down the road. However, I'm also gonna get a stack redstone. What I also need to do is go ahead and run some cabling into the basement. So just gonna get some of these. What am I missing? There we go. Get those. All right, this should be fine. And I think if I go ahead and run, uh, hmm. I mean, if I dig down here, you will see that we get into the basement, but I would love to just come down somewhere. So I may want to lead some power somewhere. All right, this hole is in the middle of the room. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add a bunch of power cables leading back to the energy cell right here. Then I can close up this gap and boom, we now have power leading into the room. I should probably make this place look a little bit fancier as well, shouldn't I? Especially this place. Anyway, let's lead down the power and we're gonna place a metallurgic infuser, <laughs> set it up like so, and boom. I'm going to put the redstone in here because we need redstone in here to make a bunch of the components. Mainly, we're going to be needing these basic control circuits right here, which is just a bunch of osmium. So if I just go ahead to the surface, grab, let's say, uh, half a stack maybe? Half a stack of osmium. Place it in here. Don't know if that's enough redstone, I think it is. This now just needs to run because we need some for the smelter, crusher, and purification chamber. We need the advanced ones, which is some infused alloy. So we also need to run some iron into this thing as well. I think 16 is probably going to be enough. All right, I'm pretty sure we now have what we need in order to make most of the things. Uh, oh, wait a minute. I forgot. We need steel. And in order to make steel, we're going to be needing another metallurgic infuser. However, I'm going to move it over here a little bit. There we go. Going to move the power over like so. And now what we need to dump in here is going to be coal. And then first off, I need to drop the coal in here or the iron in here. That is then going to turn into enriched iron, which you can see right here. And then I need to put the enriched, enriched iron in to the metallurgic infuser again together with coal and we will get steel grid which we can then smelt and turn into steel ingots. I just realized that there is another machine that we can make as well actually thanks to uh, the mechanism part in the quest line here the oxygen or making oxygen right here and that is with the electro e electrolytic separator probably butchering that but anyways what we can use this is we can turn like it says here if i click on it the electrolytic separator turns one chemical into two others here what we would be turning we would be turning water into hydrogen and oxygen oxygen is what we will need for the purification chamber right here so instead of using flint, we can now use this machine, which basically just uses water. All right, after some investigation and preparation later, we are now ready to begin. So the first thing first that I want to make is the ele electrolytic separator, which in order to make that, I need to make this the core. I'm not saying that word again. The separator, there we go. This has now been made. And what I also want to go ahead and do is make some mechanism pipes real quick. These are fluid pipes right here. And then these are pressure tubes, which is what I think we will need in order to transfer the oxygen over. Next, of course, we can go ahead and make the purification chamber and the crusher. We need to go ahead and make some steel casing. We can actually go ahead and put the steel in there. So this will go a little bit faster. So energized smelter, boom, right there. We're done with the metallurgic infuser. The crusher can be made now as well. And the purification chamber is going to be a little bit more complicated. We need two advanced circuits right here. Go ahead and make two of those. We also need the enrichment chamber in order to make that. So there we go, enrichment chamber. And now finally, we got the purification chamber. Boom. That wasn't too bad, actually. Now comes the setting up part of this, which is going to be the interesting thing. Um, I think I'm going to try and put this over here. So this is the electro... I said I wasn't going to say this word again. The separator. And what I have set up in between here is I have set up a water chicken as well as a lava chicken because the lava chicken now generates lava eggs, which I can actually... I found out I can use in a really cool way. I haven't hooked this guy up to the main system yet, by the way, but I will do that in a moment. 
because with these water eggs, I made fluid, there we go. I can go ahead and say I have, yes, this right here, the item drain. It is really easy to make. You just need a copper casing and iron bars. The copper casing is made with any type of stripped log together with some copper ingots. So if I place this here, connect this up, and I think I might need a mechanism wrench. Pretty sure there's a wrench somewhere. You don't have to use mechanism pipes, by the way. I just like it because you can actually see the items that are going through, which I think is cool. So yeah, that's why I'm using those. All right, so with the configurator, I should now be set this to pull. And if I now right click a water egg, this should be, uh, yep, there we go. Add that into here, it already had a little bit of power starting, but there we go, we are generating oxygen as well as hydrogen right there. And of course we do need to set this up and get power like so so it actually doesn't yeah there we go um what i can also do is i can change the sides so uh i can say input is dark red which is front that's not quite right uh if i say this is aqua cyan which is then left and i say input is red so i want this to be red i want this to be none this to be none as well because we want to output the oxygen over to can i remove this yes i can <laughs> so i could basically now put the energized crusher the purification chamber i could basically put the purification chamber wait hold on am i doing this right yes i am i could basically put the purification chamber right up next to it and i wouldn't have to worry about the pipes but because i think the pipes are cool I'm gonna, uh, that's hydrogen. I do not want hydrogen in here. <laughs> I do not want hydrogen. All right, I finally figured it out with the help of the people in the FTB Discord server. Really, really helpful people in there. Anyways, apparently in the side config out here, I was adjusting the one for items. If we go over here, there are different tabs for gases, fluids, and energy. So if we go into gases, that's why the uh, hydrogen keeps getting output to the, to the left here, because it's actually set to this. So if I clear this, and I clear this as well, set this to cyan, now oxygen is being put into the purification chamber. Now one final thing that we need to do in order for this to work properly, we need to set this one to dumping excess. That just means when we have this tank full with hydrogen inside the electrolytic separator, it's going to dump the remaining stuff in. Now all I need is to basically just connect the water eggs to this thing, which I think I can do with just some item pipes and a an ender drawer. We'll have to test that. But first, now that we have this setup going, we need to get the ores into it. But before we do that, once the ore has been put in here, we need to then eject the items over to, oh, I need some item pipes. We need to move the items from the purification chamber over to the crusher. And I'm going to do this using a basic logistical pipe. Again, you don't need the pipes. I'm just doing it because I like the look of it. I might even remove them. I'm probably going to revamp this entire thing because I want this place to look nice. So I'll probably revamp how this all looks. I'm going to set auto eject to on, which is going to push the blue items into here into the crusher, which is then going to crush it. It, of course, is going to be needing some power, like so. And then they need to be moved over to, finally, the energized spelter, and I'm out of energy cables. But there we go, and then that, of course, can go into, well, actually, it needs to go into an ender chest, which leads back to this wall right here. Which, for that, I'm going to go ahead and set up a separate network for. I'm just gonna name this the red network. And we can pop an importer onto that. And that's it connected, yeah, that's fine. And then down here, we then need the output, also eject, clear this, output blue on the left, right into there. And of course, we then need this to be red, just like so. Next, I'm gonna place an ender drawer right here. I am going to have to, of course, lock it. I will then add the water eggs. At Unlock it, add water hex, lock it, <laughs> then include it, just like so. Go down here and place another ender drawer, just like so. I think we can use, oh no, we can't. I may need to go ahead and do something else here. Apparently it can't take the input from the top, but it can take it from the bottom. If we then go ahead and set this to pull, all right. 
I punch this, so I store the frequency and I right click here. That is then going to automatically tag, uh, tag, <laughs> take the water eggs in here, which of course we need to then connect to the chicken network, which we do right over here. Yep, there we go. Set this to then pull. That should then work. We should see the water axe go up. Yep, it is indeed going up. So we have an infinite supply of water. Goes into here, releases all the oxygen. Nice, perfect. Now the interesting bit. I need to get all the ores somehow to automatically travel down to, to the chamber below. And I think this is actually going to be pretty simple. I have grabbed every single piece of ore. All I need to do is connect this exporter to the network up there somehow. I need to apparently run quite a few more cables. But if I go ahead and do this, I need an item cable, plop that in there, go ahead and tell it that the back, oh, that's the bottom. The back is the input right there. Place a diamond chest on top with an exporter. And then in this exporter, we tell it, hey, export all these items. Uh, hmm. Apparently I have reached the limit. I just changed sync to iron just for now, just so we can test this. Then I need to run some cabling. Uh, yep, this should be fine. So all I need to do is run this all the way down here and this should start working. As you can see, we're getting the ores and oh, it's not auto, it's auto ejecting, but it's not auto inputting. I uh, may need mechanism types or cables. Place that there, take this, configure it to pull, and it's automatically going to pull the ores in. Now I may need to set some sort of limiter to this thing so that it doesn't take all the ores or increase the speed of this thing or something. But there we go, we have gold lumps. If we go auto eject is on, so these should be, I'll put it to the right, uh, auto eject is on. Maybe I need to, uh, Oh, I need to set input to dark red. Output is blue. So this is now crushing the ore clumps and we should then get gold, dirty gold dust. Oh wait, dirty gold dust, I'm missing a step. I need the enrichment chamber. <laughs> Didn't I get the enrichment chamber? Nope, I did not, okay. Enrichment chamber going down, side config, input, output, Auto eject should be on. Auto eject should also be on. So that's going in here. So this is now getting cleaned. And then we put this uh, right here, like so. Auto eject is on. Final cable in. And boom, gold dust is being smelted. Just like so. <laughs> and of course we need to give it power. Now with all these five machines running, I wonder, like right now it's just gonna get the gold, which is a problem of course, because it's gonna do that until it doesn't have any gold, but as long as we generate gold, it's going to keep giving us gold. But I wonder how our power situation looks right now. Yeah, we are draining a lot of power, which I'm very happy that I made these hardened integral components, which is instantly going to increase our or double our power production. We are now generating more power, I think, than we are using. <laughs> now these generating ADRF attack, they are using coal a little bit more, I think, but we have plenty of coal, so that shouldn't be an issue. And I think we can see the gold ingots go up as we speak, potentially, maybe. Yep, there we go, 118. This is awesome. And what I can do is I can just install a lever right here. I can then set the exporter to only work without a redstone signal. I'm giving it a redstone signal with the lever, which means we're not getting any more items, which basically gives us time to process all the ores. So when I'm up there, I'm like, oh, we're missing ingots of stuff. Then I can just pull the lever and extract a bunch of items to be smelted. This is a really neat setup. Now again, you don't need to have all those pipes in between. It could be a lot more compact if I just added everything together, which I'm probably going to do. I'm going to decorate this place in between episodes, but for now, it gets the job done pretty well. And our power generation is currently 
in control. Very, very nice. So I have gone ahead and decorated our basement part of the base a little bit and you know what, I am actually quite happy with this. I also reset up the machine that we set up in the last episode, as you can see right here. It is, give me that back, I, I need that. It is a lot more compact than it was in the last episode and I have basically removed all the pipes and stacked everything on top of each other. And honestly, I really like how this setup works right here. However, we have an issue and that one issue is a power issue. If I go ahead, we have plenty of force in here for this thing to run. Currently our battery up there is full. If I go ahead and set this, all the machines to work here, we are generating oxygen. In fact, we're not generating in enough oxygen. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, all the machines are now working at a really good pace. By the way, I upgraded these. I gave them all speed upgrades, four speed upgrades uh, for the enrichment chamber, four for the crusher, I'm pretty sure, if I remember correctly. And then f I think I gave two for the purification chamber and two for the separator here. However, that was clearly not enough. I need to produce more oxygen. But anyway, if we go up here while that is running, it is very loud. You can see that we are unfortunately getting drained really quickly here from our power, even though we have all these four Sterling Dynamos upgraded to reinforced, uh, with a reinforced integral components. And so power generation is what we will be solving today. And it starts with going back here and taking out the power. <laughs> <laughs> because we are going to be needing some power in order to actually I don't think we need power to set this up but ju just to be safe also so we can think it's loud another thing I went ahead and did I went ahead and upgraded all the hammers to diamond hammers and the uh, generator back here oh, that's not what I wanted to do and the generator back here if I can get there eventually that would go to gold however that didn't solve my issue which i very quickly found out and that is because this chest as you can see is full and that was because the funnel that i had before only outputs one item at a time whereas the brass funnel outputs a stack of sand at a time so i probably the chest was full so i probably didn't need to upgrade these at all um oh i i forgot to there we go. <laughs> I turned that off. I forgot that powers this fan. I should probably fix that. But anyways, now it is generating items at a much quicker pace. This is from the crusher, which we're getting in, and we should very soon, hopefully, see a bunch of items in here. There we go. Perfect. Now you may be asking, how are you going to be generating power other than using coal? And well, thanks to the comments I have been getting throughout these episodes, I realize that Thermal has this thing, the lapidary, lapidary, the blue dynamo. <laughs> anyway, it is not very expensive to make, like, at all. It is actually very cheap. However, the way it runs is it converts valuable gems into power. So, prismarine crystals can be turned into RF, lapis lazuli, RF, and each item, for example diamonds, produce a lot more power, obviously, because they are more um, expensive, they are more valuable. Amethyst Jard, 40. Emerald, 125. Leather Quartz, 40. But out of these, the diamond is the one that produces the most. And well, we have these things called chickens. Specifically, these kinds of chickens. And well, it just so happens that I have four roosters, or roosts, roosts? I think roosts, four hoppers and four diamond chickens. I think you get where I'm going with this. So if I go ahead and just make four, well, first of all, I need to make the components, of course, in order to do this. So four of those, and then I should be able to make four of these <coughs> blue dynamos. And I can go ahead and access my wireless thing here, and I should be able to grab some energy cables. I don't remember if I have another capacitor in storage somewhere. By the way, we are going to be working a lot with power. At least that is my intention. I'm going to go ahead and make another one of these real quick, uh, once I have all the materials that I need. Oh, you can use the lava eggs for this. That is absolutely awesome. That makes this process so much easier. 
there we go. That is another basic energy cell and some cables, which is just some of these. I want to get into auto crafting as well, so we can get some of these things auto crafted as we go ahead and ask for a recipe. That would be really, really useful. But this should hopefully be it for the setup or for the initial setup, I should say. So if we have these dynamos right here, blue dynamos, um, <laughs> I should be able to face them in here. Now, I don't know max production, so we'll need to upgrade these, of course. But let us place them down for now. And just for a test, if I go ahead and get a... Okay, I guess I have two stacks of diamonds now. And if I go ahead and grab the upgrades from you guys, because currently only our storage is the thing uh, sucking up power. So if we go down here... So if I go ahead and give this guy a diamond, we are now outputting what seems like yeah energy, energy production 40 RF a tick. And this is going to stay burning until it has produced the... How much was it? The... Half a million RF. We're, we're going be, we're, we're to be rich on power after this. But this is then going to run until that has been produced. It's already on 22 RF... Uh, FE, I should say. So what I want to do... I wonder actually, if I place that in here, we produce 120 RF a tick, and these energy cables can only transfer 500 FE, uh, 120, 240, Ooh, it's going to be very close, but we're going to be giving these upgrades right here, so they can produce a lot more power, we're going to really make this efficient, um, so it is currently generating 120, and so if all I do is go ahead and take some hoppers and face them in like so, Take the roosts, place them like so, and then take my diamond chickens, and then, oh yeah, I have to actually go in and say ploop, 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 and ploop, and if I just go ahead and get rid of those, and the torches, eventually a diamond should be generated, and which will then be put into here. Yep, here we go, diamond has been added, it's going to burn, and by the time the diamond has been used up hopefully oh yeah more than one diamond will be available right here they don't even need to work any faster than that so with that we basically technically have well li unlimited power the only question is of course can we produce it faster than we're using it now the cool thing is of course we can go ahead and upgrade these even further to the resonant integral components however i have no idea what that will take I've not looked into that at all. Ender dust, diamond dust, lead dust. You know what? It should actually be doable. But yeah, we are now generating quite a lot of power. And now that I think of it, these chickens are actually generating a lot of diamonds. So I might even change the setup and make it so we have more of these on top of each other. And then some item cables coming from like the wall over here, connecting it all up. I think I might go ahead and do that. All right. This setup should be a whole lot better. I just need to connect it all. Now, one issue that we're immediately going to have here is, of course, these right here will produce 120. These will produce 40 RF a tick. However, this cable right here in the middle only can run or hold 500 FE a tick. So we are very, very well instantly overloading it with power. We are not able to fill this up faster than 500 FE at a time. However, what I did do here is I set the roosters up here with this chest and then the pipes mod and then I added an improved pipe upgrade and then I set the distribution to round robin so that not all the diamonds would go into one dynamo but into all the other ones. So I'm actually going to go ahead and do that right there and it should be distributed equally throughout the dynamos. So that is really, really useful and, well, helpful. So this thing will be filled up in no time. However, the issue still remains. We can't transport the power fast enough because we are generating. Well, let's pretend these are not 120. Let's pretend they are 40 RF. So that is uh, math. Basically, right now we are producing 800 FE or RF, whatever, energy units. And we need to transport that not only to the battery or the energy cell, but also throughout the entire base, especially if I make upgrades for all the dynamodes, which, by the way, is my plan. So in order to get to some higher tier cables, which can actually transport all that power, such as the energy cables, which are hardened from the power mod, we need to go ahead and get into energized steel. Now, I could go ahead and use the ones that come from mechanism, 
which in general can hold a lot more and yeah it, it can hold a lot more but I really do like the power mod and I do want to get into some of the things regarding the power mod such as ender cells and the energizing orbs so we will be setting that up right now actually we also need a bigger energy cell because it's already full so what I want to do is get into making energized steel and to make energized steel we need to get into energizing gold and iron on top of one of these energized orbs and then powering it with this energizing rod which will give us energized steel and it shouldn't be too difficult to make first we're going to be needing the orb which is right here and that is going to be sitting right here in the middle we are going to also i believe have a i don't think it outputs automatically we will need a hopper i believe as well as a chest oh we're gonna need two chests then two no okay just no, okay one one chest will do so if we place this here the hopper and now we need to go ahead and make these energizing rods and i'm just gonna make the starter ones because we will then be able to move up actually energize so these are the starter these are the basic which is just actually well we'll need the starter ones in order to get the rest okay makes sense now I don't actually know how many of these I'm gonna need and it's already being filled up with the with the thing that we have upstairs. If I place this here, uh, I can't place that there because I'm going to be needing some power cable. I, I wish I could extend the range of this thing. If I get some power cables here, I'll need to run some power from this thing over to, let's just experiment right here. I'm gonna place this here and this here. If I then go ahead and grab some iron, Let's take half a stack, half a stack of gold, and I take one of each. I right click it on there. That is doing its thing. However, it is slow. And there we go. We got energized steel. Now we are able to make this a lot faster. If I go ahead and make, oh, need more of those. <laughs> if I go ahead and make one, two, oh, I can't stack them. One, two, three, um, uh, maybe be two more yep so if i go ahead and run this around like so yep this should do and i can then take all these i think i don't think i have to put them in this configuration i think i what on earth did i just do <laughs> i missed one oops actually it turns this out i actually made one too many hmm. can't complain though yeah I, th I think i don't have to put them like that far apart i think i'm able to just put them next to each other actually now that i think more about it so if i go ahead and now put in a single gold and a single iron yep all of these are now working and they're working very very fast which is cool now i wonder if i can place a i wonder if i can place a hopper here nope then it's, then it's just gonna add everything okay that doesn't work I need to click it in manually or I did see I did see chosen architect use something from the not the ender IO mod, mod from the aha from the laser node I think I need an item card as well I've never uh, played around with the laser node mod before as in ever <laughs> however I think I know how this works so if I right click this um, this is insert, this is now extract, and then I said this, this is insert, and I th think I can do extract, uh, transfer amount one, I think. So what you gotta do here is when you right click this, it has up, down, north, south, west, and east. So up would be the extract because we're extracting from the top, which would of course not be the hopper, it would be some sort of chest. So if we go ahead and grab that real quick, place that on top. So we are extracting from the chest and then we're facing north. So on north, we insert into the energizing orb. So if I go ahead and place one iron, okay, it, it, no, that, that, no, almost there though. Okay, I think I have figured it out. So we need to make these counting filters. So if I go ahead and right click the item card for extract, maybe so county filter and then i just put one i ingot it here and i th think one gold and i add that no aha it's working now it has the item the filter has to be in the item card that inserts into so on this side that inserts into the energizing orb 
just like so oops now I'm, now I'm messing it up there we go so now i was able to just put half a stack of gold and iron in and we are now getting well basically automatically made energized steel awesome i should say thank you to chosen architect because that's where i looked to figure out how on earth to get that to work so now with this energized steel i can go ahead and add it to our storage of course need to make some basic um, oh, some large basic capacitors. Okay, so I'm gonna need a bunch of these first of all. Maybe make a stack. 60, that's fine. I'm gonna go ahead and make eight of these. Then some hardened ones like so, 14. And then I can go ahead and make these uh, energy cable hardened. Now I don't need that many of these. It just has to be the center ones right here that gets replaced. Oh. That's not what I wanted to do. Definitely not what I wanted to do. I don't know what's happening here with the cables. Why they don't all jo don't just stack up? It's kind of annoying. <laughs> I don't know what does that. But oh, the small ones can't connect. Ooh, that could be a pickle. Well, that was a tiny bit of a waste. However, I have gone ahead and made these advanced universal cables from mechanism which I just have enough, which you look at that. And these can connect to the smaller starter ones right here. And I don't know if I can go ahead and rotate config. I don't know if I can go ahead and disconnect these somehow. This is a power wrench, but it doesn't seem to do anything. But anyways, no matter, we're now getting all the power transferred to the energy cell, all of it. Now here's the thing, I could plug up a cable like right there, go down and then up and over into all the machinery and up into the storage. Or I could make, or I'm hoping I can make anyways, these ender cells, which I don't know how this is going to work. I assume ender cells are for wireless power. We could go in here, ender cells, ender cells store FE in a wireless network shared by any amount of ender cells. The amount can be increased with end with energy cells. So if I go ahead and make an energy cell, or I should say an ender cell, I should be able to move power back and forth from this specific area and location. So in order to make this hardened ender cell right here, I need an ender core, which I need to energize basic capacitor tiny, a dielectric casing and an eye of ender. All right, I have it all. So we add that to the chest. Well, actually I'm gonna need to add it manually that is gonna do its thing and we get an ender core which i think we can just go ahead and boom so if i place this down ooh, now the question is how much is this thing able to store when it comes to power i'm gonna take this out and place this and receive facing up I may need these what are, what are they called ender gates right here Ender gate starter, hardened, yep, I might need something like this. So there we go. Oh, and they apparently don't like to stack either. So in order to place this down, I hold down shift and I right click it. And I'm not able to place this down. Hmm. Okay, I figured it out. Um, don't know how I undo what I just did. But I'll show you again, because I actually have this thing right here, and the cell spirited. Now, I didn't actually go ahead and craft this. I actually got it as a um, gift or a quest completion uh, reward, and I've had it for quite a while now. And in order to get it, you need to create some spirited crystals, which is, well, actually emeralds. And, well, on that front, it's actually pretty cheap to make. Um, but I think it is the second... Let's see. Spit... Nope. Power. I think it's the yeah, it is almost the highest tier. It is right under nitro which nitro Yeah, that's quite expensive So that is actually the highest tier of ender cell that we are able to afford now these things right here Basically, it can transfer 400,000 fe per tick However, what I need to do is to get an energy cell So in my case if I want to store power into it, which of course I do want Let's say I want to get a spirited or a hardened. I want to get something high and I think this, oh dear, that's actually, oh, I need to get this. I need to get, in order to get this, I need to get this, which I can actually get. Okay, I can get this because blazing crystals are from energizing blaze rods. So if I go ahead and take some blaze rods right here, 
put it in there. Just one blaze rod at a time. That should now work, except that this doesn't have power, so we'll just quickly have to... Yep, that works. <laughs> Feed power into the system again, so we're now getting these blazing crystals. Alright, I am slowly getting there to get the spirited energy cell. I am now... I have now made the blazing one. And I actually need to do that again in order to get the Niotech one as well, which is... Huh, yeah, this is... This is a big pro. This is this this takes a while, but I want the worst part is I want two of these spirited energy cells. Well, yeah, because well, I want two. You'll see why. I need to upgrade these as well. I think if I upgrade them, they will be working a lot quicker and better as well. All right, I went ahead and whoops, I went ahead and upgraded these all these energizing rods to hardened, and watch this. Before the diamonds took quite a bit of time. But now, look at this, way, way faster than before. Speaking of which, I should now have everything that I need in order to make the Neotic uh, en energy cell right here, which, oh, now mind, I need, I think I need one more. G give me, give me one more, thank you, put that in there. <laughs> I'm not gonna go to Spirited because I would need to make one more of these. I can always upgrade these as we go. Oh, wait a minute, I just realized, I think. Hardened. Uh, nope, that's the end of cell. Oh boy. And finally, ladies and gentlemen, the second Neotic Energy Cell. To be fair, it looks awesome. However, it is awesome because it can hold 100 million FE. I don't think we'll need to upgrade anytime soon. Now, what I'm. Yeah, let, let that run. That's fine. Um, what we are actually able to now do. And even when that is running, we're actually storing power. That's awesome. What we need to do now is if I go over to channel 2. I don't know if I can do it with channel 1. I'm scared. I think I can do it at channel 1. As you can see, it says 11,000 FE in channel 1 out of 4 million. And that is because I shift right clicked, I believe, a basic energy cell into this thing. So if I hold down shift and click on this energy cell right here. As you can see, we now have 100 million FE storage together with the four extra million. So it could add another energy cell right here to bump it up to 108 million. All right, ladies and gentlemen, everything is ready for us to proceed. So what I am going to do is I'm going to dig down here a little bit. In fact, just like so. And I think I'm going to install another elevator just because I can. Elevator. Place it right there, so I can just go down here and observe. Then I'm going to remove this flooring right here. Put this back. Add two universal, uh, uh, advanced universal cables right here from mechanism. And then I'm going to place this enter cell, the spirited one right here. And as you can see, we're currently on channel one and it is getting filled up. If I went to channel two, there's nothing happening. I could add an enter cell in channel 2, but I'm not going to. I just need the channel 1 for now. And now what is happening is I should probably go ahead and add some light down here. That's what's happening at this point in time. There we go. If I now go up, this thing is basically empty. Until the enter cell is full, then this thing is going to slowly charge up as well. Now the cool thing is, let's take this, uh, this machinery right over here. It's empty. It's dead. There's no power. If I place this and it's on channel one, as you can see, it is now filling up and I'm able to output power from this enter cell. And notice it's not spirited into this machine right here. The only downside with it being hardened and not something above is that it can only output at 10,000 FE a tick. But for anything for us at the moment like this, it is perfectly sufficient. Or, for example, all of those, where are they, all these matter receivers, I'm able to now go ahead and get the lowest tier uh, ender cell, the starter ones, in fact, I might make some, and I can now go ahead to all the matter receivers and place those underneath, and then they will have power here from our base. So with that, I think it is time to figure out what to do here exactly, because this stuff, it, it, it has to move. <laughs> I'm gonna be placing this down here, together with the binding card. It still has one million on it, and it is now connected to this, which is going to, this is going to be our main battery, by the way. And if we go down, as you can see, we now we are now on 11 million. And if I upgrade these, we're going to be producing a lot more power. But I'll probably do that off camera because I've already done 
Way too much crafting today. You know, I might actually leave this here. Because in case I am working on our power down here for some reason, I'm fiddling around doing stuff. In case we all of a sudden lose power, we will always have our coal generated power here powering our storage. However, I am going to make it a whole lot simpler. I'll leave the battery here as well even. I need to remove all of those actually from the downstairs part of the base. But yeah, if I just go ahead and simplify this a whole lot more. This should be plenty in order to keep our... Oh, or maybe not. It's slowly filling up. Yeah, I think I think the setup right here is going to be sufficient for all of our storage monitor needs. Because it won't be powering anything else whatsoever. Now again, I could just dra dra drag a cable out all the way underneath to all the machines, which I could do and I may do. However, for now, because we have the ability, I'm just going to go ahead and get... Hardened and the uh, cell right here, and then I'm just gonna, yeah, I'm, ju I'm just gonna get some cobblestone. I think plug this hole up for now. I'll make this pretty eventually. <laughs> plug that hole up, and all I gotta do really is go ahead and place the ender cell right here. Make sure it's on channel one, and boom, we're now getting power to all the machinery, including. The infusers and everything that we plug onto this network all powered from this place right here. Guys, I think this is mission successful. Also, we started by setting these dynamos up. They're now filled pretty much with diamonds. I don't know if the chest is full. It's not, but it's keeping track pretty well, I'd say. <laughs> They're basically full. Output is at 100%. That's awesome. And again, I'm going to be upgrading these in between episodes. Also, this is cool. I can muffle and unmuffle things, but I do generally like to listen to the machines, even though it is extremely loud. I uh, I completed a quest, and well, I got another spirited ender cell. I was quite surprised. Anyway, I don't need it, so we're just going to put that in there. Now I have done two, well, actually, three other things. I have started expanding the base in this direction. However, I am clearly not done. But that is for a future episode because we can improve this ore setup right here a whole lot better. But I'm not going to get into it right now. However, one quick thing that I do want to say is that in this setup right here for the ore thing, you can see that I have taken out three ores. And I have added those here. So that is the raw silver, the raw bauxite, and the raw nickel. And the reason for that is they do go into, or actually they don't go into the purification chamber. They need to go directly into the enrichment chamber. And it was clogging up the system. I didn't know this. Um, and so I basically set up a separate system for this. Also, one thing that I think that might be worth it is replacing the in energized smelter with an obsidian furnace connected to the coal because this runs really quickly. And in order for this to run really quickly, I, you need to put in speed upgrades. I have put in four and I still don't think it's as fast as the obsidian furnace right there. So using an obsidian furnace or maybe a diamond furnace might be more cost effective. Anyway, one thing that I do want to quickly go ahead and test is I have made some ender cells, these starter ones right here, and I want to install them on all the matter receivers and also the matter transmitter. That's not what I wanted to do. There we go. So what I should be able to do is go down here, chop this out, place an ender cell at the bottom here. It has access to the 104 million FE, which should be powering this thing facing up is receiving and extract. So there we go. This thing should now power. And over here, we should be able do I want to move this in one? I, I'm not gonna Oh, okay. Yes, this thing definitely wants to be moved. <laughs> That's for sure. Yeah, I'll place it over here in the corner. Yeah, that that seems that seems better. And the cell meta receiver. And it's going to get power. So no, we will no longer be taking the damage that we used to when moving between areas, which is really cool and also is going to be relevant today because I want to go ahead and raid a huge chunk of this nether dungeon over here, killing as many blazes as I possibly can, getting as many blaze heads as I possibly can, so that I can get as much blaze blood as much as I can, so that I can start making molten refined obsidian, which for that I need blazing blood in order to cook down 
diamonds and also making the refined obsidian in general. I might not get enough. I might underestimate how much I need, but we'll see. For now though, I think I want to go ahead and first of all, I'm not making this mistake. Oh, it's set, even though I broke it. Okay, good. Also, that is a very, very sick sound. All right, so if I go to the nether dungeon, oh, that's directly to the nether dungeon. I might actually go ahead. Yeah, I need another ender cell for the nether dungeon. I forgot I added that for that. Yep, there we go. One more right there. So if we now go ahead and teleport to uh, the end ring first. Dial once, there we go. Oh, hello. <laughs> Dig down here. Okay, they're getting power now. Exploration. Huh, wait. Build a gadget. Oh, that's very nice. I mean, I could have crafted that a long time ago, but still, that's very nice. All right, now I can teleport back home. Boom, that was a bit creepy. It was very dark for a moment. Now I can go to the nether ring. That was okay. Yep, it's out of power. We're gonna fix that. End the cell, just like so. It's getting power. Teleport back home. And our thing is just gonna get charged instantly thanks to our a player transmitter right here, which is even starter. I could upgrade it actually. And now we gotta go to the nether dungeon, that once, and then, yep, hopefully this place is secure. Place this, and go back home. And now all of our matter receivers will constantly have power, as long as we have power in the base, that is. Now, before we proceed and take on the nether dungeon, I want to make a jetpack, the jetpack from mechanism, and I've made everything that we need in order to make it. It's very simple. Uh, a couple of thing ingots, a basic chemical tank, which is really easy to make as well, a basic control circuit and two steel ingots. There we go, we now have a jetpack, but we can actually go ahead and upgrade this if we make a block of steel, have two diamond dust, which you can get these by just crushing it in a crusher, and some bronze as well. And there we go, I'm a jetpack. Now the jetpack here, does it actually use power? As you can see, it's not getting charged, and that is because it uses hydrogen in order to fly. And that is why I placed this advanced chemical tank right here next to the electro... Oh dear, this thing. Uh, electrolytic separator. So that when it's running and pro uh, producing oxygen, it puts the hydrogen out here to the side so we can fuel our jetpack. There we go. Our jetpack is now fully charged up. And if I take this off and place this on, I do quickly need to take a look at some keybinds. All right, so we can press G to change from disabled, so now it's not working, to regular, and we're flying. As you can see right here, we can switch it to hover mode, so we're hovering, or we can set it to, again, disabled. But we gotta be careful, because I am not resistant to fall damage just yet. Next thing I am going to do is bring this furnace down, because it looks absolutely hideous. Actually, I'm gonna remove it completely, because I will never need it again. Place this brewing stand and I oh I didn't get rid of the water okay good I'm gonna go ahead and make some fire resistance potions now just so that those places are not gonna be as much of a pain and I don't think I'm gonna need my diamond chest plate actually because this thing is armored it has plus eight armor and plus two armor toughness which if I go ahead and take a look at my diamond chest plate that is just the same as having a diamond chest plate which is pretty cool all right, there we go. Six potions of eight minute fire resistance. That should be hopefully plenty. I'm not going to be needing the wireless crafting grid while I'm in the nether. And all right, this should be all I need. If I haven't forgotten anything, just going to do that. Uh, actually, yes, I do need some more feral flare lanterns because those are just going to be really, really useful. What am I missing? Gold? Am I out of gold? Uh, yeah, this is why I want to set up some better or um, stuff than this. Anyway, seven we'll just have to do. I also have seven chance cubes. When we get two, I should be able to make a three by three chance cube and that could potentially be really, really good or really, really bad. I'm a little bit scared of doing that, but let's not worry about that right now. We're going to the nether dungeon. Oh boy. Now I have my big backpack with me, so I should be able to carry more things, however, I am not going to worry about things that I actually don't need. So I'm only going to take what I absolutely do want. Also, I am waiting to place... Wow, this has been lit up a lot by these lanterns. That is amazing. Do I need anything from this? Don't think so. What are these? Slimy seeds. Slimy nilium. I guess that might be... I don't think it's useful, but I guess I'll take it. 
Now there are multiple layers for this as well, which is really interesting. There's a chest over here as well. Nope, don't need any of that. And we have a blaze spawner over here, which is really good. Ooh, elite mech cube. You might be an issue. This is when we pick up some fire resistance. Because otherwise this is going to be an absolute nightmare. And we enable the jetpack so we can do things like this. Aha! <laughs> we are wasting the jetpack a little bit here, but I really want to get rid of this thing. I don't know if there's a... There must be a spawner here, right? Maybe? Oh boy, two hearts. Two hearts. Something dropped over there like instant damage potion effect thing. That was... That was not pleasant. Yikes. We do, however, have plenty of blazes, which is perfect. So I'm not definitely not gonna be getting rid of the spawner. However, I will be moving from this place. But I might just AFK, not AFK, but I might farm this for a little bit before going all the way home. There we go. Blaze it. Really good. Okay, this is less good. This is less good. <laughs> what have we got in here? Lingering potion of slowness. Hmm. Interesting. Please go away. Nice. Oh, that's more of you. These guys are a problem. They are elite baby hoglins, and they are very, very quick. Do I really need to go in there? Because these guys are an absolute pain in the butt. Yep, those guys right there are an issue. Hmm. That's convenient. Okay, I'm gonna run down the... Oh no, there's one of these here as well. Please go away. Alright, gonna run in here. Place this. Uh, yep, this is fine. Oh, you're not fine. You're definitely not fine. Oh, dear me. Okay. Piglin Brutes? Yep, that's a lot of them. That's a lot of them. That's... That could have... This could have gone very bad. <laughs> Okay, they're all coming from over there. I'm not actually able to kill them. Okay. That was some... Um, that was close. I'm just gonna head over here. And block this off. Because this is not worth it. <laughs> oh, dear me. Okay. Wait, something's dragging me. Okay, that was a lot. That was a lot. Definitely need to get rid of the spawner. Whatever's in this chest over there is definitely... Definitely has to be worth it. Because if not... Let, let's let's see here. I'm very curious now. Um, can I reach this? Yep. Not worth it at all. <laughs> and... Blocked off. Now, please... Don't know what is dragging me, but it's really annoying. I think it's one of those super ones. Oh, dear me. Another instance where the jetpack is an absolute lifesaver. Because of all these magma cubes. Oh, nope. That's that's a problem. That's a problem. That's a problem. Now I'm being shot at. This is not, not good. Not good. Just gotta get rid of this. The beginning of the dungeon was a lot easier than the insides of the dungeon, which I guess makes sense. Oh my, we have more piglin brutes. Okay. Hmm. What does this bomb do? Okay, not a whole lot. Not a whole lot. Anything in here? Uh, actually, with the skeleton skulls, we could potentially defeat a wither boss. The issues with these nether spawners as well is that they oh like they work even in darkness which is <laughs> a bit problematic that chest is trapped that chest was trapped okay then good to know didn't think chests would be trapped in this but here we are this one too apparently huh all right here's what i'm gonna do I'm gonna check out, like, the downstairs of... Not here. <laughs> There's the staircase right here. I'm gonna check this out at the bottom. If I still don't see any 
loot that is really worth it. I think I'm just gonna wait till I actually have something that I need to get from one of these dungeons. Like I had the magma, the magma blocks when we first went here that I needed. Crying obsidian? Uh, eh. I, I guess I'll take it so I have some of it. Oh, and this is the bottom. And not much useful stuff here. You know what? I think I would benefit more going to the end dungeon. I think I'll try that. Maybe. For now, though, let's open these. Oh. Oh. Ow. 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 That wasn't super exciting. All right, here we are again, and I'm thinking my chances might be a little bit better now that I have a jetpack. That way I might be able to fight the levitation. May I can, actually, with hollow mode. I can't break that great deal of things very fast, but I can at least move around and I can potentially, if there are spawners, I can go ahead and get rid of the spawners. Dragon scale. Yep, this is more interesting loot. That's for sure. Oh, wow. Yes. <laughs> now, this is loot. I don't know what I'm actually going to be needing most of this stuff for. But I guess I'll take it. Because why not? This actually pretty goes actually pretty well. This isn't too bad. A little bit painful. But I'll also be able to just float around and kill them very easily. That's an Elytra. Let's get it. Sky's the limit. I want to get you. Please let me kill you. That would be nice. For me anyway. Not for you. There we go. Alright. Might need some cover here. <laughs> As long as I keep eating, it's actually not too bad. Okay, you gotta go, buddy. Because you are a pain, and you too. Especially you. Please leave me alone. I think you're the final one. There we go. Okay, I actually have some peace and quiet now. Wow. So look at that. And lectern with an empty book. Okay. <laughs> I was expecting something cool in it. But nope, just empty. Now I wonder if there's gonna be anything else. I mean, oh my, that's a lot of shulkers. My question is, is there gonna be any more loot like inside these buildings potentially? I mean, I don't see any doors or anything like that. It looks pretty empty. This could potentially be it. I think that might be it, but honestly, not too bad. I'll take it. I'm not sure what I'll be needing any of this stuff for, but now I have it. Now, something has caught my interest. This spawner from our RF tools utility. This block can spawn creatures. It needs a syringe of the appropriate type, RF power, and also needs beams of energized matter. And then we have this, the matter beamer. This block converts matter into a beam of energy. It can then send that beam to a connected spawner. So I'm wondering if I'm able to make it so that this thing spawns blazes, then use create with this thing holding my cleaver would I be able to make a blaze head farm? I think that might be something that is doable. So I want to try this. <laughs> Don't know if it's going to work the way I'm thinking it might work, but I think that if it does, it would be really cool. And I think it would be sad not to try. So this is a meta beamer. It needs power. And then I think it needs some type of item to then convert into a beam. So if we take this, I then need to make a syringe, which I assume I need to poke a blaze with. I don't have a single bone. Wait, I don't have bones? Uh, that's interesting. Why do I not have a bone? I do have necrotic bones, though. <laughs> so we can now go ahead and make the spawner. So I should have everything. However, I would also need an RF tools uh, wrench. Which one of these is it? Tool space, spot wrench. So, uh... I think this one, maybe, potentially. You know what, just make a stack of blue dye at this point. There we go. All right, I think this should be everything. Obviously, we also want an ender cell. <laughs> I'm gonna be using these ender cells a lot, I think. Then maybe if we take something like cobblestone, if it could use cobblestone, this would be amazing. Then I'm gonna need a little bit of a bigger area. So if I maybe take this hammer and just, yep, something like that. 
Yeah, looking good. So if I take the matter beamer and an ender cell, let's say I place it here with an ender cell at the bottom, giving this power. I give this cobblestone. Then let's say I put a spawner right here, which of course also needs power and then a syringe. But if I select a spawner as destination, destination set. I have no idea if this is going to work or not. All right, let's see if this is going to work. Got to place a and an ender cell over there. It has power. Then I'm going to get a syringe of probably a chicken because why not? <laughs> Sorry, chicken chicken place this there. Uh, I'm confused. So it, does it need these items it might need those items. What if I do a blaze? I assume it's going to need a ton of not a ton, but a bunch of meta beamers with the different items that it's requesting, which might this make this a little bit more complicated than I thought originally. But if we go ahead and say poke, and then teleport back home. Water, 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 water. Oh, a bit late. But we take this blaze syringe, place it in here. Okay, so it needs sawdust. Did I see that right? I think the when it's uh, switching here, it's it can be anything that it shows. So blaze rod, nether rack. And any type of it appears like leaves, seeds. I think I saw. I think I saw sawdust in there. So to get sawdust, basically you just need a pulverizer from Tinker's Construct. Uh, sorry, the thermal series, and then put some logs in there, and boom, you'll get sawdust. So now that I have all the items, let's go ahead and see if this is doable. So. Destination set, destination set, power, power, and then put sawdust in you, and then netherrack, blaze rods. Huh. I think I have it figured out. Apparently, they need a redstone signal before these things actually turn on. So if I power that on, it's now getting blaze rods and netherrack. So what I can probably do is I can go ahead and do this and this, and they're all three powered. It is getting everything except for stuff in here. So I guess sawdust is unfortunately not working. So we'll probably need something like seeds or something, which I have plenty of, by the way. So we'll go ahead and give the seeds. And this is now filling up. It is going to take 30 seeds, I think, for one place to spawn, perhaps. So if I were to automate this, I can't really automate Netherrack from what I can tell, but I can get a ton of it from the Nether Dungeon without any issues. However, if I want to automate this, I do have Blaze Rods automated. I need Seeds automated if I can, potentially. I mean, if I had an automatic wheat farm, that would make things a whole lot easier. So that is probably the solution for that. But let's wait, see what happens when this reaches 30. I assume a Blaze is going to spawn. All right, here we go. Yep, a blaze spawns and then it needs to add 30 more seeds to the thing before it goes again, which this works, but it's a bit too slow for my liking. So I don't think it's a setup that I'm actually going to be using, unfortunately. Instead, I'm going to use what I did before, go to the nether dungeon and just farm a spawner until I get a ton of heads. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we now have one bucket worth of blazing blood. Hopefully this is going to be enough to do what we're going to do. I don't think it's going to be, but we're going to find out. So to make molten refined obsidian, we need molten obsidian, molten diamond and molten osmium. Now, this thing is pretty filled up, so I'm going to try and empty it first. However, what I do need to find out is can I smelt obsidian? using normal lava. I can. It's just going to take a while, but I can. That is really good. I'm just going to grab a bunch here. All right, I now have six molten blocks of obsidian in there, eight molten osmium ingots. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out the lava, I'm going to place in the blazing uh, blood here, and I'm going to try and add two diamonds right here. Don't know how much this is going to use. It looks like it uses 25 uh, 25 MB here for per diamond. And there we go, molten refined obsidian. So if I go ahead and add all those uh, six diamonds right there, we should get, here we go, boom, 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 eight ingots of molten refined obsidian, which we can then go ahead and take the ingot cast. Uh, uh, or not. I made a, made a mistake. I need to actually select the molten refined obsidian. And there we go. Molten refined obsidian 
ingot right here. This is awesome. Now, I'm not going to waste this blazing blood. What I'm going to do is I'm going to keep switching it between lava and blazing blood when I need to smell stuff like osmium and obsidian. So I only use the blazing blood when I absolutely have to. Actually, it doesn't seem like it takes 25 per diamond. It looks like, I mean, I just added like 12 diamonds in here it only and it only used 50 mb that's pretty good we can also make a block now <laughs> which honestly is a faster way of getting the ingots other than doing one at a time getting a block and then converting it into ingots is a whole lot faster and boop and ka-ching all right this is our 20 second ingot and is that even a thing 20 second uh, this is we now have 22 ingots <laughs> And what I'm now going to make is a bunch of armor. So a better helmet, some better leggings, and some better boots as well. Now, I could go ahead and make the chest plate, which I will do just to have it. However, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a sword. Well, I need sticks, first of all. And then I'm going to go ahead and make a sword. That's 12 attack damage. Yep. That's pretty powerful. But then what I want to do is make the obsidian pack. So, which means I'll need an axe, a pickaxe and a shovel all in one. It's going to be pretty good. But I do need to make a tiny bit more of the refined obsidian in order to have enough. There's the chest plate. And here we go. The final tools. We got the obsidian axe. We got the obsidian pickaxe. And then, of course, we have the obsidian shovel all together makes the refined obsidian paxel huge upgrade from our current diamond paxel i'm actually gonna go ahead and put iron cleaver in here put this in here we have one refined obsidian ingot left over and we still have quite a bit of blazing blood so that was not too bad one thing i should note is that i added luck on my iron cleaver which actually isn't too expensive this is the lock modifier up here and all you gotta do to get a cornflower or a blue orchid is to go into the crooking section and just crook some grass blocks right here and you can get all these different flowers. So getting that is really not difficult, but here we go. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, we are looking sick. This time for expansion. And yes, we are expanding the base. Well, the base has already been expanded, but we're going to expand it using machines. Not too long ago, we set up this system right here, which will process our ores as soon as I flick this lever on. The ores will start heading into this purification chamber and then through the entire system, giving us ingots. However, it's not a it's not at all optimal. It actually has many issues, one of which is all of them have uh, sp has speed upgrades, which increases the power consumption. Also, with the way we're inputting items from the exporter from our storage, they are lining up like this. So when the lever is turned on, just like so, it fills them up like this. So one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, actually never running through the different ones, always focusing on the first, leading to, well, very long waiting time. And that is something else as well. It, it, it takes a long time for this one setup, even though it has all been upgraded with speed upgrades to process all of our ores. So I'm thinking it would be really cool if we had one processing unit per ore. And that's what we're going to be setting up today. So I have expanded the base here with six new slots for basically basically the same setup that we got up there, but one for each ore. So three over here, three over here, and then uh, four smaller sections for this specific setup right here. Because some of the ores needs to be treated differently, such as nickel bauxite and silver so that is what we are going to be doing today we're going to be constantly processing the ores that we're getting hopefully these should never be in the 2000 uh <laughs> in the 2000 numbers anymore the ingots will however before we get to that i was playing around with the chickens mod in between episodes and well i have added one extra or one new chicken which is the ender chicken which now gener uh, produces uh, ender pearls but i've also been breeding the diamond chicken and the cobalt chicken that one right there and i have proof um yeah 
<laughs> I have proof. Basically, my Cobalt Chicken and my Diamond Chicken are now 10, 10, 10. And the way that you get these is if you take the same type of chicken right here. This is a Gunpowder Chicken that is one on everything. And I put them in here so they breed with each other. Then the output is going to be better than 1, 1, 1 is going to be, for example, 2, 2, maybe 3. So that is how you improve your chickens make them uh, breed them together like so and do the process over and over again and eventually you'll get 10 10 10 chickens and as you will be able to see in just a moment we got this one with this which is a 232 two chicken so we can just go ahead and replace that in there and that will result in an even better chicken and that way we are able to keep going wow i never cleaned up this stuff did i but we are not going to be focusing on chicken breeding today. I have done way too much of that. We're going, like I said, to be focusing on this. And that requires a ton of crafting. But before we do that, I did go ahead and upgrade eight of our dynamos here to the resonant integral components. I am still missing four of them because they are quite quite a bit expensive. I have the hardened glass, I still need to make more uh, aluminum and indarium, which, yeah, it, it's a process. But we are now generating 1760 RF attack. I'm pretty happy with that. But let's get right to it then. I have also made sure that we have stuff like steel and circuits and stuff like that, so we can just jump straight into it. So, we of course already have this set up here. This will basically just be moved down. So I need to make this five times more. So that means I need to make five electrolytic separators. This one right here, which also requires me to get up some more, uh, some more stuff. All right, here we go. Five of these. Oh, ask me um. There we go. Five electrolytic separators has been made and we can actually go ahead and place these uh, right off the bat. Am I just gonna, yeah, I'm actually gonna go ahead and uninstall all of these. I'm gonna steal this. Oh yeah, we also need to of course make the uh, accumulators and everything. And the new setups, they are not going to contain any of these speed upgrades. I'm going to probably uh, keep them just for things like the metallurgic infuser when I need to actually convert stuff into other stuff uh, Because this will be running these machines will be running constantly now. So that is pretty cool. I'm very excited for that actually uh, But there we go. Everything has been removed. So now we should have six electronic separators Which we can put one there one there one there one there one there and one there and yes I will need to go through every single machine and make sure everything's set up in the GUI, like where things are going. It, it, it's gonna be a big task. However, the next thing that we need is a purification chamber, which to make a purification chamber, we need to make enrichment chambers. So that means I need five of these steel casings. There we go. Purification chamber, enrichment chamber, one, two, three, four, five. And then I need 10 of these, I'm pretty sure. One, two, three, and then purification. Oh, oh, wait. Aha! One. And I should be able to just do this actually. Make this easy purificate. What? Ah, there they are. So that's that, 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 and that. Boom! Five of them. I can steal this now. Place these fellas in line. There we go. One, two, three. One, two, three. Next, of course, we need the crusher. And I'm not going to use this one. I use that to like crush down ender pearls and diamonds and other miscellaneous things. So we're just going to go ahead. Get, I think I'm done with the purification chamber. Yes, crusher. Nope, need more steel casing. Five of those again. I might need to make some more steel and whatnot. We'll see. So that should be one, two, three, four, five, six. There we go. Perfect. If this goes really, really smoothly, I'll be very surprised <laughs> if I don't run out of something in this process. Next, I need five more enrichment chambers which means five more steel casing. Oh wow, I've actually not run out yet. I am kind of surprised, but it's a happy surprise. And actually that is, well, we're still missing the four over there, but that is actually the machines with these sections right here done, because I'm not going to make any energized smelters. I'm gonna get rid of this and I'm going to be making or using either obsidian furnaces or gold furnaces or something along those lines, because 
I think maybe just a diamond furnace, furnace even is going to be sufficient connected with our coal because we have so much coal. We're not using enough of this. <laughs> we need to use more, so we might as well hook that up to the system. And I think we're going to start off with some golden furnaces, um, which means we need iron furnaces, which means I need six of these. Then iron. Oh, am I going to have... This might be where I hit a bottle. Neck? Ooh, nope. I do have enough iron. I made sure to have enough iron for this. And then a six of these. Let me know down below in the comments, by the way, if you enjoyed this crafting process or if you want me to skip it. <laughs> Cut it out. Let me know down below in the comments. But here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six. There we go. And if they're not fast enough, we can always upgrade them to diamond just like so. Well, that's the emerald upgrade. We, we that That's the one. And I was mistaken, that is not the final machine. We still need to make some aquas accumulators. And that's my first bottleneck. I ran out of bronze. That is easy enough to get though. Beautiful. Add that to the obsidian furnaces and this should be done in absolutely no time. And just like that, we got six aquas accumulators. Now I need to find out how I'm going to manage the behind of the machines. And I think I'm going to add a door right here leading into like the back rooms of the machines here. So I need a wall right here. And then this is going to be directly behind the machines, if I'm not mistaken. If I then go ahead and do one, two, three, and then, yep, right there. One, two, three. Yep, right there. Perfect. So that is going to access the machine right there. And this is then where I can do all the piping and all the wiring, etc. I'm actually going to go ahead and take my hammer because that will make this process a whole lot easier. Going to do the same for this other side. Um, hmm. I might actually be able to remove these chickens and replace them with a 10 out of 10 out of 10 chicken and just have one chicken running that. But for now, I suppose I'll have to make two with <laughs> being in the chicken chicken room. Okay, maybe I just need a one out of one out of one chicken. Look at this. I... I are they all full? I guess they I guess they're all full because they're not having to generate any power at the moment. That's good to know. All right, it's time to set the water up for these machines right here, which I think is going to be the easiest to do at this point in time. If we take an aquas accumulator right there, water, water, this is going to make water, fluid pipe, set this to export, and this should now be generating oxygen. And we're going to set this to dump excess. So when this is full, it's just going to dump whatever is, uh, whatever else gets generated off the hydrogen. And now I can go ahead and repeat that process for all of the machines until I've done it for every single one. It shouldn't be too bad though. It's actually pretty simple. And the cool thing is they don't need power. It's so cool. And the final one, water, water, fluid pipe, boom. All right, that is the only time I'm going to need fluid pipes, I'm pretty sure. There are going to be a few hurdles though. For example, I do want to collect as much of the hydrogen as I possibly can. However, that means I need to lead it all over to something like a chemical tank, chemical tank, something like an elite chemical tank or something like that, which, uh, yeah, that's doable. But yeah, I'll, I'll, work on, I'll work on that. I still need to work out a few of these things. Now for the furnaces, I should be able to open config. I should be able to uh, set all these to none and then take the back as fuel input. And then on every single one of them, place an ender drawer with coal uh, added, connected to the coal drawer. So go into this, reset everything. There we go. Back is fuel input, place ender drawer that for all the other ones and then of course i will need i believe this linking tool nope i, <laughs> I need to go up here punch this and then i'm pretty sure i right click yes and then just like so set the auto input to on and auto output to on as well and boom we have coal in the furnaces now we of course do need an output for all the different furnaces. So that means I will need to go ahead and make some more ender chests like so. I need five and do I have any red dye? Maybe we need to give it a different dye color. I think coloring it black is going to suit us perfectly. Actually, I'm going to start with this. I'm going to place it here, color this black. 
there we go and then all of these will be on the black channel or the middle one white black white channel i should say now all i need to do is make sure that the furnaces output on the right and also input on the left from the enrichment chamber actually i think i'm gonna have to place these on top of the furnace because not only do I need to also provide power to the electrolytic separator, but I also want to take the hydrogen from it in the future at least. So I think putting the chest on the top is probably going to be the best thing to do, even though it doesn't really look the coolest. You know what? If I ever need the hydrogen, I'll probably set it up elsewhere. For now, it's gonna look coolest and best if the chest is on the right. It's going to be the most compact that way. Plus I can always change it. All right, next thing I need to do is go through all of the different machines, such as the enrichment chamber, make sure that the output is set to right and input is set to bottom and auto eject is on. So this one is set, this one is not set to so clear all the sides. Output is right, input is bottom, auto eject on. And I need to do that for all of these. Clear, output, input, auto eject. Now, as I learned the hard way, of course, when dealing with stuff like purification chamber, where you also take in the oxygen, you need to remember that there are two different tabs. So I'm currently in the items uh, config right here. So input on the right, output on the left, and auto eject. Then I need to go into gases, and then I need to say input on the right as well and of course it can't eject that it is i think it is set to default being uh let's just clear this input output auto eject on yeah it's basically set to input on all sides so i really don't need to change that but that is a good thing to keep in mind now for the electronic separator uh, separator we want to make sure that we're in the gases section and then auto eject is on and then we want to output the cyan to the left which is the oxygen and that is pretty much it because we're not outputting the hydrogen anywhere because we set it to dumping excess so it's going to fill up and then it's just going to dump the rest so now i just need to go ahead and do that for all the different ones clear this auto jack is on so output cyan to the left did i do this for right for this one Yes, I did. All right, cool. And that is all the machines here configured. Now all I need to do, uh, all, quote unquote, is I need to go ahead and give them power. This needs power and these three right here needs power. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and ask for some cables. And then I'm going to, I think, I'm pretty sure, if I take an ender cell starter, say I place it right here, I think. Uh, no, not there. Above. Right there. I think I can set it to redstone. Uh, yes, I can basically toggle the redstone so I can make a bunch of levers. And then I can control whether or not power is being sent, I'm pretty sure, from the ender cell. Just from controlling it with these levers. So each segment will basically be able to be turned off. And I think with redstone on, it will only work with redstone on. We are about to find out if I connect this to here. Well, it does have power. I actually need something where it needs to generate power. Um, hmm. I guess we can only test this when it's ready to go. Now, this is a complicated thing right here. Actually, I think the best thing for me will be to put the fluid pipe underneath here and then tell it to put there because then I can simply run the energy cable right there and it's going to be a whole lot easier. I can very quickly go ahead and test my theory with the redstone. If I go ahead and give it redstone on and then give it something like oak logs, that will then produce sawdust. So that is currently using power, of course. And this is set to redstone on. So if I flick the power on, it is transmitting power. Then when I stop the lever, it's no longer transferring power. So that is exactly how I wanted that to work. All right, perfect. All right, and this is then how it looks. Each segment has their own ender cell. These will be turned to redstone on, so they will not be transferring power unless they have been given a redstone signal. And if you're wondering how to disconnect uh, the cell from the cable right here, just go over with the wrench, which can be made like so. Right click this, click this until it says IO mode off. 
And there you go, they have been disconnected. And I actually think that that is all the machines actually set up. Well, apart from this, but I'll do that afterwards. Because now comes a tricky part, and that is getting the items from the storage through pipes down into the system. Because I'll need to add... Oh, I need to actually add power underneath here. Oh, then maybe running power underneath here would be better. Because I need to add an item input right there, unless I do it down there somehow, but I don't think I can do that. I'll probably figure that out soon, but I basically need to get a bunch of exporters leading into the purification chamber. Oh boy. And the way I'm going to do that is either by making a bunch... Well, I'm going to need some exporters. Like I was saying, either by leading a ton of cabling from this part right underneath the drawers all the way under the machines here. And I think that might be the best... It's probably not the best way, but it's the easiest way. And I think, most importantly, that it would work. The thing is, the cable is coming from up there, but I'm sure I can probably lead the cable down even closer, because the system is here. Oh dear. Uh, maybe not right there. Oh, but here is perfect. Okay, awesome. Now I do believe it is important, before I connect these two together right here, that I down in the exporter below this right here, that I set this to what it is supposed to export. I don't want a bunch of random things entering. So the stuff that we want is iron, gold, copper, etc. This is some real pipe work right here. All right, so I want iron for this first one. So go ahead, set that right there, and then I need to basically continue this on over to this bit right here. Need to cut down here, place another exporter, get some gold. Then we set this one to gold, leave the cable all the way down like so, and then continue it over again. <laughs> and I'm going to fill out these spaces just to keep things a little bit neater. And then finally set this one to copper. Of course, the pipe will need to continue in this direction because we're going to have machines over here as well. Then over here, I think underneath this, we go ahead and turn. And then lead it over to this section. Listen, there might be an easier way to do this. I'm sure there is. But I like running pipes. And then it's going to stop right there. Having the final exporter be right there. And I've decided doing this way. Leaving these blocks right here is a way, way easier way of doing things. Alright, all of these has been set. Now I can go ahead and cover up the floorboards again. And now, finally, the final thing that I need to do. Is set the in. Uh, actually, this is wrong. I need to set the input to the bottom and then take gases input on the right. That is a very, very important detail that I made a mistake in. Gases, yep, in, uh, input from any side, that's fine. So all I need to do is change this to input on the bottom. Last but not least, to make this work, we're gonna go ahead and connect to this and that should make this machinery start running. All six sections are running. Um, we are, however, pr please tell me we're generating enough power to keep up with this. We are, however, the issue that we might have is this can only transfer 1000 if you tick. We're using uh, not enough energy to upgrade, right? <laughs> We may need some ender cells that are more than just starter. Okay, yeah, this is the issue. 1000 FE a tick, and these machines needed 32k FE a tick. I think I need to upgrade these ender cells. Okay, so this is a little bit of a bottleneck here. Even the hardened energy cell, which can output 10,000 FE a tick, is not enough to power all these machines at once. And these machines has not even been upgraded like in any way. Oh, wait a minute, but these machines are... Hold on, okay, all of this is working. All of these machines... Wait, huh? all of these machines are working perfectly. Hold up, what is going on here? What's the difference between these two? I am such a smurf. Yeah, remember this? This redstone setting? Redstone on? Yeah, it kind of made it so that you need to toggle the lever for things to work. <laughs> Oh, man. Okay, so this got everything that I just said about the 32,000 FE required and whatnot. None of that was correct. 
I just didn't flick the levers for the machines to turn on. Boom. All the machines are turning on. Not enough energy to operate. Enough energy to operate. There we go. Perfect. They are getting all the power that they need. Now the question is, can our power plant keep up? Yes, it can. We have, we are not going below a 100 million FE and 104 million FE right here. That's awesome. That means we are generating plenty of power for these machines, all of these machines to operate at the exact same time. This is processing iron, this is processing gold, this is processing copper, this is not processing anything. Uh, that's a bit odd. Oh, that's because it, oh, wait, what have I done here? I did a little bit of an oopsie. I'm supposed to have this energy cell uh, all the way over here. Take this wrench, then disconnect that, reconnect this. Disconnect this, then reconnect that. There we go. Everything is working perfectly. Now all I need to do is keep an eye out for our coal production. If we're going to go down in the coal, that means obviously we're using coal. But the question is, are we using uh, too much coal? And we might be. This furnace might be way faster than what we need it to be. But I think it's fine. I think it is perfectly fine. We could make mini coal, which doesn't really seem to do anything other than generating energy. It doesn't seem like we can use it in furnaces. So yeah, I think this is fine. Now there's one final thing for me to set up and that is to set up three of this setup right here. But I'm just gonna do that just like this. Watch this, I'm gonna stand right here. Actually, three back, there we go. Watch, three, two, one. And it has been done. Now everything is being worked on. The golden furnaces are working, nickel is being generated, aluminum is being treated, uh, silver dust is being treated, right, 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 oh, there we go. <laughs> you always miss something. But that, I would say, is a job well done. One thing that we did miss, though, is, of course, to set the black or white black white in the chest to the network back here. So, I mean, we have the red and blue right here. We might as well connect the black one to this. There we go. This is all going to be added to our drawers now, so we should be able to see our ingots throughout go up, which we can actually right there. It looks like it's taking the gold first. Guys, this is awesome. There's something really, really satisfying finishing something like this and having it look this clean. Hold up, why is this not working? Why are you not running? Uh, why are you not outputting to the top? Output to top. There we go. <laughs> everything. Yep, everything is working. I'll, I'll catch it if something bad happens. I want to move on towards end game stuff. If we go into the quest here, down here there's an end game tab containing Project E, and then. Densitas Infinita, I'm probably butchering that. Um, and then we have the ultimate armor, which would be the ultimate goal. However, as you can see, we need quite a few things and a lot of these things need automation. And so before we can get to the ultimate armor, we need to get to Densitas Infinita. And we have a very, I am so thankful that they have added this down here because otherwise I would not know where to even begin with all this stuff. But we would need to start here and then move on over. However, I want to start today. I don't know how far we'll get, but I want to get into Project E. I have never played with Project E, so if I mess everything up, well, then, yeah, we're gonna learn this the hard way together. However, before we go ahead and do that, I want to set some a few things up with refined storage, primarily auto-crafting, if possible, and I have not played with this either. I don't know how this works, so we're going to, again, find out either an easy, an easy way or a hard way. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a crafter here, which I assume is what we need in order to go ahead and do this. So in storage, crafter, crafters, craft using patterns, which is why we are going to be making a pattern as well. And I think we'll be needing multiple of these. Electric motor? Okay, that's cool. Um, but I believe we also need a requester. And for this, I will need to make a few things here, as you can see. Uh, first of all, the machine casing. A detector, which I don't exactly know what does. Um, pretty sure I made a machine casing, did I not? I guess I didn't. <laughs> I guess it got used by something else. 
I also need two of these crafting upgrades, which also requires an upgrade. I need a lot of this stuff. You know what? Let's make a stack of that. That's going to make this process a whole lot easier. I think I need two of those. And I need to go ahead and make two of these. And then I can go ahead and make this. So the requester keeps the filtered iron slash fluid in stock with the desired amount. Yes, that is something that I do want. So, um, let's put this probably over here. Crafter, I assume I add patterns to this. Um, again, that's an assumption. We also have a requester, and then we have the patterns, which I don't know how we use. I also made two new grids here, the fluid grid and the pattern grid, and I believe I need pattern creation. Create patterns with a pattern grid and a pa and a pen. Okay, I guess that is how that works. Okay, can I get a little bit more cabling? We should have plenty from our mission yesterday or the last episode. Uh, I think that's connected. It might even actually be connected this way because this lit up, so I assume it is. Anyway, so if I go into the grid and I do pattern here, and let's just say stick. Let's just say I want our system to be able to craft sticks. Not these sticks, but normal sticks. So I need to take the recipe, which is uh, oak planks. Actually, let's do planks. So I want planks. Yep. So I want to save this recipe right here. I press create. I can press shift to see what this pattern is set to. And I believe I can add that to our crafter. So if I then go ahead and do a chest uh, that is not synchronized. That is way too big. <laughs> Meet that. Nope. That uh, search box. JI synchronized. So if I go ahead and say chest, if I then go ahead and say, listen, I want a chest. I think it automatically. Oh, well, I need to go over here and search chest, actually. Uh, and let's remove all planks that we have in our system here. So now we can press craft. And I can say how many I want crafted. Let's say I want to stack, start, and then it is now crafting those items. And with the requester, we'll be able to say, hey, make sure that we always have 64 planks in our system. So that's that done. However, if I go ahead and make a chest, uh, of course, it's going to take it from my inventory. So if I just go ahead and do this, can I get my pastel back? Thank you very much. So chest. Now the planks are completely gone. I go ahead here. Why are these still being shown? Oh, they were added to the system. Okay. Let's try this again for like the seventh time. So here we are. Control click to request auto -graft crafting. So if I just click it, nothing happens. But if I control click this, it says, hey, I need to craft eight oak planks. And that's going to cost two oak blocks. I can click start. And it's going to then craft the planks for me. So now when I type chest, I can go ahead and press that. So that's really cool. Now I wonder if I put this in here and say, make sure that we have 64, 64 oak patterns. I think it is always going to make sure that we have 64 planks in the inventory. Missing ingredients. Well, that's not good. Okay, I did it. I this shouldn't put the filter in here. I need to put what I want crafted in here. So in this case, oak planks. And now, as you can see, we have a stack of oak planks. If I go ahead and say, listen, I want uh, 128, so two stacks, it will now start crafting those items until we have 128 in the system. This is huge. Now it's time to finally empty my inventory of planks. This is huge because I can set up things like, for example, power. I use power a lot which means I use these dielectric rods a lot, which means I use direct uh, dielectric paste a lot. Iron bars, for example, I'll be able to set this up as recipes. Or because I use refined storage a lot, I can use uh, quartz. Yes, for example, quartz, enri quartz enriched, enriched iron. I use that a lot for refined storage stuff. I can set that ahead and I can go ahead in the request and say, hey, make sure we always have at least a stack so I can keep crafting things uninterrupted. Now, I'm not going to go ahead and just add, make a bunch of stuff right off the right off the bat here. I am going to go ahead, though, whenever I find something that I see that I seem to use a lot. For example, I just remembered. Why did I put that away? I just remembered that I use sticks a lot. 
So I'm going to make a pattern for sticks. So we can go ahead and do that right now in the pattern grid. I'm going to add those here. And I want to add sticks to the recipe. Boom. Create. Now I have a pattern for sticks. Dielectric paste. Uh, which recipe do I want to use? Doesn't really matter. I think this one is nicer because then it can actually add to a stack. There we go. Dielectric paste right there. Iron bars. Pattern for that as well. And enrich quartz iron. Create. Just like so. And now I can add these to the crafter. And I can also then go ahead and take the items that I electric paste that I am uh, that I have patterns for and I can go ahead in the requester and say uh, yeah 128 sounds good so I can go ahead and add the stick electric paste uh, in rich quartz and iron bars and boom add that and now always this thing is going to make sure that we have 128 iron bars quartz enriched iron dielectric paste sticks etc and of course these have limited inventory, so we can make multiple crafters. I can stack them up. We can also make multiple requesters. So let's say I have a requester only for 32 items, items that I only want 32 of in the system. I can set that up because maybe I don't want 128 stacks, right? So I can set that up. And just like that, crafting just got a whole lot easier for us. Oh, it hadn't registered I made the requester. There we go. I I get bread. <laughs> I, 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 I got bread. Yay. Also, it would appear that apparently some machines are faster than others. This is just sitting here doing nothing because we're waiting on the crusher. So maybe adding upgrades to all the crushers could be something that we do in the future. However, not now. I want to get into Project D, which I have never gotten into before. We will not look in that direction because I have definitely... Oh, I have definitely... Um, most definitely cleared up the mess in between episodes. Most certainly. Yeah, I don't know what you're talking about. But yes, Project E. I think the furthest I got with it was in All the Mod 7 to the Sky, and I made this thing. <laughs> the philosopher, this philosopher, Philosopher's Stone, which is going to be the first step, as we can see in our Project E journey. And in order to make this thing, I need a nether star. I can get lots of all this stuff easily. However, I need the nether star, which I guess means I need to get wither skulls and also defeat the wither. However, with our refined iron, uh, refined obsidian and stuff, this should be a breeze. And it just so happens that I have nine wither skeleton skulls. So that is three heads right there and enough soul sand to spawn the boss. I just need to get far, far away from here. All right, I think I'm ready. I went ahead and made this electric bow from Mechanism. I don't know how good it's going to be or how much damage it does. There's also this thing called Fire Mode, which I can trigger using N. I don't know if that's then going to make... Okay, so it basically just makes the arrow fire, on fire, basically. All right, well, here we go. I decided to do it in the end ring, and hopefully that is going to limit the destruction of this. <laughs> I only have uh, 52 arrows and I didn't bring any golden apples, so this could be bad. I can always teleport home if need be, but here we go. Hopefully it's not gonna... Okay, it takes... Okay, it takes quite a while to do any damage on it, actually. Um, and it's slowly making its way over. Maybe hitting it with the sword is... Yeah, it's way faster hitting it with the sword. I'm just gonna stay behind cover. Uh-oh. Half health. 25% health. I haven't been with it once. Okay. Spoke too soon. And it's dead. Okay. That actually wasn't too bad. All things considered. Wither is gone. And we got the Dallas time. I only used 40 arrows. Huh. Yeah. Not too bad. And I didn't even equip my chest plate. I had the armor jetpack on. Which if I had the chest plate on, I would have had a lot more armor. So... All in all, not too bad at all. So now, with the Nether Star, I should be able to go ahead and now craft the Philosopher's the the Philosopher's Stone. There we go. Okay, and we also made the advancement, of course, in Project E. There we go. Oh, we got a Crystal Matrix block. Oh wow. Okay, so now we can make a Watch of Flowing Time. The watch of flowing time will speed up machines nearby you at the cost of EMC. Enable with a change mode keybind, which is unbound by default. Okay, that's interesting. I haven't quite understood the whole thing about generating 
uh, e what, what was it called again? EMC. Um, I don't know how that works exactly, but I guess we'll get to it eventually. That does, that says something. Energy collectors passively generate EMC, sending it out to adjacent blocks like the energy condenser. Energy collectors from the add-on reach much higher tiers, producing exponentially more EMC per second. Okay, that's interesting. So I guess we would be able to make one of those, but I think I'm just going to follow this tree down here and hope that we get in some sort of direction that is uh, beneficial for us. Chemical, alchemical, al Wow, that says alchemical, alchemical, right? We're just gonna say it does. Uh, smell more items than normal coal and are used in certain recipes. So I want to make some of this stuff. So if I do this right here, I should be able to, yep, make a stack. And now I should be able to also convert some of this into this stuff right here, more views fuel, which I don't know what exactly it is. And if I go ahead and hit in here, there's also this, which we can then turn this. Uh, I can't speak today, apparently. But if we go ahead and take this, we then have this fuel right here. I just want to make sure that I have a little bit, at least, on my hands. All right, cool. Uh, so we got that, which is then apparently used in certain recipes. Craft tier three, interesting. Uh, clean stars, as well known as magnum stars, store EMC in your inventory. And there's a bunch of different ones. Okay, uh, I guess they're different tiers. Yeah, that should be easy enough to make. Okay, clean star, quest complete. Now I guess this kind of works like a battery. I don't think it is just passively generating EMC though which would of course make sense, there we go. And then we have Dark Matter, which then unlocks Dark Matter Armor right here, which isn't as good as our refined obsidian. However, it is unbreakable and very resistant to damage, so maybe the numbers doesn't have a huge effect. We also have this stuff right here, which looks really interesting. It's unbreakable and even more resistant to damage, so that's definitely something that we want. So I guess we just... is this something craftable? Dark matter block? Okay, so we need to actually go ahead and make the dark matter here. So to make this, we need a ton of this fuel right here and a diamond block. That should be easy enough. So if I go ahead and just add a ton of coal, make like... this many stacks. I should get a stack of Morbius fuel, which then in turn gives me 16 uh, of this fuel. And then if I have a few blocks of diamonds, a few, <laughs> and then go ahead and get dark matter. Boom, we have made our very first dark matter, which has now unlocked dark matter armor, dark matter tools, and rings of power. And there's a bunch of different ones here. We got black holes, sucks in nearby item drops, uh, dumps in adjacent inventories, fire arrows at nearby mobs, uh, accelerates growth of nearby crops. Okay, that's cool. Nearby mobs combust. <laughs> okay, that's a lot of cool stuff here. I don't know how many of these, like what the, like which ones are really good to have, like almost a must. Um, but I mean, having, where was it? This thing would be kind of cool, in my opinion. So first we make an iron band. Then we need to make uh, one, two, three, four. If I had shift clicked that, that would have been pretty bad. I then need to go ahead and make or get two feathers. I also have some unwanted guests apparently. All right, two feathers acquired. So now we got this thing. Oh, and it's infinite. It just works. I don't even need arrows in my inventory. Okay, that's... Very useful. Very, very useful. Does it use EMC though? It does use EMC, so I need to charge it up. I need to get into like all the EMC, like what it, what the different things, uh, things are and whatnot. Uh, we have unlocked red matter now. Well, we do have tools right here, but looks like they need to be charged with EMC as well. So I really should look into the energy condenser converts items into EMC and then EMC into another item. Okay. I need this thing, I think. And in order to make this, I need a dark matter block, so I can get rid of this, a chemical chest, red matter block, dirt chest, and crystal chest. Okay, so that makes sense. So a dark matter block is a bunch of dark matter, and I don't think I have enough of this, unfortunately. 
thankfully. Coal is not something that we are lacking at this point in time. I do need to be careful though. All right, four dark matter makes a dark matter block. Then I need this chest right here, which is a an obsidian chest, which is a diamond chest. Amethyst bronze ingot. Oh dear. Okay, red matter block. Ooh, ooh. Okay, this is getting very expensive all of a sudden. I think I can manage this though. Um, dirt chest. Yep, that's easy enough. Crystal chest. We need a diamond chest. Okay. All right, that's the crystal chest, and then this is the obsidian chest. I think I can put this in my backpack now. And so now all I need is to make, well, this and then the red matter block. Well, I managed to make one red matter, um, but that is pretty much all the stuff that I can afford because coal is at an all time low. All right, it is a little bit later since the last time you saw the cut, and well, I think I have solved my coal problem. And it's actually pretty simple. It is thanks to this fella right here, or I should say these. I have 15 10 10 10 coal chickens generating almost a stack of coal, like, well, that fast. And now I have 16. <laughs> uh, it, it took a little bit, but it's actually not too bad once you get started with the process. So that is really cool. And I did do a change behind here. And I think this change is something that I'm going to implement for all or most of the roosts because the ender chest. Okay, right now I, I had to add a second ender chest for the system to keep up because this one was just flooded with items. But it seems like adding a secondary seems to have fixed the issue. However, uh, what I did here was I connected the coal rooster, uh, roost directly to the drawer. Um, why it says it's full, I think it's because this thing is full. Yeah, <laughs> we're actually full on coal. So that's nice. We now have exactly infinite amount of coal. For even, even with the machines down there running, I don't think we're going to run out anytime soon. But with that said, I think that I am now ready. I have made the four red matter that we can now turn into a red matter block. This thing is really expensive. And now I can go ahead and almost make the alchemical chest. I also went ahead and made this amethyst bronze ingot, which is really simple. If you go into the casting table and then to the alloying, you just need to melt down some amethyst shards and then some molten cover and that then together makes molten amethyst bronze, which is cool. Now all I need to do is I need to go ahead and make this covalent dust, which I just need to energize. So it's actually a pretty simple recipe. So it is time to go and do just that. So for the first one, we need four pieces of coal and one diamond. Boom. Then four redstone dust and sink. Boom. And then four redstone dust and two compressed cobblestone. Uh, my bad. One compressed cobblestone. There we go. And boom, that is the different dusts that we need. And I can go ahead and put this back in. And I think I have everything that I need in order to make the alchemical chest. And with that, we could go ahead and make the energy condenser because now I need to energize all of these things right here. It will cost 5 million FE, but it is hopefully going to be very much worth it. So we currently are full on power. It is time to see how this is going to go. Yep, it needs to charge up to 5 million. It is draining our power from up here. And yep, I'll be back when it's at 5 million FE. And here we go. Boom, energy condenser has been completed. The power of the sun and condense the world. Now, let's go ahead and take this. There is a Mark II, um, which I'm not gonna do right now. <laughs> <laughs> but that is something for the future. Uh, energy collectors passively generate EMC, sending it out to adjacent blocks like the energy condenser. Um, energy collector mark one, two, and three. Okay, that's expensive. Let's, let's try and place this down for now. I'm gonna place it like over here. I probably need to put a proper place for it. And now I have no idea what to do. So from my understanding, if we take like a stack of diamonds, it has a high uh, EMC count. Of course, there are other things that has high EMC as well. But if I take diamonds and put it in here, uh, in here, maybe? I don't know how this works. 
Okay, so this is interesting. We have the alchemy table, which the alchemy table can convert items to other items using EMC provided by energy collectors. And this is an energy collector, so maybe I do need to go ahead and make this thing, which means I need to make another alchemical chest. I want to try something. Say I want Electrum. Say I want Electrum. Can I get Electrum? Oh, I can. Okay. Um, How long is that going to keep going? <laughs> That's a lot of Electrum from just that stack of diamonds. Okay, then. Now I know how the energy condenser works. Wow. Okay, then. That I'm amazed. So I guess if we take an Electrum ingot and place it up here, it tells us, hey, you need, I think it was 1200 something, 1278 EMC, I guess, to make it. So if I take something that has a ton of EMC like this, I should get like maybe five, six Electrums. Okay. That makes total sense. Okay, that's sick. So what if I take something like dark matter? It's one dark matter is equal 139,000 EMC. But could I theoretically just feed it, quote unquote, just feed it diamonds with like a stack of 16, 10, 10, 10 diamond chickens and then get infinite dark matter? Ooh. So if I take this one dark matter, clear this and I get three stacks of diamonds because the stack of diamond is worth half a million EMC. I put that in there. I am converting diamonds into dark matter. That is such an easier process than using all the coal. <laughs> okay. And I guess the alchemy table kind of works the same way. Maybe I did it the hard way then. Now can be table can convert items to other items using EMC provided by energy collectors. I mean, from my understanding, the energy condenser is just an quote unquote, I guess, upgraded version of the alchemy table. Converse item and then EMC. Okay, I don't think it's the exact same thing, but still, that's cool. And this is then why we want the energy collectors, because if we have energy collectors collecting EMC, then we don't need to use diamonds to generate the EMC to get into to, to make dark matter. Okay, I get it now. Okay, I, I want to make an energy collector. And to make an energy collector, I need two glowstone blocks and one block of diamond. Then I need a furnace. Very easy. I need one block of glass and then I need another alchemical chest, which this is a problem because I don't have any netherite scrap. That's from blood magic. I don't know where to get netherite or how to get netherite scrap <laughs> because I only have pure netherite. Um, so unless I somehow, it doesn't look like I can turn normal or ancient, ancient, not ancient debris, netherite ingots into netherite scrap. It appears I might be able to use a combiner from mechanism using basalt and netherite dust, which I can get from pulverizing a netherite ingot. Oh dear, but the combiner is expensive. <laughs> okay. This is a bigger process than I thought it would be. Um, yeah. All right, slowly getting there. First, I need to make the elite control circuits. And apparently I had the mechanism machines turned off, probably for a very good reason. But now I have the two elite control circuits. Now I just need four more of these and we should be good. And I think I can stop this process so my brain doesn't somehow weirdly explode due to weird mechanism frequencies. Oh my, I have had mechanism sounds off or muffled this entire time. Listen to this. Oh wow, this is loud. <laughs> way too loud. I uh, I think I, th I think I can muffle that again. Anyway, I should have enough for the combiner now. Just like so that was a very expensive machine to make. However, if I go ahead and just add this here, and then I go ahead and combine the well, first of all, I need to go ahead and pulverize the netherite. And now I can take the two netherite dust into the combiner. Maybe Nope. I need basalt and the basalt need to quickly get crushed into normal basalt because I only have smooth basalt. Now I can go ahead and combine those two. And while that is running, I can go ahead and set the energizer up to make these uh, thingies. Did I do this? I think I did this wrong, didn't I? Oh yeah, I did. Oh yeah, I definitely did. But there we go, ancient debris has been acquired. So now I can make, well, I need to, I need to cook it first. So now that we've used all this power, we are still not low on power at all. <laughs> All right, finally, I, oh, all right, finally, I can go ahead and make the alchem, al, alchemical 
chest and I should be able to just go ahead and put it all in here and boom we have an energy collector whoa and I can go ahead and grab that reward and we can go ahead and make a make a higher tier energy collector uh, energy collectors from the add-on reach much higher tiers producing exponentially more EMC per second so that is interesting so tbs friendly generates emc only once a second produce emc for a second i guess and this one also for i'll just leave it as is so if i place this here i can add fuel i guess so it goes faster don't know why it's not transferring over to the adjacent block I am pretty sure I can upgrade it using fuel, but I guess I don't actually know what that does. It doesn't seem to speed it up at all when I put no idea what that does. Okay, I see now. So in here in the energy condenser, I add the item that I wish to generate, Electrum in this case. And once that is done, it then transfers the EMC this thing generates over to this right here. And I assume I would be able to have, obviously I can upgrade it, but I can also make multiple energy collectors and have them collect the EMC for this right here. That, ladies and gentlemen, is pretty cool. Now the next step is in this thing is also an antimatter relay. Antimatter relays transfer EMC from adjacent energy collectors to adjacent energy condensers. This way you can use 18 collectors instead of 6. You can also charge EMC holding items here. So that's cool. So I think I can use basically 6 energy collectors at default, but making an antimatter relay basically allows me to use 18. So that is really cool. I think I'll be making some of these off camera. Let me tell you, I really like Project E. We're doing more with Project E, moving ever so slightly closer to the end game goals because we need to make things like Infinity Catalyst turning into Infinity Ingot and yeah, it, it's a process. But in order to make these things, we need a bunch of different materials, some of which has EMC levels, such as the Crystal Matrix Ingot, or if we go into the Ender, uh, what is this called? Endless Pearl, we have things like Nether Stars, and yeah, those things are basically a pain to farm normally, but with Project E, we get that up and running pretty quickly, or hopefully fairly easily anyway, once it's set up, and that is what we will be doing today. AKA while we have a wall of drawers, which I'm hoping to connect up to the system. You'll see when, when we get started. Now, as we found out in the last episode, using the energy condenser, we can use things that has an EMC value. For example, a stack of diamond has half a million, 24,288 uh, EMC. And say we take something like steel, which also has an EMC value. I can put this in here and we can turn the diamonds into steel ingots or basically the EMC worth of steel ingots. So the steel ingot has an EMC value of 252, one diamond has 8,000 something, and then you can proceed to do the math. We will get a lot of steel ingots from just a stack of diamonds. Now a stack of diamonds, yes, it is half a million EMC. However, a stack of emeralds is 1,048,500, meaning emeralds has a higher EMC value that we can use to turn into other items. And wow, that's a lot more steel than I had anticipated. So say we have an energy condenser hooked up to, oh, I don't know, emerald chickens perhaps? Yes, I have been doing breeding off camera in between episodes here, making sure that we have 10 out of 10 out of 10 emerald chickens available for use today. I think you, I th I think you see where I'm going with this. However, I don't want to use an energy condenser. I want to get an upgraded energy condenser, which is energy condenser Mark II, which is a little bit of a process, but I have already begun working towards it. I, th I think we can stop it now. I can't even fit this much steel in my inventory. <laughs> yep, 1,300, and yep, I, I don't think I have enough. Yep, I, I need an upgrade. Be right back. Just need to quickly make some, take two, just quickly need to make some uh, copper upgrades and uh, boom and boom. That, yeah, there we go. Much better. Now, the reason why I want uh, a my energy condenser Mark II, I will show you that in just a moment. I have already made sure that I have everything that I need in order to make another energy condenser. Because before I use up this one, I do want to duplicate it so we can farm it, quote unquote farm it, or quote unquote, du I guess it is duplicating, but we are spending 
something to get it. I, what do you even call EMCing? I want to EMC that so we could use it for other things as well because it is actually useful in, well, getting the transmutation, for example, or getting, well, that's really it. But yeah, I, I want to I want to farm it up. Now, before I go ahead and do that, I do want to add some, a few diamonds in here, and I want to make sure that I have more of just a few things here, such as these dusts. Just go ahead and add those really quickly, and we will set automation up for these as well later today, as well as this amethyst bronze. There we go. We can take all of this. And do I need for the Mark II? Yeah, I think I think I'm good. I think I'm good to sacrifice this to get a Mark II, maybe. Actually, hold on, I need to make an al alchemical chest first of all, and then I want to duplicate that real quick, just so we have a few of these as well. Just a few. All right, and there we go. This should be, well, once it's done, should become another Mark I energy condenser. While that is running, I went ahead and upgraded our energy collector, which we made in the last episode, to a Mark III. Now this thing, does produce EMC passively. It produces 40 EMC a second, which is a bit slow for what we need. So it's not really useful other than using it to upgrade our energy condenser to Mark II. So that is one of the ingredients done. And I also should have dark matter or enough to make a dark matter block. And I should also have red matter right here. So I have basically everything, I think, except for compacting drawer. There we go, which I have now. Now all I need to make is the antimatter relay. Now this thing is actually useful for not only getting us to Mark II, but also to charge items and we'll get into that in a little bit. Um, what I do need is an alchemical chest. This is why I wanted multiple things so I can use it for production. <laughs> and a furnace, there we go, nice. And it's actually really nice that in the screen you can just hover over this thing and it will show you what you actually need, even though it is the energizing process. But I think that is everything except for a diamond block. All right, and the energy condenser is now done. So I can now go ahead and give all these items to this. Don't know how long that's gonna take, instantaneous. There we go, so we have now the antimatter relay Mark One. I. I just want to instantly get this thing leveled up to max level, which is going to require just four obsidian, and four, and then some dark matter. And that should give us a Mark II antimatter relay if I'm not mistaken. Yep, there we go. And we can go ahead and upgrade this to, what happens if I click the plus? Oh, it gives me, oh, okay. All right, relay mark two, four obsidian, one red dark, red dark matter? No, red matter. And there we go, anti-matter relay mark two. However, I do want to go ahead and get at least one more just so I have one, because like I said, this thing is actually useful for charging things up. Will we make it? You know what? I will make sure that we make it. Oh, we made it just perfectly. Nice. So now I can take this basically and just plop it over here for now. And with that, I believe that we now have everything. Oh, that. I believe that we now have everything we need to get the Mark II off the... Yep, it's gonna cost 15 million FE, but we do have the power for it. So all we need to do now is wait. In the meantime, just to show you, we could add some energy collectors to this thing. And I'm pretty sure, yep, both of these are indeed charging this Mark III relay. Now, there are a few things that we can make that I really actually that I really want to make, especially for the next episode where I'm hoping that we will be dealing with the mother silverfish. Some things that are really going to help us. One of them is the swift wolves rendering gale. And we're also going to need the clean star, this thing right there. And another thing that I really want to make as well is the body stone, knowing it does that, <laughs> and the soul stone. And let, let's try that again. The soul stone. There we go. These things, first of all, this thing is really cool. I'll show you what it does when we actually craft it. The body stone basically restores our hunger and the soul stone heals us. Yes, very nice. 
However, they are of course not just infinite, they need a sort of, some sort of power and the clean star is actually what can give us this power. The clean star when charged is essentially just like having a battery on us, just like we have the charged porter which gets charged using power. We will have the soul stone and the body stone and the swift wolf's rendering gale being charged from EMC by us having a clean star that is then charged. You'll see. Anyways, this is now done and we now have a Mark II energy condenser. And with that, I'm pretty sure if I go ahead, this is why I wanted another energy condenser, I remember now, so that I can produce more of these. I'm gonna need a lot more diamonds than that, I feel like. It, it is gonna take a little bit of time though. In the meantime, we can go ahead and make the body stone, the, the body. <laughs> <laughs> hey buddy, soul stone and body stone and we can actually turn these into the life stone which just combines the two stones right there which is really cool. This is also very easy to get, we just need a nine band. Huh, this is easily enough if I just take one fe- If I just take one feather after this is done. There we go, energy condenser back two, so now we have two of them which is awesome. Take that away, we put the feather in, and boom, we now have a lot of feathers. So like I was saying, we can just go ahead and do that right there, but I won't use them right now. We can equip them in our bubble slot, but we won't do it just yet. What we need to make is some clean stars, which I already actually have one, which is perfect. I'm just gonna grab a few diamonds here, add them to this, put that there, at, oh dear me, okay, I don't need that many. Okay, I didn't realize that I was gonna make that many. Um, okay, I'm gonna quickly add them to my storage real quick. Hopefully not crash the system. Now, these things, they work as a battery. However, we can get better batteries just like this. And I'm just gonna make all the ones that I possibly can. Uh, add them to this. That's my grid. Can I get my grid back, please? Crafting grid. Yep, thank you. Okay, let's try that again. Star. So this is, these are the second ones. They have they can they can hold a higher value of EMC. Now we can go ahead and choose these and we can make two of them. Now we get to the part where I can actually duplicate. So I need just one and two more. Boom. That's two more. I then combine these in here. It's annoying, I can't shift click them in there. That would be a nice addition. There we go. And now I just go ahead and add that there. Add more diamonds to the pile, and I just need to get three more from this. That's one, two more, and there we go. We now have two more, which we can then combine into the sphere, and we can actually put it one further to get three more. However, they are starting to get really, really ex expensive, as you can tell. One is worth six million and two hundred thousand. EMC, so this is gonna have to sit here for quite a while while we do some other things. Other things being unlocking this first of all, because I don't want those right there. We're going to be producing Energy Condensers Mark II, so I'm going to put that right there. And we are going to get started using these emerald chickens. <laughs> on our duplication project, EMCing project. And it's actually going to be quite simple. All I'm gonna need is some pipes. I'm going to be needing some advanced pipes. However, I think I'm just gonna go ahead and do a thing here. Uh, make a stack, then uh, upgrade. Okay, maybe that was a bad idea. Nope, that is. Upgrade that stack, and then upgrade these. <laughs> we have the resources to just being able to click the stuff like that. That's awesome. Next, I need a roost. Yep, so I'm gonna steal you real quick. Place you down, put you in here, take a stack of, yep, that's why I want the Mark IIs, because it has two inventory slots. Also, I don't think I'm ever gonna need um, more roosts. <laughs> I just filled up our inventory. Oh dear. Anyway, put this back. There you go, fella, back home. Now we are basically ready to set this up. Where is my pipes wrench? There we go. All right, so first of all, this is gonna be locked to hold Mark IIs because we're going to be needing one Mark II to each of these drawers. And back here, finally behind the door here, as you can see, I have made out some space. So 
I am going to place an item pipe, then a Mark II chest right there, then another pipe, and a roost, just like so. Now this roost is then going to have one or 16 emerald chickens, depending on really how expensive the item that we're trying to make is. And in fact, I will need to go ahead and grab the one that we have in here, because if we place this in here, emeralds are gonna go on the left side, and the output is going to go on the right. If we just did it with Mark 1s, what would eventually happen is the emeralds, depending on how many emerald chickens we have, of course, would basically fill up the entire chest, not leaving enough space for the output, and that would clog up the system. However, with this, we can ensure that we always have space for outputs and always have space for emeralds. And if we get too many emeralds, it'll just go all the way up here and stop emerald production. Now, what we need to do is set this to output, set this to output, of course. Then we need to hold down shift, right click, to insert one advanced pipe on each of these ends, just so it can transfer faster, because if I remove this, transferring four items every 26, that's way too slow. However, if I go ahead and add the upgrade, transferring 32 items every five ticks, that's much faster. What we need to do now is feed it emeralds. And as you can see, now this process is going to be slower, because of course, this thing is really expensive. It is six, six and a half million EMC. However, if we go to the front here, you'll see that it says zero, and then very soon it should say, yep, there you go, one, job's done. And so that process is basically what we need to do for the remaining drawers. So before we do things like nether stars and whatnot, then I do want to make sure that we have things like dust and whatnot secured that I may need for other projects. Also, I kind of got away from it, but I can put my clean star in here and it's going to charge it. And this is gonna be cool. I'm, I'm just gonna leave it here actually to charge. We'll get back to it when we need to defeat the, the wither to get one nether star that we can then go ahead and duplicate. Actually, wrong. I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna let this finish and I'm gonna get the Omega because that's gonna be a lot better. Just like so, the Omega, and then I'm leaving this in here to charge. So now all I need to do, well, all, quote unquote, I just need to go ahead and set all of this up. I want to be producing energy condensers as well. So I'm going to go ahead and repeat the same process again. Just gonna show you one more time. Pipe, pipe. And what we need to do is actually click. So it doesn't really matter if these are connected. It doesn't really matter if these are connected either. So energy condenser in here. Just set this to output, output. Where is my upgrades? Add, add, and one. Emerald chicken is quite slow. If we add 16 again, it'll go a lot faster. And just like so, we should now be generating, boom, energy condensers, Mark 1s. Well, basically just because we can. And we already have 12 <laughs> of the normal energy condensers. Only downside to this is you need to wait for the chickens to finish breeding because these don't actually have an EMC value. So that is unfortunately sad times. Now I should say as well, for these things so far, I have added 16 emerald chickens, but for some things like this dust right here, which really does not take a whole lot of EMC, like if I just show you, the value of this is quite low. Well, the high is high, but it's quite low. And for the lower things, really 16 chickens is going to be, well, way too much. So what I'm gonna try and go ahead and do, Let's just add one emerald chicken, set this to low, and then you'll see how much one emerald chicken produces. Oh, helps if I do that. And yeah, there you go, as you can see, it's boom. Just one procedure of the emerald chicken, it seems. Actually, we can see it right here when it goes through. Yep, pretty much two and a half stacks of the dust. And because we're not using that much dust at a time, it's good enough. And honestly, even for this, one up here, it is 8,320 per uh, high covalence dust, but just with one emerald chicken, we're producing more than enough because again, we're not using that much dust at a time. This is perfectly fine. It's just for something to stand in the background and generate basically. We can always come back here and improve. <laughs> Increase the amount of emerald chickens. Oh my. This is um, this is fun. Oh, I haven't even I haven't set that. Uh oh. Yeah. Uh, make sure that you actually set what it needs to produce in there. Otherwise, uh, well, you won't get very far with your production now, will you? Uh huh. 
We have run out of power in our controller. That is very, very interesting. We are currently producing 40 RF attack. And if I just go ahead and take this augmentation and put that in this dynamo, we're now producing 160 RF attack and there we go. Okay, so our usage has raised to 62 FE attack. So I basically need to go ahead and make an upgrade integral component actually i already have a hardened one all i really need to do something that i would love to even see as well actually is signalium because it's a bit of a pain to deal with but for now reinforced integral component can go in there and we are now producing 120 rf attack okay good and this can go back to where it rightfully belongs. Oopsie, I made a pretty big mistake here. I forgot to add an advanced pipe upgrade to these roosts now because just having one emerald chicken, it does not affect it. But if you do later want to add more chickens to the system, not having these is going to be quite a bit of a problem. Now I just went ahead and added dark matter as well as red matter to the production line here. And well, for these, having one chicken is really not going to be enough because they're quite expensive. They take a lot of EMC, so really getting these to 16 is going to be my ideal uh, scenario here, which might be doable with one of them. Seven. Yeah, almost. Now, while I'm waiting for more emerald chickens to breed, what we can go ahead and do is go ahead and connect these drawers to this storage controller and then this storage controller to our storage network so we can access all these things from our terminals. So all I need to do is right click this and then select all the drawers right here. Boom, 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 boom. And that looks a bit odd. I'm sure it's fine. Then I need to make some way for me to get to the other side. And well, Eh, eh. Yep, yeah, that I think that's gonna have to be moving a pipe over like so. Alright, there is our drawer. Let me go back a little bit more. And go back right here. Um oh! Perfect! I'm trying to break with a linking tool. Yeah, this would actually yeah, that, this would go right in. If we just go like so and then lead it up like this. Then bring it down. External storage on top of that. Connected, I think. If we go over here, then search dark matter. Yep. Red matter shows up. These things shows up. Perfect. Now, something else that I want to do in this episode, other than fighting the wither and get another star and get that automated as well, I want to get ready for the mother silverfish fight in the next episode. And one of the things that we need to do is make sure that we have all of these things right here, which I believe that I have all of it, almost. So if I search for silverfish shards, I have 16 warm silverfish shards, which is exactly what I need to summon the mother silverfish once. And the cold silverfish shards, I have one, unfortunately. Now these you find, I believe, in stone dungeons, I believe I read. So that's either in this area, which it must be because I have one of them, or in these smaller ones as well. I don't know what those are, so exploring those would be kind of cool. Then we also need some ritual starters, which I have eight of those, and those can be found in the end dungeons, which is this one right here. So today, one of my goals is also to find a bunch more cold silverfish shards, and honestly, I need warm silverfish shards as well, because in the next episode, not only are we going to fight the mother silverfish, hopefully, we're gonna be farming it. Now, as we are about to fight the wither to get a nether star, so we can add it to our collection over there, I want these two things to work. And that is why we've been chatting this, with 188 EMC. So if I have this on me, in the clean star slot, I now have basically EMC power on me, which means I can basically press G, and this thing is now on. And as you saw, my hunger bars just went gold, and that is because this thing will keep me saturated, draining the clean star ever so slowly. But as long as we have a clean star that is charged, we should be good. Now this thing is really cool, this ring. I can just add it to my ring slot. It's a little bit powerful. Very cool though. Basically, I can fly. <laughs> now again, it is using EMC from our clean side. As you just saw there, the number changed. So it is draining it ever so slightly or ever so slowly, but it is really, really awesome and very useful for fighting things. 
no longer will I really need the, the jetpack. So I guess I can go ahead and add that to this. And yes, I, I know I wait a minute. Am I charging it? Yes, I still need to clean this up. One important thing that I forgot to do, set the priority to this to 100 or more, because this thing needs to be prioritized more than the drives, because my dark matter just got put in the system there and not this system. Now, what I'm also going to make is apparently what is called a watch of flowing time, gives 18 bonus ticks to nearby blocks every tick, each tick, nearby mobs move 0.1 times the speed. So I want to try and do that. It just requires me to put a clock in here. Dark matter blocks in this, glowstone, obsidian, and I basically need to let this run through this six times in total. So there we go, three out of 18. So I just need to do that five more times. And then I assume I just charge it using EMC, and then I can have it on a pedestal, and it will affect items or blocks around it. I'm pretty sure anyway. And there we go. This has now been done, and we can actually go ahead and look at the quest here. Uh, we'll speed up as she's nearby you at the cost of EMC. So again, I assume I put... Oh, I don't put this in here. Hmm. How is it going to then work on a pedestal is my question. Well, let's find out. This pedestal, by the way, is made by five dark matter blocks and four red matter. So if I place this right here, place this on top. So this is now active. It does work. Oh, wow. I don't know how it's collecting EMC. Is it collecting that from me or doesn't look like it. But wow, <laughs> if I stand back, yeah, it still works. I don't know where it's getting the EMC from, but uh, if I wait, click this again, punch it to get it out. It doesn't have an EMC value, which is going down. So that's, I like that. Wish I had made that way, way sooner. Oh no, the chicken. <laughs> well, there we go. Now we will have dark matter generating way faster. Now there are some things that are not EMCable, such as with the skeleton skulls. If you want with the skeleton skulls, either go hunt for them or make a farm for them. Otherwise things would be a little bit too easy at times. Also, yes, that is something that I was looking at. We do have this Energy Collectors Plus, as it says here, from the add-on Extended Exchange, reach much higher tiers, introducing exponentially more EMC uh, per second. So if we take the basic Energy Collector, it produces basically one EMC a second. However, we could use it to upgrade it. Um, maybe not. Well, if we go up to, for example, Mark IV, which we need to make some other matters and whatnot to get. It becomes to 160 sec uh, 160 EMS EMC per second. And as you can see, the further up we go, <laughs> the more powerful it becomes. So something that we could go ahead and do is just make this. Um, and then energy, there it is. Just so I get that quest completed. This is a lot of quests actually, I'm happy. But I think with everything set, it's time to clear, kill the wither one more time. And for that, we might as well go. Why does this thing not have power? Oh, this thing needs its own power. Well, that's very easily fixed. Just go ahead and add an ender cell to this. Boom. <laughs> Problem solved. All right. To the end land or the end ring we go. Nice. And we also have this thing. The the uh, I can't I, I can't pronounce that. The ring of arrows. And I'm pretty sure because we have the clean star on us, this thing is just gonna get charged from that. Oh boy, do I f uh, do I continue to fight in this mess or do I make a new tunnel for it? I mean, I don't really live here, so honestly, oh, <laughs> I think it's fine. Maybe. I mean, I can just fly. So there we go. Hello. This should be an easy fight, actually. Cracking my tunnel a little bit. Now we just need to do this. Oh yeah, this is an easy fight. Haven't gotten with it once. Don't tell me I'm gonna die to Enderman. Please don't. <laughs> Please go away. <laughs> there we go. A legendary loot crate. I, I get it. A jerry can. Not... That's not... Anyway. Back home. That was quick. Hmm. It actually doesn't get charged. But I can just add... Uh, it could use to generate EMC. Um, yeah. It, I use it to generate EMC instead of charging it. Um, there we go. It's back. Good. It, it, nothing ever happened. It, it, see? It's right here. Yeah. Def. Def. Yeah. No, nothing happened. Nothing happened. Don't know what anyone is talking about. All right. Let's set up the Nether Stars. 
So, energy condenser back two. I will also need some emerald chickens. <laughs> oh, I have so many of them now. That is so nice. All right, item pipe. I can. Where's my wrench? Where's my wrench? Get rid of this output. Oh well. Well, that'll help it along a little bit. Let's add it in there. This is set to output. We can do this, add this here. We can remove these, set this to output, put this in, stack of emeralds, and boom, just like so, we're generating no stars like it's nothing. <laughs> and we're full on emerald chickens. <laughs> this is awesome. Well, with that out of the way, I need to get some silverfish shards, some cold silverfish shards, and that is. Uh, and for that, I'm gonna need to, I think, upgrade my hammer a little bit. I could probably make some modifications to this. So maybe if I had, I mean, I have like cobalt now and stuff like that, which would probably make for better head and things. Uh, I'm pretty sure I can just replace if I went ahead and made, for example, a cobalt hammerhead. I actually do want to kind of test this now. Uh, no idea how expensive it's going to be though. Eight cobalt ingots would be how expensive the, uh, how expensive it is. Yep, I can just go ahead and replace the head, which increases the durability and mining speed is increased as well. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm gonna do that. Cause that's a pretty neat upgrade. Now, I would actually like to explore some of these smaller dungeon areas here that are scattered on the left and this could be connected to something else because that's what is right here. Well, it would be nice to check that out as well because it does look like they are separate. So, I think we're gonna try and make it to that one. And I can just fly through the tunnel now. <laughs> this is really, really cool. Guys, if there's any rings or stuff like that that you would recommend, please do let me know down below in the comments because, yeah, this is this is pretty sweet. And I'm pretty sure, yep, life zones should still be active, so I shouldn't go hungry, well, ever again, as long as I have EMC. Nice. And yes, this does actually feel a little bit faster than before. All right, I should basically be right on top of it, I think. I think it is, however, at minus 65, because that is what it says right there. So, well, minus 52 right there. So I'm just going to try and dig straight down. I can always fly if need be. But yeah, I'll see you down there. I do see mobs on the map, though, so we need to be a little bit careful. And yes, I can confirm the life crystal is, in fact, it just kicked in right now. Never gonna go hungry again. Whoa, there we go. I just fell. I just fell. Phew. Thank you, flying. Okay. Get the... Don't attack me. I'm hoping that that's going to be... Oh, wow. Looting this is gonna be so much easier now that we're able to just fly and have way better armor and stuff. I'm just gonna go ahead and light this up. Okay, that's not what I expected would happen. I believe I have my... Yep, this thing right here. I just go ahead and kill all of these nasties. Maybe place some torches here and there. I'm not seeing... Okay, I am seeing a chest actually, so hopefully it's not trapped. Please die, all of you. That would be very kind of you. Very nice. Okay, don't need all this junk. I will take the loot chest, even though that's probably not. That's a Suli. Yep, but yep, not really interested. Let's see what we've got in the chest. Ooh, cold silverfish shot. That is exactly what I wanted. Yes, I, yeah, I, I might do that. That's a skeleton spawner. Okay. Well, not huge amount of loot, but here is what I think we'll do. We'll actually go ahead and talk with home real quick. Our sole mission is to get enough of these. Uh, there they are, cold silverfish shards. And I thought now that we have more armor, we have magical abilities like the lifestone, we have the rendering gale, we have this, which basically just shoots endless arrows. Okay, pressing G apparently turns this to rapid fire. Okay, I don't think I need that. Um, but basically, we're a lot more geared up. So hopefully we'll be able to match this easier. And the reason why we're after um, the cold silverfish shards is because in the next episode, we will be taking on the mother silverfish, hopefully anyway. And the reason why we're taking her on is because I want to make a farm. <laughs> but that is for later. Make sure you're subscribed and have notifications on for that because you don't want to miss it. Now, 
very early in the series. I okay, it, it, it says I just got a quest completed. However, I have been here before, <laughs> and uh, well, things didn't go well. I've been here multiple times actually, and things didn't go well either of the times. So hopefully today is going to be a little bit different. However, I can imagine things are going to go south pretty quickly. However, I do want to loot as much as possible because these silver shards could be just like so. Augment arrow, amplify, augment spells when... Okay, I'm not going to uh, read all that. Beef stew, I will take that. I will take that actually. Um, but yes, this should be a lot easier now. Well, due to me being able to fly and haven't taken a whole lot of damage so far. Please just die if you could. And I need to... Okay, the Vexus could be a problem. Vexus could actually be a problem. Um, hmm. Interesting. I need to somehow get rid of the spawner, and I have an idea, I just got an idea now. I have good armor, so I think I can just go and do this, and then break this, and then go off from here. I think a Vex just hit me. Oh, they're getting in the way. The Vexes are getting in the way. I'm not taking how it, too much damage, however. They're getting in the way of my pickaxe, which is a problem. Please break, please break, please break. Don't get in front of me again. There we go. Easy. Okay, that's a lot of them, though. That's a lot of them. <laughs> okay. Now I just need to clear this area. Now the only thing... It actually hit me. The poison actually hit me. The only thing that I'm... A little bit worried about... Oh, yeah. The, the life crystal, the life stone... Also regenerates me, which is nice. Which is what you are able to hear constantly. I hope we have enough GMC for this and that it doesn't all of a sudden run out. Okay, the poison is really annoying. Okay, there we go. I apologize if that is very annoying to listen to. Please go away. Please go away. Okay. Nice. Ooh, total of fun dying. Does that have a GMC level? It does not. That would be a little bit overpowered if it had one. Okay. This has been cleared. There we go. Arrow of fire resistance. That's interesting. Don't think that I really need it. Right, Kelp, I will take it. Because, well, that's a lot of gunpowder, actually. There are some things that we will need to EMC, such as, or further ahead, which is, if we go into this, I'm pretty sure, ultimate stew. We will need a lot of different foods, so if I find things like uh, this, the beef stew, I will definitely take it. Because that could save us quite a bit of time. Uh, I will take some of this, actually. However, it looks like the silverfish shards are primarily going to be in, yep, chests. Cooked bacon, I will take that as well. Okay, we're getting close to the 16. However, we do need a lot more than 16. Uh, interesting. Cool. Nah, nah. I need to remember, I can basically get stuff made instantly. <laughs> so, alchemical bag. What is this? I don't know what you use that alchemical bag for, other than coloring in it, apparently. Um, don't know what it's useful for. Interesting. Very interesting. Another chest. Uh, don't need any of that. Okay, we have another spawner. I'm killing it very slowly, so I'm just gonna land on top of it. And... Boom. Okay, I haven't been in this direction before, in, in, in the dungeon here. All right, well, we do have a chest. Cold silverfish shards, that is what we want. I will take a trident. Uh, don't think I need any of that. More silverfish shards. Beef stew. Green hearts, uh, green heart sapling. Yes, bamboo. I don't think I have any bamboo. Basically, if I, if there's something that I don't have yet, I definitely do want to make sure I grab it. Uh, don't really care about you guys, to be honest. Now that I can fly, this is, um, pretty easy to loot this stuff. However, it doesn't seem like there's a whole lot of useful stuff in the barrels. That is trapped. I did get some of it, though. Ooh, yep, yep, yep. I am liking this tiny potato mask. Don't know what I would need that for. Oh, hello, good sir. Bye, good sir. Okay, yeah, looting this is 
a lot easier than when I entered here the first time around. <laughs> what is this? Drops from Wild and Defenders. Do I need this for anything? I mean, I probably do. Just don't know what yet. Budding Amethyst. Wow, that's interesting. All right, looks like we will have another spawner in this area. Yep, another spawner right there. Please go away. Just need to dig down. Hmm. So this is a this is a predicament. There we go. And done. Easy enough. Yeah, I'm just gonna focus on the chests. And these don't have an EMC level, so I don't think I can farm it a whole lot. Which is unfortunate. However, if I do things right, I think Oh, I will actually need quite a bit of it. Oh wow, a diamond sword. Not better than my current one. I will take an enchantment table though. I will take the salad, because again, that might be useful later on. Well, this is a pit of doom. Need to be really careful here, not to drop right here. Please go away, actually, you can just have fun down there, sir. All right, a spawner with a lot of you guys around. Break this and initiate flying right after, there we go. Okay, come get some. And with that crowd cleared, how am I doing? Oh yeah, I have plenty. I kind of do want to XP though. Kind of do want to experience that. We go more silver shots. We actually have over 16 now, but we do want as many as we possibly can get. I'm just marking where I've been with this cobble stone. That was creepy. Just so I can see where I have looted and where I haven't looted yet. Just gonna make things a little bit easier. Just. Uh. Yeah, looting this is a lot easier at this point in time. A turtle shell? Potato can? <laughs> Guess I'll take a music disc, why not? Quest give a mark. Man, a steel helmet. Don't know if anything, any of these things are actually useful. They might be. Oh wow, hello. Hello fellas, okay. That's a lot of bad guys in one area. Not appreciate it. Can we please? Oh. Yeah, I ran out of torches. That's not ideal. Please go away. Please really go away. Yeah. Now I can place torches down. And please die. Thank you. That accounts from for you guys as well. Okay then, talk about being stubborn. <laughs> what is this room? This looks fancy. Can easily miss a chest in here. I'm thinking if it's this easy for me to loot this room, the nether room might be just as easy if I manage to get uh, fire resistance potions, which I do have. Let's get rid of that. Very nice. Aha, staircase. Will this then lead to more difficult things or better things. I probably should bring that source berry. Uh, I just don't want to miss any chests on the way. Wow, this goes quite a bit down. And this is the bottom. A single chest with nothing of interest to me. <laughs> this girl's in. I wonder if he's gonna stay there forever. Well, that is that wing cleared and I'm pretty sure this wing, yep, I've been here as well. That is where I came from. So I just gotta continue in this direction. Okay, this is kind of cool. I never thought of doing this, but you can use campfires, vanilla campfires, as shelves to store meat. That's cool. Yeah, one of these drop rooms again, where if you drop, you are basically doomed. Just like that skeleton is. Uh, okay. A trap chest. Just break the TNT, and you'll be good to go. In this room, you gotta really be careful not to miss source gem. Uh, I think that might be important. But yeah, this room, you really gotta be careful that you don't miss anything, because <laughs> the chests blend in quite well. Which makes it tricky. Guardian spawn egg. Guess I will take it. All right, that is that looted. We shall continue. Okay, this is apparently a staircase leading up. You can kindly go away. I don't say, I, you know what? I'm not gonna keep the arm, I don't think. 
Because it's really not <laughs> gonna be something that I'm wearing. Now what's gonna be on top? Oh, hey fellas. Is it gonna be another level or are we just gonna have some chests? Interesting. <laughs> well, we have a chest with some deep slate. Mm. Wow, I went all the way up here for absolutely nothing. Ooh, wait a minute, that's a burger. That's a hamburger. That could be useful. And that's a pillager, which I really don't want to kill since it has a banner. I'd like to avoid it anyway, if possible. All right. Okay, you're fast. I don't like you. Okay. You're shielded, apparently. Not from my sword. Very well, at least. Just checking. Yep, still has 156. You can see in the clean star. That's good. Please go away. And the cool thing is, I don't even need to stop because of the the, the life crystal. I, ju I, ju I, I can just keep going, <laughs> basically, not having to worry about much. Ooh, okay, we're nearing a stack. We're nearing a stack. I think I think we have enough by now. And hold on, have I looted everything now? I I can't possibly have been everywhere. I think, however, no, I can't. I can't have been in in these areas, but I think. I've been most places that are connected anyway, it seems. Oh, no, not this way. Not down here, though. And... Okay, that's it. That's it. Okay. Okay, hold on. I feel like things just went up at difficulty level. There's redstone indicating ketchup on the, uh, on the floor. Uh, berries? I want salad. Salad is nice. Okay, yeah, I feel like things just went up a difficulty level, which means loot must be improving as well. Thank you, Creeper. Too kind of you. Um, but yeah, again, with this enchanted gold apple. Ooh. Yeah. Enchanted gold apple is not too bad. Okay, poison is annoying, though, <laughs> with this lifestone. Ooh, two chests. More... Yes, please. Another alchemical bag. I already have one, so I think I'm just gonna... Eh, I'll put one in here. Don't know what it does. But I'll probably need it for something down the road. Whoa! Something just spawned. Okay, you know what? I think I'm done here. I think I'm done with that section. Just gonna shoot in this general area. And, uh, yep, where's... Yep, right here. Block this off. Oh boy, oh boy, they're, they're still following. <laughs> yep. Definitely still following. Okay, I think I'm good. Nope. I'm not. This is interesting. Oh, we're at a stack already. Ooh, cool. Uh, capacito, capacitato. Can store 100,000 RF. That's cool. Definitely gonna take the rabbit's foot. I'm slowly running out of inventory space. I can also see something behind here. I don't know if that is the other path. Yeah, I think it connects. I'll be back. Oh dear. Uh, uh, this is also an interesting staircase I have not yet seen. Please go away. I have not seen this staircase before. And it leads to what looks to be another part of the dungeon? Or is it just this bit here? Okay, it's just this bit here. I thought it would be a, a whole other floor. <laughs> but yep, this seems good. I don't have any more torches on me. That's a bit unfortunate. Hello. Nothing good, though. Not having any torches on me to place is going to make it a little bit more tricky for me to navigate where I have and haven't been. But I'm sure I'll manage. Ooh, and I'll keep taking them if I can find them. Panda spawn egg. Hmm. Interesting. I love how I can just not care if I'm being punched. <laughs> okay, yeah, this might be the part where I get start getting lost because I don't have any torches, I don't have any coal, I don't have any wood. Um, but again, I think I have what I need, but I would like to completely finish looting this. I think I just went around in a circle. Oh, that's a lot of spawn egg. Okay, I'm gonna leave that one. Don't think I'll be needing it. Well, please don't follow me, cave spider. Don't like poison. 
Oh, ladder leading down to a deadly trap. Didn't know I could click like that and it'd be doing that. That's a lot of droppers. Cool. Okay, just missing this part now. Which could be very interesting. Oh dear me. Things are getting more and more dangerous. I don't exactly have torches for it. Oh wow, this room is actually amazing. This room is actually really, really cool. Yeah, and I'm only really out for or after one particular thing. But oh, this place is quite awesome. Too bad I don't really need any of the stuff that I hear. Here I have to be really careful with the creepers because... <laughs> Ooh, rabbit stew. Rabbit stew. I need that, I need that, I need that. That's actually quite important. What can I drop? Run flesh. Who's throwing stuff? You. Oh no. Oh no. Um, um. This is... I don't know why I'm panicking actually. I haven't had a reason to panic so far. I don't think I've gone down below half health. Okay, this room is dangerous. <laughs> um, really cool though. I love these rooms. Oh, and that's the dead end. Nice. Oh. Well, here we have a little bit more than just a room. Do we have another floor or is it just an extended room? Looks like it might just be extended. Yep, just extended. But that's still pretty awesome. Pufferfish. <laughs> I don't remember if I have phantom membrane. I don't really need totem stuff undying, I don't think. So, I think we're good there. Okay, this looks different. Okay, I think that might have been a shield creeper. Ooh, man steel chest plate. Okay, these vexes. Keep attacking me. They're quite a problem. This room. This room looks fa fancy. Please go away. Please leave me alone. Yeah, it's like it keeps summoning new. I guess that's on me for not killing the guy. Yep, that's, that's just lurking around in the walls. Why? Like, look at that. That's not fair. I think this is... Oh, dear. There's a lot of witches. There's actually a lot of witches. Um, and poison. Uh-oh. Okay, wait a minute. Time out. Time out. What has done the most damage so far, actually, is the witches with their harming potions. That's what has been doing the most damage to me. Okay, I think that that is actually the entire dungeon this time looted. Please go away. Yeah, I think I've been everywhere. Please go away. I think I have been ev everywhere, actually. And honestly, a stack and 49 coal silver fish shards. That's not too bad. I'll take this win. And wow, that's a lot more progress than stopping right here because of spawners. <laughs> I think I can afford to head home. So now that we have the coal silver fish shards, we now need to get some warm silver fish shards because 16 is not enough. 16 is what you give to summon the mother silver fish once, and I might want to do it multiple times. So we are going. I think I have everything I need. <laughs> we are going to head on over to the Nether dungeon, and I'm going to tackle this one more, one more time. This is gonna be interesting, but now I can. Oh wait, hold on. Nope, not ready to go. Need fire resistance. Need fire resistance. Oh, I, uh, I had it in my backpack all along. We're good. We're good. I never went back. Don't know what anyone is talking about. All right, drink this, and I'm just going to be focusing on chests, really, as that will be the main priority of this. I need to, of course, get to a point where I haven't already been. Yeah, darkness is probably a good sign. Yeah, there's this... Oh, there's loot from when I was previously here. Oh, that's that's trapped. Okay, got it. Aha! Warm silverfish shard right there. Could you please not? Actually, I will take this because getting normal netherite scrap is a little bit of a pain. And I forgot torches. I actually forgot torches. And there's... Okay, hold on. I'm not prepared. Okay. Going back for the third time today. I mean, I mean, second time. I, I never went back at... at, at yeah. That. <clears throat> All right, another one. Apparently I've been here, but I haven't really 
been looking through the chests, I don't think, a whole lot. Ooh, I don't want this, though. Yeah, see, I've been here, because I've placed this, but haven't really been looting things a whole lot. More! Wow. I, okay, maybe, maybe I placed it, but never went through here, because there's a lot of warm silverfish shards here. Hmm, oh wait, I hit one, ah, two, no, two more. Ah, wait a minute, what's on the other side, though? I want to know what's, I want to, I want to, Oh, come on. Are you kidding me? I want to know what's on the other side, on the, on the other side of this. Oh. Li literally back to where we started. Okay. Got it. Okay. Intersection. Why? Oh, no stone. Why are all of this trapped? Huh. Why is all this trapped? Why does it have to be trapped? It's not very friendly when it's trapped. I thought that was a TNT, but I'm very happy that it's not. Another one is trapped. That's phantoms. Oh, hello. Please go away. Here we go again. Yep. You know what? Just gonna ignore it. Just gonna ignore it. More trapped. Feels like every single chest is trapped at this point. Except for that one. And this one. But no no shards. Okay. I mean, we have 21. We have enough for to summon the mother silverfish twice. However, I want to make sure that I have more than enough if I want to summon it more than twice. Okay. Please go away. Okay, these weeping vines are making it really difficult to fly through this, actually. Oh, wow. Okay, I even went through this chest, as I can see, because it's sorted, and I left the shots there. <laughs> I didn't know what they were used for back then. So I guess I am excused. Oh, wow. Six netherite scrap. I will definitely take it. Please go away. I actually wonder. Piglin Brutes, how... Oh, he's, he's dead. How much damage would you do? Seriously? None? <laughs> okay, this armor and this lifestone is really, really good. Wow. I, I, I'm not afraid anymore. Let's look at that. Ah, but with her effect, also it's not going to have an effect because of the lifestone. That's actually pretty cool. I think I want at least a stack... Oh, yeah, so many chests. <laughs> so many chests are trapped here. Wow. And you are really annoying. You give me like slowness or something every single time. Go away, please. Also, a cool thing you can do with this ring instead of left, right click, sorry, you can left click. And it does this. I assume it uses more EMC, but it's way cooler. <laughs> if this thing is even using EMC, I honestly. Don't know. I, I, I'm assuming it is. I'm assuming it is. Otherwise, it wouldn't make much sense. Okay, this room is new. I went down a ladder. This place is looking kind of cool. Wait, what's that? Can't, can't deny pick step. No matter what, cannot deny pick step. Okay, this place is looking kind of cool. And by kind, I mean really cool. Hmm. However, it does not have a whole lot of loot. Actually, I cannot pass up with the skeleton skulls because those are not EMCable. So passing those up would be not ideal. I just realized that I scrap has an EMC level. I should probably set up a Project E EMCing facility for that. What is this? Huh, a TNT blew up and it made a hole down to the lower level. Wow, okay then. Well, I have 56. Together with the ones I already have, that's a pretty good amount. I'll be able to spawn the Mother Silverfish at least four times. I think that should be plenty, I hope. So I think we actually have everything we need. I don't think I have been everywhere in this dungeon. However, I don't think I need to be here any longer. However, I have not been in this level. So I will go ahead and just see if there's some extra shards, which there is. Yep, that was nine extra shards together with the ones we already have. Yeah, that's pretty good. I'm gonna say that is a mission successful. Oh, you know what I just realized? I think this, the Watch of Flowing Time, is actually affecting the antimatter relay because it seems to be going faster than it normally would. Hmm. Also, we have 1.8 mil 1.5 million EMC just stored in here. That's awesome. I am very excited because we are going to be defeating, well, we're going to try and defeat the mother silverfish and then we're going to try and set up a farm for it so that we can get a bunch of these silverfish hearts which are going to be used for quite a few 
things down the road. So without any further ado, let's get right to it. So we have a lot of things that we need to do today and prepare and make. So if this episode is a little bit long, I do apologize, but I hope you will enjoy it. Now we need to get into our Novo, no, 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 Novel. I'm butchering that. I'm so sorry. Anyway, we need to be making these and the way that we make these is in the imbuement chamber and we with lapis and or amethyst and we're going to be setting that up today because we're going to be needing quite a few um, of these source gems. So in order to make the imbuement chamber, I need to get some archwood planks and in order to get archwood, we need to grow some of these trees and I do actually have these. So if we just go ahead and search archwood. We have plenty of saplings. I have no idea where I actually have these from, uh, but any of these is going to work. Now the question is, am I going to be able to grow this or is it not going to fit in this area due to certain plants in the area? We are going to try. I also don't remember if I need to grow it in a 4x4 or if I need to grow it in a 1x1. One one. You know what? There might not be enough space. You know what, I'm just gonna temporarily cut all of this down to that much length and this one as well. Now there's a bunch of string as well that I placed to stop some of this stuff from growing all the way down. Let's see if that has made, oh, yep, that definitely made a difference, okay. <laughs> Let's just chop all of that down, that was almost a stack. I'll take it. Oh, so you only need one sapling, okay. Good to know. So now that we have a bunch of this flourishing archwood, which we could even see if we wanted to, we're just going to go ahead and do that. And what was the thing that we needed to make? We needed to get the imbuement chamber right here. Now, when we actually let's make, um, give me a second. All right, let's make this room into our Ars Nouveau chamber. Now we got the imbuement chamber and I should be able to potentially set up a hopper with an ender drawer or something to the lapis maybe. Am I even generating lapis? Where am I getting lapis from? I don't even remember how I get my lapis. Uh, let's find out. Ham mod fires, nope. Crushing, uh, hmm, interesting. Ah, yes, we are washing. No, we're not washing gravel. We. Well, I might not be generating lapis in any way. Time to fix that real quick, which should be just as easy as doing this and having a bit of patience. It is a really satisfying process, though. There we go. And as we found out in the last episode, I will never need more. <laughs> Roost. In fact, just to spare my sorting system, I think I'm gonna add a space for them right there. And welcome home. I know I should probably breed it so it's a 10 out of 10 out of 10, but I will do that another time. Just add this to here, set it to output, and boom, Lapis has been added to the system. Now, I don't think I need that many source gems, so I think potentially just doing this is going to be enough. So crafting process, and I guess that needs to reach to 100. And I suppose I should set up an output chest as well. All right, so just putting a hopper here leading into the chest is basically just making so the lapis runs from that hopper into that chest, which is not what we want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this to output at this there take down, add a whitelist and say only extract source gems. And I'm pretty sure that that is going to stop that. So when this crafting process reaches 100, just like so, boom, source gem. Now we could go ahead and add some source links and jars and whatnot. But I think all we really need to do is activate the watcher flowing time. And this will be generating source gems at a pretty decent pace while we do some other things. That being, I think we should go ahead and defeat the Mother Silverfish for the very first time with our gear. Now, first off, I'm going to charge up my Clean Star just like so. Nope, that's being used. I need to charge it. <laughs> there we go. That's going to take a little bit of time because I'm pretty sure it can hold quite a lot of EMC. Now, I can show you in between episodes, I went ahead and made a tunnel and we have reached the area. This is a boss fight uh, area over here. I'm very excited to see what is in these hallways, if there's any good treasure. We'll have to find out. But I think this is going to be enough EMC, so we can go ahead and add this. And I want to show you this mining gadget. I have made a few upgrades for it. I made it, uh, gave it an upgrade range tier 3 and efficiency tier 5. 
And this thing is super, super cool. I just need to make sure I have my dark matter receiver, uh, matter receiver and energy cell. That should be good. So uh, we can teleport to the end ring and we can just fly all the way over. It's a bit of a flight, which is why I want to set a matter receiver in the, the final dungeon. I don't know what it's called, actually. I guess we'll find out when we reach it. But yeah, as you can see, this tunnel um, took a little bit to dig. Well, I'm saying it took a little bit to dig, but honestly, it didn't because of this mining laser. Like, watch this. <laughs> it's so cool and super fast as well. Like, when I made this, this took, what, two minutes? This is the only um, downside when you can't aim straight, which sometimes I can't. Um, yeah, and I have to fiddle with this. Now, excuse me. That's what I thought. Now, according to this, it's at Y level 32, I'm pretty sure. Yep, 30 something. And we're at minus one. So if I just go ahead and continue forward a little bit more, and then go right and then up, I should be right at an intersection. Like right, yeah, right here. And over like so. A little bit further. Well, I think I can just go straight up. And we might reach it. I love this mining laser. Yep, that is. Hello. Okay. What did I just get myself into here? I don't know what I just got myself into. <laughs> but with our life. Um, with our life crystal and everything, this should be a breeze. Okay. Area secured, maybe. I'm gonna set up the matter stuff here. So, end of cell, matter receiver. We're gonna name this final dungeon. Boom. And I'm gonna teleport back real quick because I want to make a few, what are they called again? Feral flare lanterns. Fer oh wow, look at all the, <laughs> look at all the cobblestone. I need to make a trash can actually. Can I make a trash can? Is that a thing here? Tra, it is. Can void items. Just gotta be careful with how you use it. Don't trash anything you will regret losing. All right, final dungeon, die once. Because then I can simply put this down and let's do a little bit of exploring, I suppose. I mean, it's already well lit, so. Honestly, this shouldn't be too bad. I do, however, want to get rid of as many of the spawners as I can. And I also don't know if there's going to be any... Oh, well, that answers that question. Treasure. We do have treasure indeed. Nothing that I don't think that I really need. Hmm, not too bad, though. Yeah, like this place is actually fairly... Pretty well lit up. It's just the spawners I need to get rid of. All right. Well, I won't do too much exploring of the dungeon here today. Day. What we're here for is this right here. So I need to make uh, this looks like it could lead to something important. <laughs> Let me place this down. Don't blow up, please. Be very mean of you. Please go away. Yep, here we are, I think. Here we are. Okay, this is the boss room and this is where we summon the silver fish. Oh, this is a bit loud. I do apologize. <laughs> Let's put that down tad. Let me clear out all these mobs and set up some torches and whatnot, which is hopefully going to make this a little bit easier. Did I like die? Thank you. All right, so I went back home real quick to... Ooh, slime grenade. I mean, that's pretty interesting. Anyway, I went back here because I need to make a mega torch because I need to prevent the natural spawning of hostile mobs because they keep spawning everywhere. So getting this is going to make this job a whole lot easier. So if I just place this like here or something, I think we'll be good. Oh, wow. We have treasure in these chests as well. Which spawn egg? Well, in some of, in some of the barrels. What? Nuclear grenade? I'm not gonna touch that. All right, let us get down to business, shall we? So, we need to get 16 cold silverfish shards, 16 warm silverfish shards, one ritual starter, and I actually forgot something. Need to go back home again. <laughs> Believe it or not, we need 16 eggs. That's what I was missing. All right, yep, this place is looking a lot safer now. 
However, I think I do want to put these down at every entrance, just to be on the safe side, maybe in each corner as well, just to make sure this place is nice and lit. I like things, yeah, nice and bright. All right, this is gonna be interesting. Um, right, we add this, 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 and here we go. Oh yeah, the place is being lit up nice. And we just wait, I got the, the ring of arrows and my sword, I should be good. And here we go, just waiting for it to happen. I'm seeing the particles and the, oh, the ritual, oh, hello. All right, let's get rid of your mi whoa, you're, f you're fast. Go fast, you're very, very, very fast. I'm glad I can fly. What happens if I'm if I'm not flying? Let's try and oh, oh no, not attacking me. I mean this is thanks to the life crystal. This is actually oh I'm actually taking damage a little bit. It would be doing a lot of damage if I hadn't had the life crystal. That's for sure. This is just easy. Oh, okay, one and a half parts of damage. The silverfish are not making this easier. I hate silverfish. Please go away. That's also very nice. No oh, okay. I'm, ta I'm taking some damage. I'm taking some damage. That's good though. I haven't taken some damage in a while. <laughs> nice. And I don't even have dark matter armor on. Wow. All right. Well, you will be slain with the sword and oh, poison. Po hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. I did not sign up for this. I did not sign up for this. Poison silverfish. Please go away. And boom. It is dead. Give me my sword! Hold up! That thing has my sword! That's not fair! There we go. Give me my sword back. Whew. Okay, even though I had really good items, that was still a little bit of a rough fight, but we got it! Silverfish heart, epic shader. I don't know what that is. Rare loot crate. Uh, breaks apart. Hmm. I probably shouldn't right click that. Okay, lovely! Well, silverfish defeated, and what are you doing in here? I think you're a leftover. Boom. Not anymore. And I think I got some silverfish shots from that fight as well. Not too bad. Now we are getting to the farm part. And by the way, we will need to defeat the mother silverfish, I believe, at least three more times in order to do the farm setup that we need to do. However, the next stuff that we need to get into is actually industrial for going because we need to make the stasis chamber. This is what is basically going to be the core of the farm. We summon the mother silverfish, then the stasis chamber will make sure the mother silverfish basically can't move at all. And then that is where we go from there. But in order to make it, I need to make an advanced machine frame, which is made in a dissolution chamber, which I also need plastic and simple machine frame, pink slime apparently. It's a bit of a process, but we should be able to manage it. So first I need to make a latex processing unit, uh, which is requiring a pity machine frame and a furnace and latex bucket apparently. How? Okay, fluid extractor. So I need to make this as well, which is just like so. I should be able to make it out. Yes, perfect. Fluid extractor. That's apparently a quest. So if I get rid of you real quick, I place fluid extractor down. Not really facing the way I want you to. <laughs> and I think, do I need to, I think I need to give it a lock. So if I hit over here, give it maybe some oak logs. It's actually getting the latex extremely slowly so oh boy i might do something here oh wow we have two stacks of storage gems through that all right well getting a cup of tea don't break the game i'm trying not to i might need to make multiple of these um watches watches of flowing time give me that place over there oh yeah that definitely speed things up hopefully it's not affecting our power stuff over there <laughs> uh, but i should be able to place my bucket in here yep Latex bucket, and that can just kindly continue. So with that, we can now make, hold on, we can now make a latex processing unit. Now this thing should be uh, basically generating rubber for us. If I place that there, um, and then we go ahead and say, how do we use plastic? We need to get dry rubber and we get tiny, uh, tiny dry rubber from the latex processing unit. But what do you need is the question, water, Ah, you need water and latex. Well, that makes sense. This is a very, very temporary setup. I will probably make a whole separate section for this stuff, but it is kind of temporary in the sense that I don't know how much of this I will need. Uh, oh wait, hold on, that's wrong. 
<laughs> when we're actually done with this farm setup. All right, so it's getting water, it's getting that, it's not getting any power, and that is, of course, because we need to go ahead and give it a, an energy cable. Don't do that. Place this here. And we're now generating a bunch of tiny dry rubber. Uh, that's actually using our power quite fast. Huh. Anyway, if we take this and then go to a crafting thingy, we can go ahead and turn it into dry rubber, which we can smelt and we can then get plastic. So I don't think I actually need to do this uh, much longer. I think I have enough. According to my calculations, all I'm going to need is eight plastic and this should provide that just fine. So let's find out if I am correct or not. We are going to be needing a mob crusher as well, which that will make sense in a moment. But first we need to make this, the dissolution chamber because this is how we make the advanced machine frame. So just a diamond gear and a pity machine frame and boom, dissolution chamber. Uh, again, I'm pretty sure we have the, the stuff done down there, but I'll just set it up here for now. Right, so with the dissolution chamber, we now need to add this, uh, this ingredients right here, or these ingredients, I can't speak apparently. All right, my calculations were a little bit wrong because apparently we need to make these simple machine frames first in order to make the advanced machine frame, which makes total sense. And for that, we need some more plastic as well. So basically I just need four more, but this should do. And this is not EMCable either, so setting up a farm for this could be beneficial. But for now, get off my floor. All right, latex bucket, right click on this thing. Oh wow, how much do we need to make the, I might not have enough latex in there. Oh well, we'll find out. Simple machine frame. Uh, so iron ingots, that is the only thing that I did not grab. There we go. All right, iron ingots, gold gear, nether bricks. I think I got this. Nether bricks, gold gear, uh, already forgot. <laughs> this thing some plastic and it is processing ETA 11 seconds and it should be done and boom, simple machine frame. So it turns out we had plenty of latex in there. So I can go ahead and do iron again, gold, nether brick, pity machine frame, plastic, wait again. And just like so, we have two simple machine frames, which means we can now go ahead and get this set up. So nether right scrap, plastic, simple machine frame, and I'm missing the diamond gears. Actually, hold up. We're not able to do this just yet. I need to somehow get the fluid out of there. I think the only way for me is to do that is to break it. Yep, because in order to make the advanced machine frame, we need pink slime, which I don't know how to get. Hmm, mob slaughter factory. Interesting. So what, putting mobs for the, in front of this thing is going to generate pink slime, I assume? All right, so I have an idea. I don't know if this thing requires power. It does. So I'm gonna try and do something. I'm gonna, gonna place it there. I'm gonna place it facing that way. And I'm just gonna test something. These bees have been flying around for quite a while. Um, <laughs> don't know if this is going to work or not. Um, that, that did not do what I thought it would. Maybe this will work. Ooh, that did work. That did work, not a whole lot. I'm gonna need a lot of pink slime for this. Hmm. Okay, I just added a skeleton in there and it took 20 uh, micro buckets or whatever. Mm. Um, hmm. Apparently, the bigger. <laughs> the bigger the mob, the better, maybe? Let's see how much this pig. Oh, wow. Okay. Pigs it is. I'm very, very sorry, fellas, but it's for a good cause. It's for a good cause. All right. Pink slime has been transferred over, so now we can try and do this once more. So, simple machine frame, plastic, then netherite scrap, gold, and diamond gear. It has not started the process. Did I get it right? Did get it right. Maybe I just need a lot more pink slime. Aha! There we go. Apparently it needs 500 per operation, or at least for the advanced machine frame. That is very good to know. I also went ahead and set up this machine right here, so this process is a little bit more automated for getting a little bit more dry rubber. This just got to run in the background. Just need to check if the power... Ooh, the power is being drained quite a lot. Well, it'll stop as soon as those locks are broken, so I think we'll be all right. And there we go, two advanced machine frames. I can now tear this down. Don't need it anymore, hopefully anyway. Because now we can go ahead and make, well, we have these, so we can go ahead now and make the stasis chamber at long 
last this is huge we will again also need a mob crusher so we can go ahead and make that right away and boom that should be everything that we need and get rid of this now and this now there are a few things that i do want to do in the map i don't know if this is necessary or not but i want to go ahead and claim my base how does one force load aha so if i hold down shift and right click for example here that means these two chunks will be force loaded even though i am outside of this area which is what i want because this is where our power is being generated and that is important for what we are about to do and yeah, it'll be fine it's fine all right let us head back over to the final dungeon to the boss room now this is going to be the interesting bit i think if i do it uh, probably right here if i go ahead and add an ender cell and the stasis chamber oh boy it's affecting me as well it's affecting me <laughs> uh show working area that doesn't work all right get out of range thank you all right yeah i just wanted to double check and pretty sure this thing is working as it should as you can see i can't move i can jump though which is good um I hope it's close enough. I think it is. Next, I want to set up the mob crusher. Probably not there. Okay, flying is really the key here. <laughs> uh, show working area. That's not big enough. I should be able to... Well, first of all, we want to power that. And it just so happens that I do have a range tier 4 upgrade right here. I even have a range tier 8. Wow. Okay. However, I don't think the... Uh, the range 8 one is necessary. Let's take a look. Basically, this is going to kill those skeletons that we saw. Um, hmm. Right, I'm gonna move this because it's a pain. I'm just gonna put it right here. Perfect. And it's still named? Yep, it is. Sweet. And we're gonna try a range 8 upgrade. Yeah, that, that looks good. So now I'm pretty sure I can go ahead and disable this though. Pretty sure if we have done things, we, if I have done things correctly here, the mother silverfish shouldn't move. If it does, I'll have to move that closer. Uh, time will tell. Spawn, come on. Please work. If everything goes according to plan, the mother silverfish should just stand right there in the air, kind of. Uh, which it does not. Okay, good to know. I made a flaw in this. Aha! <laughs> She's caught in it. So yeah, I just need to move it over a lot. Hmm. Oh, this is easy. Well, at least we know that it is working exactly as it should. I just need to move it closer. <laughs> Come on, die already. At least we get another silverfish out. Again, we do need to kill the another silverfish, I believe. Yeah, two more times after this just to make the farm. There we go. Oh, now I'm caught in my own stasis chamber. All right, I'm gonna try, put it here. Boom, and I can block this now. This should be fine where it is. Let us try and summon her again. One ritual starter, one egg, and boom, boom, boom. I'm confident this is going to work. Let's see what we got here. Timer, that might actually be useful for something. There she is, and oh, oh, yep, she's in stasis. I'm fairly certain. Now you fellas should be dying if I lure you over here. Yep, mob crusher is doing its thing. Not so tough now, are ya? Okay, that is half of the farm complete. <laughs> now, two things. One, I will want to claim these chunks and force load them so they are always loaded, and then uh, I don't want to spawn two at a time. I need to kill her uh, two more times. So this time and then once more to get four silverfish hearts before we can continue with the rest of the farm. Also using this thing does like 40 damage sometimes. <laughs> and it's a lot faster than using the sword. And dead. Perfect. I'll definitely take all the shards I can get. All right, I guess we get to test this a fourth time. Look at that would be too safe, right? Also, I just realized those are lodestones. Wow, okay. And there we go. Yep, in stasis. Uh, you should be dying. Uh, you are. Just extremely, extremely slowly. <laughs> it's fine. And boom. 
Now the next thing that we need to make is a drink me charm. And we make this using three source gems, any seed, a drink me shard, and silverfish hearts. And to get drink me shard, we should be able to just drop a wild horn on a drink me. Now normally you would need to find a drink me, but it just so happens that I have a drink me or managed to get a drink me in here. So I think I just do that. He's dancing and boom, drink me shot acquired. Now is the time where we get into more Ars Novu. Um, hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. This is one of the reasons why I wanted to get as many uh, these stones as possible because we need a cane stone and they're made like this with the source gems. And yep, I would say that is a pretty good amount. So question is how much of this can I make? 56. That should be good. All right, so we need to make an arcane core. We need to make an enchanting apparatus and I think eight. Ah, need more. Yep, need two more. There we go. All right, so I think we have everything now that we need. I just need one seed, I believe. Then I need some source gems, three of them. All right, I think we can do this. So we'll just do it in this room. So we need to place the core in the center, surrounded by these pedestals, and then place the apparatus at the top. And then I think we just go ahead and give it the ingredients like so. The shot there in the middle. Oh, wow. That is actually looking awesome. I want a screenshot of that right this instant. <laughs> All right. And boom, direct me charm acquired. We are getting very close to the end, ladies and gentlemen. And this is what we are going to be needing. I'm actually going to be needing a chest as well. Just a chest. And I will also need some fence, which, yeah, that'll do. I think that'll do. Now for the final ingredient. One, mossy cobblestone. <laughs> Out of everything, mossy cobblestone might be one of the most important ingredients for this. All right, so what we want to do is find a spot where the stasis chamber is not having its effect, which is there apparently. So we can just set it, I think, right here. It should be good. So we can make a little bit of an infenced area. Is that even a word? I don't think that's a word. <laughs> a fenced in area. There we go. This does really not need to be this big. Um. And is it, oh, I'm sorry. It's not even, even. Like it, it okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, now it's symmetrical. All right, so what we need to do, we can place the chest, I believe right there. And then we place the source jar there. And then over here, I think, yeah, I think this is fine. We can place some pipes and have volcanic source links, like so. Ooh, these pipes might not work. Hmm, that's interesting. I am a smurf. We need three of these arcane pedestals and not <laughs> and not six of the volcanic, um, what, what are they called? Vol volcanic thingies, which is why it didn't work. So pedestal, pipe, and then our ender drawer connected. I stored it, didn't place it. Punch to store, right click to insert. And then we just need to do this. So these are now getting coal and these are volcanic source links. I think yep should be generating source to the source jar All right, ladies and gentlemen, I believe that we are now ready after doing two more things To summon the mother silverfish one last time and then summon in our drip me now two things that we need to do one I want to make sure that this area is claimed and chunk loaded so that this does not get unloaded at any time. And now I'm a bit afraid that this, the mob crusher, is going to crush our drink me that we are about to start spawn using the charm. So yeah, we're just gonna we're just gonna get rid of it for now. <laughs> but here we go. Uh, hopefully it's not too close. We'll find out now. So we right click the charm on the Marcy Copper Zone, stuff happens. And boom, Drip Me has spawned. Now, I believe all we need to do is go ahead and spawn the mother silverfish. And I really hope I didn't spawn this too close. Uh, I will have to take care of some skeletons as well. I mean, the Drip Me shouldn't take any, any damage. The mother silverfish should just, well, get caught in the stasis chamber and then everything should be fine. Um, which happened, yes. Actually, perfectly. And yes, it's doing its thing. So you can see those particles. Well, it's actually doing it on the skeletons, which we don't want. So 
Just need to uh, somehow get you guys killed without hurting the drink me. If you could please just die. Thank you. So now, uh, there you go. You saw the particle right there. It is doing its work on the mother silverfish and, well, loot should appear in this chest. Now, there is a thing that we can do to make this more efficient, and that is adding animals to this pen, which I definitely do want to do. But first, I think I want to add grass to this area because we're going to have animals. Because animals in here will make the drink me apparently happy. And so, working more efficient, I believe. So if I just add a bunch of animals, we should be pretty good. Okay, I'm just going to take this out, add some dirt, some grass if possible, or moss. You know what? Moss works too. Now the way I'm going to transfer mobs over are going to be with this mob imprisonment tool. And that is some rubber, so I can make some more. However, I wonder if... the the chamber is using all that power. I may need to... I didn't upgrade all of these to Signalium or Resonant Integral Components. I might need to do that. Uh, yeah. Now here is the cool part. As soon as I have this blend and have smelted it, there we go. Then I think you probably know what I'm about to do. All right. Now I just need to add these and these and just like that. Yeah. I'm messa I'm I'm never gonna miss Enderium or Luminum. Or I'm 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 never gonna need more. <laughs> I'm never gonna need to craft it ever again. So this process is now extremely, extremely quick. And with that I believe I have everything that I now need in order to get these out. Quickly zoom back up, go in here, smack them in there. Four, perfect. And maybe for now, this is going to stabilize our power situation. Uh, not quite. Oh wait, now it's going up. Now it's going down a bit. Up. It might be stable now. I'll keep an eye on it. All right, this is going to be a bit painful. I only have four of these mob uh, imprisonment tools, but I think we'll be all right for now. So I'll go ahead and grab some of these fellas. Actually, I don't have that many that many animals. But that's fine. We'll probably get more hopefully now we can teleport over hopefully everything is looking as it should nice i'll add some moss to make this place look a little bit nicer and more inviting and our drip me is about to get some friends i'll add more in the future and look at that it is generating things now it is going to be a slow process i don't know if adding this watch of time next to it is going to have an effect oh but it's Hmm, is it supposed to do that? I wonder. I think I'm just gonna AFK here for a little bit, maybe 20, 30 minutes, and we'll see what we have in the chest afterwards. I'll see you in a bit. Oh, never mind. It just moved off its pedestal right after I stopped recording. And well, look here. Boom. Silverfish hearts, shards, and well, other stuff as well, which is cool. So this is not working. But I'm still going to AFK here for like 30 minutes and see what we actually end up getting. All right, approximately two hours later, yes, that is four times more than what I said before, we have got ourselves three, actually four silverfish hearts in total. Of course, together with some dark matter, cool, 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 cool bleh, cold silverfish shards and warm silverfish shards as well. And as you can see, I decided to remove the mobs because I feel like it was using a lot of time on the mobs. And honestly, I feel like it's the same result. So maybe I'm doing something wrong there. Maybe I haven't used enough animals. I don't know. Uh, if you know anything, let me know down below in the comments. But for now, I am pretty happy with this. I'm going to go ahead and make a very special drawer, I think. A framed drawer, which I believe if we go ahead and take maybe a diamond block, I think inside how to change texture inside in, inside a crafted window place a block you want to use the text for outside the drawer. So like this. No? So if I place it. Nope, that's hmm. Aha, so in this configuration right here. Yeah, I think I think we need something very special. It's not going to be tied into our story system, but they're not really supposed to. Oh yeah, perfect. Very, very special spot in our base. And I suppose that I can go ahead and release our horses and our one pig and one sheep to their freedom. Nice, they are not needed anyway. 
So guys, with that, our mission for today's episode is complete. We defeated the Balsola fish multiple times and we managed to set up a farm for it, which I'm really, really excited about because that means we can now proceed in the Project E table here. We can move towards Dark Matter Armor, Dark Matter Tools, and then the Red Matter Armor and Red Matter Tools, which is really cool. But we can also move towards the Transmutation table. We do, in fact, have enough silverfish yards, but we need to get started with the Avaritia mod. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. Well, we are hopefully going to get to the point of generating Neutronium. First, we're going to uh, make neutrons, basically, I, I believe. Uh, pile of neutrons, yep. We're gonna be generating neutrons, and then neutronium nuggets, and then neutronium ingots. We are nearing, or getting closer, to this stuff right here. But we, we, we're still quite, quite a ways away. But we're getting closer. But another addition I made to the base was I upgraded... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I doubled the energy, almost doubled, I'm missing one up there, but we won't talk about that. Um, I changed the energy cell from being a new, what, what was it called again? Energy cell. I changed it from a Niotic to a Spirited, and this, so the Niotic one can only receive at 100,000 if he tick. And I was running with an issue where these dynamos right here would only output like 16 RF a tick and it would only be the six last ones here really outputting at 100% efficiency right here. And I would I didn't understand that and I went to the FTB Discord server, which is a great place to ask about anything regarding to mod it, by the way. And that then led me to upgrading the main pipe to Elite Universal Pipe, which can hold a lot more. I think I still got some, yep, capacity is 400,000 FE a tick. And then I upgraded these green ones just to be safe for, to be advanced Universal Pipes. Don't think they need to be, but just to be on the safe side. And now we are generating power like crazy. We were not even like at full uh, optimal. I, I don't think we were fully optimized before at all. Um, so that is a really good addition. Also, we can now store 400 million FE in here. That That's insane. Oh yeah, I also casually made a 16K storage disk, which I'm just gonna add to there. And yeah, we no longer have each storage issues. But enough of that, time to use some of these silverfish hearts. Not all of them though, but some of them, because I want to make some dark matter tools. Not all of it, um, because each and every single tool requires a silverfish heart, and also uh, the armor. Every piece of the armor needs a silverfish heart as well. But I do have eight, so we should be able to make like a sword, pickaxe, and all the armor as well. Actually, I do have... Yeah, I do have 11 at my disposal. I, I want one in there. I want to always leave one in there, okay? All right, so Dark Matter Pickaxe. It's so annoying it does that. Uh, dark Matter Sword, I believe. And then, of course, all of the armor. So let's make the pickaxe first of all. Oh, I need to do it in mechanical crafting. Okay, I did not know this. That's kind of cool, actually. All right, that's that's different from, from what I'm used to. Oh yeah, another addition I made. I removed the diamond chickens back from the from the roost because they were generating way too many diamonds. It was flooding the system and filling up the storage, which is just yeah, that's not ideal. All right, so for a pickaxe, I believe we just need to do something along the lines of this, and then I think we need to give it a redstone signal somehow. I guess right there. Yep, I think. This should do it. Yep. So it's combining. And then just gonna have patience. Going into the final stage and brrr, I don't know what the sound effect is. Pickaxe capturing. Nice. Mode standard. Yeah, they have different modes. I don't even know what the, what the different modes does. If we go into dark matter again. Yeah, getting a dark matter sword would be kind of nice. I think it will be Yeah, it's gonna be more powerful than our refined obsidian. So we're definitely getting an upgrade here. So I believe that is the recipe. It is indeed. And here we go, the sword. And I do believe, however, it does have that bar down there. So I do believe that we need to charge these. I would assume so anyway. And also, if we hold the pickaxe, if I press G, it can actually mine in a 3x3. Three three. I don't know what the long shot mode is. You know what? We're going to have to try this. I don't know. Oh! Okay, so tall shot, I assume... Okay, that's like that. White shot is then like this. Okay, that's interesting. 
That's very interesting, and of course we have standard mode. And it's just working, so maybe we don't need to charge it with DMC. Or maybe it's because I have the clean style maker charged up here. That might be it as well. That works for me though. So the dark matter armor now. This is going to be really interesting. Do I need... Yes, I still need to use the mechanical crafting. So I wonder actually, can I use the bottom part here? So it goes maybe a little bit faster. I can indeed. Yeah, uh, this, this part takes a little bit of patience. And boom, helmet acquired. Now, I just need to go ahead and make the rest of it, which is pretty straightforward. Um, so, I thought I did the leggings recipe right. I didn't, so I don't actually know what it's... Yep, yeah, okay, good. Uh, yeah, it's uh, supposed to be like this. Yeah, there we go. I was wondering, I was like, okay, well, it's not the right thing, then what am I crafting? And boom! All the dark matter armor has been made. So we can go ahead and... Hold on. Do I have any... Oh, I don't. If I just go ahead and do that and boom. Perfect. And we have ourselves a very, very nice upgrade. Oh, wow. <laughs> that looks cool. That looks really cool. And it should be better. Well, the stats don't say it's better or doesn't say it's better. But what we can now do is I can put this away. Uh, I will have to say goodbye to my pack to go. I, I might not upgrade to the pickaxe. I the only thing actually that I will need the pickaxe for is removing these dark matter pedestals. In order to remove these, you need the dark matter pickaxe or I think you can use a yeah, you can use a cardboard box to move the item around but yes so i will keep the dark matter pickaxe in my backpack uh but to just to remove these dark matter pedestals but i think i'm gonna stick with my pack so the sword however I, I i'm keeping the sword now what we can go ahead and do is go ahead and since we have red matter unlocked i believe we can go ahead and upgrade this to red matter helmet and well armor Gem armor. I don't know how we make this though. Oh dear. Yikes. That is... It has night vision? Oh, and these have flight and everything built in, I suppose? Watch a flowing time. Oh, wow. Okay, those are really cool. I think for now though, I'm just gonna stick with the red matter stuff. And then I'll have to make some of those uh, things later on. And I believe... Yep, it should be as simple as that. What is this though? Upgraded red matter tools. Hmm. Oh, is this an equivalent of the Paxel? That might be an equivalent of the Paxel. I believe that is an equivalent of the Paxel. Very interesting. All right, so uh, it turns out I have four silverfish. I had four uh, silverfish hearts generating while I've been doing this. Also, we got the red. We, we got the red armor now. It looks sick. But yeah, I have more silverfish uh, hearts now, so I think I'm just gonna go ahead and make all these tools and then upgrade them to uh, this. I don't know what it's gonna do, but uh, we, 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 we're gonna find out. Now, while I'm doing that, I just saw that 69.2% of you guys watching in the past 28 days are not actually subscribed. So, if you are enjoying the content here on the channel, if you could do me a favor and hit that subscribe button down below, that would be epic. I would love to reach 7,500 subscribers before the end of the year. So if you could do that, we would get a lot closer to that goal. But now back to whatever it was past binary was doing. Probably making some dark matter armor tools. You'll know. All right, so it says it right here. The red morning star is a combination of the red matter tools and the red katar is a combination of the weapons. So we're going to try and make the katar first, which is going to be like this. And then sword axe here. Uh, yeah, which is here, yeah, the axe sword, and the final one was the hoe, I'm pretty sure. And I believe this should work then as she is, an axe, a sword, and a hoe. I guess we'll find out in a moment. And there it is. Right, so it's set to slay hostile, slay all. So that's a really cool thing about the sword, by the way. All right, so, uh, well, it should work for wood, right? Oh, yes, it does. It does. And that's a hoe as well. That's very loud though. <laughs> but that is 24 attack damage. That's 12 hearts. Wow. Okay, how do we make the morning star then? Simple, just like this. I am pretty sure that's the right order. Yep, just with matter like so. And boom. I'd say that that is a pretty decent upgrade. So I don't think I will be needing the Paxel anymore. 
So before we get into generating neutrons, let's just get this real quick, see if there's anything of value. You know what, that probably is, that probably is, but I, I probably don't know it. Um, yeah, there we go. Anyway, I have added a new room down here, right in the middle, and we are going to be setting up neutron collectors. However, before we can make these, we need to make the extreme crafting table, which is a bit extreme. We need a crystal matrix ingots, which those are pretty easy to get as long as we make one. And then we need double compressed crafting table. This actually, that's not too bad. And we make these uh, ingots like so. And then of course they have an EMC value. So we can uh, go ahead and do our EMC trick with those. So I think we just go ahead and do this. Now we have one. I'll, I'll go ahead and I'll go ahead and take two. And then we can just plop that right there. And I'll need to set up some stuff. Let's see if I can do this super fast mode. So it's right there, right after dark matter. So I place it here. I go boom, I go boom, and I go uh, ka-ching. It probably has a bunch of stuff, but that seems seeable, so that's fine. We add another one there. We disconnect from there and there. We add the roost right there. We set it to output. We set 16 chickens in that. We set it like so. And then we set this to output. And I take two of these, so I add one there and there. Boom. Uh, mm -hmm. Yep, easy. <laughs> I really do love Project E. So now that we have that out of the way, I just need to make a ton of these. I, I think that should do the trick. <laughs> to be honest, I probably made way more than I need. Uh, so if I go ahead and do this. Oh yeah, for actually, actually I didn't make enough. Huh, uh, I should get that pretty quickly though. 20, yeah, 32 should do it. 32 should not do it. Oh dear. Oh, I just needed one double compressed. I have two double compressed. <laughs> it's fine. Everything's fine. Now I'm just gonna casually grab a stack of these and just add them to this thing right here. Fill it up and as soon as this is full, it begins the construction. That is looking pretty cool. And ultimate crafting table is now complete, or extreme crafting table. You know what? That'll get a place right there. It's animated. It looks sick. That's a lot of space. <laughs> All right, so the next step is these neutron collectors. And the reason why we make these is because they generate, the, they generate a single tiny pile of neutrons every six or so minutes. But I have a plan for that. Um, I just want to be able to make these, and these are EMCable as well, granted they do cost a few million, it's totally fine. However, we need to make sure that we have all that we need, so iron blocks, redstone blocks, and quartz as well. I think, I think I should have everything. I'm pretty sure as soon as I have a stack of, well, two stacks of redstone blocks, might as well. And I think I should just be able to go ahead and boom, do that. And I can probably hold down shift, and I can make six of those. I just need a little bit more iron, but I think what I'm gonna do is, um, yeah, I'm just gonna uh, give me a moment. Yeah, that that looks about right. A bunch of red matter made it in there, and well, we, we now have 29. <laughs> and I actually forgot to add upgrades. There we go. Yeah, pretty decent. And with that, if I just go ahead and grab all of them, now we can set up this system. So I think I'm gonna add a dark matter pedestal there. And this is going to contain a watch of flowing time, which is going to speed up these machines significantly. But if we start with placing one, as you can see, it has a percentage. If I turn this thing on, yeah, that goes a lot faster. And you can imagine, the thing is they don't use any power. So we can just place down a ton, basically like this. And as long as they're all sped up, like so, boom, pile of neutrons. Now what I can go ahead and do, I can dig down. Okay, it didn't mine stone. Or does it just destroy it? Mode? I think it just destroys it. <laughs> it does give me the wood, which is nice. Do you, do you know what? It's fine. Who, who wants stone anyway? Right? <laughs> right? Anyway, uh, place is a little bit messy, but it's fine. We're going to place a... I'm going to dig this out for sure. Place a compacting drawer there, and then we're gonna add a bunch of item pipes, and they all need to be set to output, like so. So just go all the way down. Just, of course, not the, the dark matter pedestal. 
<laughs> I don't actually know if the Watch of Flowing Time would pop out, but I'm not interested in finding out at this point in time. So, with all these set to output, they should all land in here. Uh, huh, that is odd. To me, should have worked. Now, I can never remember the names of the pipes that does what things. Uh, aha! I just want to test if these will work any better. I mean, they might. Uh, so this is push, pull. Yeah, we want it. This thing is fast. So if I just go ahead and add all of these, I set them to pull. Oh yeah, it's being pulled. It's being pulled. So maybe the other pipes just don't work very well. There we go. And but it's not going further. Push, maybe? I'm so confused. For some reason, this one is just not wanting to pull. All right, I figured out why it wouldn't work. Uh, I basically did an oopsie. You need, you need to place it in there first, and then they should all... Yep, they're, they're now flooding in. <laughs> and these, I think, I don't know if they've been full at any point, but they're generating at a pretty decent pace now. We have two ingots, basically. I think I could do this and do this and get two quests completed just like so, and we will not think of what is be below decks here. Not, not at all. And to be honest, I could set up another layer right here, leading into the compacting drawer as well, which, hmm, that is actually very tempting. Very tempting. And just like so, we have another layer. I don't even need, I don't, I don't even know if we need this much. <laughs> But it's very satisfying. There's actually space for another layer. That I, I unintentionally I did not. Uh, hmm. You can't. You you can't stop me. When you see this video, this has already this has already been done, and there's no going back. <laughs> and just like so, it's been done. <laughs> Ultimate setup for the. What what are these called again? Not, not these. These neutronium ingots. That's kind of cool. Is there some cool framed glass or something that we can put around? Panzer glass. Wow. You, you know what? You know what? Maybe some hardened glass because uh, yes, it's framed as well. We'll still be able to see through it. Oh yeah, that just made it look even cooler, and we can see the neutrons dropping into the compacting drawer. <laughs> Am I too excited about this? I feel I feel like I might be too excited about this. Anyway, that wow, wow, we got far. We got very far actually. What did we get? Ooh, netherite upgrade. That is good because we are gonna be needing we're gonna be needing those because the next step really in the process of getting to end game is going to be if we take a look at this. First of all, we need to get all the items here, right? But then we have all of these source gems, which we need to make and try and automate every single one of them. And some of them are going to be easy, like source gems. We need to make a neutronium compressor, feed it source gems, and boom, we have source gem singularity. And we need all these singularities to make the inf infinity catalyst, which we can turn into then infinity ingots, which are then used for, well, other cool things. How do you make these? Oh, those are easy. But yeah, you. Uh, I think. I think you get the. I think you get the point. So now we need to take a look at all of these singularities and see which ones we can actually go ahead and do. But I'll do that off camera. I'm going to make a plan for all of these, um, and we're slowly going to make our way towards the infinity catalyst. And then there are things like the ultimate steel. Yeah, that, that's going to take some work. We need to get every single one of these. So that's probably going to be one episode in of itself. Getting the ultimate stew. Cosmic meatballs. That's also going to be a thing. Because this is not em So all of this. This is all em And this is all like the neutronium we can get. So this is automated. Uh, it, we're able to automate this basically. Because all of this has em So we're going to be using em for that a lot. I don't know if all of this stuff has EMC. Uh, fruit salad, for some reason, does not have EMC. Barbecue on a stick does not have EMC. So some of the oh, the wraps here and the, the hamburger does not have EMC either. So, oh boy. Well, at least it looks like a lot of it is crafting and we can set up auto crafting. So hopefully, but I don't, I don't like this one. <laughs> uh, ooh. Okay, we should be able to make this. To end off the episode, we are going to make that thing. I think it was four that we needed, right? Four in order to make Endless Pearl. Yeah, 
I think so. So if we go ahead and make that and uh, yeah, th th this is awesome. I should have everything that we need in order to make this. Um, and dust pearl. I think I have everything. Uh, yep. And dust pearl. Our very, very first one. There we go. I was waiting for the quest to appear. What did we get for that? A blue bomb. Lovely. Record fragment. I should be able to, I should have some. Ooh, I do. However, I will have to. Ah, we can't sacrifice pick step just yet. But we did get a record fragment, which is also used in the Infinity Catalyst right there. So we'll be we'll be needing that. Uh, is that EMC ball? Oh, it is EMC ball. This is not though, unfortunately. And boom. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, again, I love Project E. And that, ladies and gentlemen, was 100 days in Stone Block 3. My series continues into the world of crafting and automating singularities. A link to the playlist is down below. Also, if you wish to see a 200 days video, if I do make it that far, make sure you leave a like on this video. 200 likes would be kind of fitting. Also, if you really enjoy my content and wish to support me even further, consider supporting me over on Patreon. But with that, I'm off to plan how to automate some singularities. Hope you enjoyed and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching and have a wonderful rest of your day.